Block 3. I'll look into that. Worry not Aurora. Anything else? Ryu declared swiftly with a question while gazing at her. Honestly speaking, don't die here in the capital assassination or poison may happen from one of the other two competitors. With an angry expression, Julius shouts at the girl. They're my siblings they wouldn't dare. After looking at Aurora for a while he remained serious. The prince started having second thoughts. Would they really attempt something like that? Just so they could become rulers? Like how my sister who didn't care about the throne is now charging south with her army? Can people change that fast by obtaining a glimpse of power? Aurora ignoring the prince shouting continues the conversation while aiming at the necessary steps towards the upcoming war. Finding ways of increasing our funds be it from a registration fee from the new applicants who wish to become a soldier to an end entry price to our camp by anyone who wishes to commerce with a calmer tone. The prince takes notes on a paper and questions. Anything else comes to your mind regarding the funds? Perhaps something as simple as a small tax from those who wish to enter the capital which the total can be split by the three siblings so they accept such a law. I'm sure your highness can think of other ways to raise our funds meanwhile I head to the camp to meet Mark and resume the training of our soldiers. Thank you for the suggestions they're very good, and don't worry about money. I have plenty for the years to come, not to forget the late King Trial ends in two years. Aurora gets up and with a cold tone speaks. No your highness. This will end when I conquer the world for the next ruler thus it is imperative that the fund increases in the long term. Upon such words, a smile appeared on Julius and Ryu's faces. I'll be managing things in the capital with Ryu for the first months regarding the long-term issues. And then we'll meet you at the front lines. Ask the guard outside to escort you to your wagon, so you can start your drip general. Show us what you're truly made of. All right, see you later Prince, Lord. She says while staring at one at a time then goes through the exit, closing the door on the way out. The prince starts writing a letter and once it's done, he seals it with a blue stamp similar to the Lumen Kingdom flag passing it over to Ryo. Make sure it reaches Isabella, I'll be here thinking on ways to make money, just in case she ends up being right again, and worst case the late king advisors may delay this dispute for a few more years if necessary. That sounds wise your highness. I'll head for the head of the pink house right away, and grab some flowers as well. The last part made the prince smile silently. Upon reaching the wagon Aurora realizes two familiar faces are waiting for her along with the usual coach rider. I assume the hero and the sage will be coming with me to the front lines? Yes, they replied happily in unison. Then the sage continued, the crown prince ordered us to keep you safe since you'll be surrounded by too many people, and there is a chance that assassins, spies, or even some soldiers attempt to attack you. Sophie added with a gentle expression and kind tone. There's also the issue that you have a weak sickly body so we'll be there to support you. Any help is welcome. I truly appreciate it. Shall we go? Yes General. Romeo and Sophie shouted happily once more. On the way to the southern outpost, the hero suddenly points at the blonde girl's neck with a long sword while Romeo raised both hands at her channeling a light element. Did they figure something out? Aurora thinks confused as she was sure her acting was very good. What's wrong? She looks at them innocently making them waver. Forgive us general, however, we must make sure of something. Romeo, use it. Mana starts channeling into his hands while he speaks. Human lie detector. Tell me Aurora are you a summoned from our past world? The Aurora from there? I'm not a summoned from any world. I was born here like everyone else. Aurora said calmly, ending it with a kind smile. How is it, Romeo? It's okay you can lower your weapon she's not the real deal, so we can trust her. This unlucky girl just happens to have a similar name and a good brain, but if it was the real one the army management along with the tactics I've read in the notes she wrote would have been quite superior. She did give us insane trouble to the point of almost losing the war back then. Sorry about this general hope we can remain friends. Yes, of course. Just make sure you do not keep pointing weapons and magic at me every time you have some sort of doubt. Aurora says in a cold tone while sighing. We apologize. They bowed earnestly making her smile slightly. 
feeling that her acting so far hasn't failed while keeping a cool mind. As long as you understand, speaking of which what did the goddess Arya bless you too with? She tilts her head innocently grasping for the fact they messed up, allowing their hearts to feel like they owe the girl an explanation. They look at each other and then realizing there were no more doubts Sophie nodded and Romeo started speaking. I received a blessed skill sages boost, and from the same tier amplification, which in my past life made everything more powerful, and the boost allowed me to get magic of any type, not sure about in this world Dartana. I received a blessed skill named Hero Trumpets though I'm not sure what it does, however, I'll assume it'll be useful at some point as I've tried to use it and nothing happens, it is a hero skill, so I'm sure it'll help us in the war to come, Aurora says while smiling kindly at them, seems like we were able to relax her again, it would be troublesome if the general would get mad at us especially since she's quite talented, and also has the backing of the prince who's been helping us, Romeo gazed at her feeling relieved to the bottom of his soul, finally letting go of that last line of doubt in his heart, Sophie who was gazing at Aurora started thinking turning her face around to the wagon window checking the people and places out. This girl is pretty cute, kind, and has a great brain. I can't wait to see what kind of person she'll grow into. I'll make sure to help Aurora in exchange for being so friendly to us, and even being so forgiven. Expected her to insult us or something while shouting angrily. It'll be a long trip so feel free to rest. I'll try to sleep a bit myself, it has been a nerve-wracking day with the speech and all the planning. To think the general would be nervous since you hide your emotions pretty well, Romeo said as he's been studying her behavior since the day that they arrived in the room with the prince. I've spent most of my time trying not to die so there hasn't been much space to emotions sadly. Sophie who was next to Romeo got up and sat next to Aurora and hugged the girl feeling sad for her. This is very awkward. Did I get into her soft spot or something? You can rest while leaning on me I'll be sure to comfort you as an older sister. Thank you Sophie though make sure to wake me up so that the soldiers do not see us like this. I need to look mean to them. Sophie and Romeo giggle while agreeing to her request. In different circumstances, we could have been friends, however, all that waits for the two of you is the most gruesome and cruel faith once I use your bodies to the fullest of your capabilities as war tools. Till then we can play as friends so that your hearts become truly broken full of despair, once you realize who I truly am. After a while, Aurora falls asleep which Sophie takes the chance to place the girl's head on her lap while gazing at Romeo. Yet another merciless world awaits us where we'll have to wage war against who knows how many even going as far as to make use of this little child. Such is the fate of the hero, however, I'll make sure to support you as I've always been. Thank you, Romeo, you're truly the best. She starts patting Aurora's hair softly, I hope there aren't many unfortunate kids like this one out there. Sophie gazes at the girl while commenting her hair is very beautiful. Indeed, but I still prefer your pink one it's just exceptional. Romeo smiles at her making Sophie blush. I'm glad I got to keep my appearance even if a very younger version of it. Same here actually. It was becoming quite hard to move on that age body in the old world. Yeah. Everything hurt it was horrible even with all the abilities we had, aging was simply superior to them. They laughed lowly to not wake up Aurora. So what do you think of this girl, will she be able to lead the humans of our side to victory? If she was the Aurora we knew then that'd be with a 100% accuracy. But since they're different we can only hope the girl learns fast enough with that good brain of hers. I mean, since she already beat the prince in chess, who won against you, we have a good chance. In other words, you see potential in her, for me. That's enough, he smiles while watching the woman pat the child. We'll soon reach there let's try to get some rest as she suggested. All right, Sophie. They lay on the walls of the wagon and slowly fall asleep while the long trip to the border continues. Day 16 of the decaying season at the south outpost. Aurora arrives with Romeo and Sophie inside the wagon which Jeffy opens the door and enters it waking up the three who are sleeping. They all wake up and stare at each other awkwardly as Aurora appears to be sleeping on Sophie's lap while the woman's head is on top of Aurora's ass making Romeo laugh out loud. They all get up and start leaving the wagon after Jeffy's, 
meeting Mark who's outside waiting for them smiling. Once they're standing in front of him the old man's lips start moving, it seems like you had a pleasant rest, then he laughs unable to contain it further making Sophie embarrassed and Romeo laugh even more while Aurora makes an awkward expression. With a low voice, Sophie adds without regret, well her ass was a good pillow if anything. This time it's Romeo who blushes upon hearing that as Aurora remains indifferent while feeling further uncomfortable on the inside. She then starts walking to the camp while looking at the surroundings enjoying that her notes became reality while Mark quickly accompanies the girl. It seems the men have been doing what I asked, did they notice their status improvement with their skill personal data? Yes and the number of titles increased for a lot of the men alongside the different statuses that went up. We've also been reducing the forest trees which caused small skirmishes with different monsters and beasts making them gain experience and levels, and also we've stored the soul stones in a room that you requested as the notes said you had some experiments for them. Splendid does everyone have a place to sleep? Since it is the decaying season it's bound to rain any time soon. Yes. We've been making simple yet large wooden structures for the men to sleep in along with the usage of the nearby villages to shelter parts of the army as advised in the notes, making the men there contribute to the different activities of the villagers, which would benefit the chances of new titles as well as the improvement of the image that our army receives. Very good, if we keep the people around us happy it'll make the villages around willing to work for us in return and then the ones around them will be influenced to come out of jealousy. I see, that's a great plan as to be expected of the general. Mark smiles happily noticing a chain of reactions. It'll be best to acquire a great number of blacksmiths and wood artisans to come work with us in expanding our defenses further. Also we'll have to coat our wooden walls with something that doesn't allow it to get burned easily. This will prevent the invasions to succeed easily. I'll talk with the Magic Institute and see what solutions they can offer. I'm an acquaintance with the leader Ryan, the strongest magician in the kingdom. Aurora nods slightly upon hearing such words, feeling curious about such a person. If he's the best mage, it would be interesting to recruit him, even if the odds might not work. After passing through a few wooden houses, Mark points at one in specific and states, That's the one where I store the soul stones. Understood. Wait here a moment, she goes inside and sees hundreds of stones transforming into a grimoire and consuming all of them. System. The title Devourer has been received. She then transforms back and says while licking her lips. Thank you for the meal. I feel overflowing with soul power, status. Status. Level. 14. Experience 1291400. Class. Pandemonium Race. Human. Name. Aurora, 8 years old health, 1000 1000ths, mana 1700 1700 status points, 0 stamina, 100, intelligence, 90 wisdom, 170, soul power, 52130 attack, 5, magic attack, 90 titles, etonyms, uncursed, soul bounds, contracted, noticed, god series F. Devourers Skill Points 9 Actives Status Level 40D Darkness Barrier Level 7F Piercing Darkness Level 13F Mana Coat Level 8F Dark Coat Level 9F Mana Wave Level 1F Dark Bind Level 14F Extraction Level 4F Passives Mana Control Level 25E Dark Control Level 19F Monster Detection Level 40D Beast Detection Level 13F Night Vision Level 25E Unique Transformation Level 15 Killing Intent Level 5 Blessed Slash Cursed Unidentified Unique Element Dark Cursed Soulbound Contracted Skills Telepathy F Giver E Deconstruct D Stacking C Consumed Skills Infected Bite Level 15 Human Detection Level 40 Brainwash Resistance Level 50 Fire Resistance Level 80, Water Resistance Level 70, Wind Resistance Level 60, Earth Resistance Level 40, Light Resistance Level 30, Dark Resistance Level 50, Ice Resistance Level 20, Quick Stab Level 50, Double Slash Level 30, Ice Wall Level 5, 
Dark Bind Level 4, Focus Level 10, Leadership Level 20, Slight Stamina Boost Level 30, Slight Agility Boost Level 20, Acid Resistance Level 25, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 30, Slight Strength Boost Level 40, Slighty Intelligence Boost Level 20, Stealth Level 2, Swordsmanship Level 10, Sword Mastery Level 6, Archery Level 10, Bow Mastery Level 5, Wand Art Level 3, Wand Mastery Level 1, Staff Art Level 8, Staff Mastery Level 3, Unarmed Combat Level 15, Shield Mastery Level 10, Nature Resistance Level 5, Explosion Resistance Level 3, Spirit Resistance Level 2, Ethereal Resistance Level 1, Poison Resistance Level 20, Stun Resistance Level 10, Knockback Resistance Level 5, Concentration Level 3. I probably have enough soul power to evolve further but here would be risky, I'll wait till I can return to Aris or find a good place to do it. I can't allow anyone to see it, especially those two. She then exits the house meeting up with Mark. Upon arriving she states. Thank you for the experiment, it was quite successful, as such, we can keep storing them there. Certainly. I've told a trustworthy soldier to keep guard of it. Mark then signals Romeo and Sophie who are a bit further away to approach and declares. The two of you can stay in that house over there and use two beds that you find fit. I request that you will join the front line whenever you are asked to. Understood. They reply in unison with serious expressions. Be sure to fight freely alongside the men to make them familiar with having the hero and the sage around, as the forest is being constantly chopped down, causing enemies to appear. It'll be a good chance for the both of you to level up. Sure thing, let's go, Romeo. Sophie walked curiously to see what kind of place they built in such a short time. Ah. Wait for me. He runs after her who just moved fast too fast without hesitation. Mark then walks nearby the house gazing at the inside of the room noticing some soul stones disappeared, causing his face to change into a startled expression. What did you do to the soul stones Aurora? I was born with a certain skill that transforms soul stones into knowledge. The real secret for being so smart at such a young age, as such. I've consumed all them into brain power, so I'm overflowing with all kinds of knowledge currently. Mark hastily ran towards the door and opened it fully realizing that every single of the hundreds of soul stones had really vanished. Oh, my goddess. You truly weren't joking just now, what kind of skill is that even? I thought you couldn't use elemental magic. That's true but I still have mana and with it. I can use the blessing skill the goddess Arya gave me. She shows a blue light flowing through her right hand, but do keep it a secret from everyone. If other factions knew about it, they would certainly kidnap me and attempt to brainwash and even use me as a tool. Mark while sweating nervously added. Yes general I'll take that information to my grave. Now then let us proceed as the men await your next orders. They walked together to where the core of the army was. Upon a wooden platform after gathering a great part of the men Aurora spoke to the soldiers around. Starting today I'll be teaching and drilling you exercises, tactics, and formations. I'll make each and every single one of you become capable of doing what's best for the whole army. The girl gazes at everyone from one side to the other before resuming. In some weeks we'll start clashing with the forces hidden through those forests. By then I believe the other two human forces will have arrived. Once they do, we'll start expanding while hitting different fronts in large-scale wars to come while increasing the size of the army which is extremely small as it is. The men cheered happily for having the general back but also for the good news as they wanted to be promoted, so learning from the girl in front of them would surely contribute to their rise a lot faster. I've heard that you men and women have become stronger, tougher, smarter through the different activities that I ordered you all to do. I want you all to keep doing them, to also try different things, as the more titles you have the stronger you'll become. You must have confidence in yourselves as all of you have the potential to become a hero of your own, share the knowledge of new titles among yourselves, and even tell that to me or the advisors, so we can further spread it, don't forget.
Through the human history I've come to read about a certain woman who was one of the weakest humans ever born. The first peasant hero Rizia from the first chapter of Tales of Atana is the sole hero who wasn't summoned from a different world that was able to do even more than those the goddess Arya blessed. I believe one of the reasons for that was due to her collecting titles from a young age which is what you'll all be doing along with the information that I'll fill your brains with so that you become both powerful and wise from here onwards. As Aurora spoke more and more men would gather and cheer for the general, as they heard her eloquent tongue speak encouraging and informative words making them satisfied for having someone like that as the general, despite being such a young girl. Slowly they would start seeing the girl as a real commander and gradually growing an affinity towards her charisma while respecting Aurora deeply. For the first four weeks, I'll be appointing some officers among you, each leading a group of twenty soldiers as I mentioned in the first speech. I'll be training them and replacing them if they don't fit what I believe necessary for such rank, eventually proceeding to higher ranks soon. Our army will be completely structured to the point of everyone knowing what they have to do so that when I call for a formation you all will move accordingly. By the time she reached this stage of the speech she had gathered the majority of the army around her including Sophie and Romeo who had finished checking the different buildings finding some with beds, others with materials, and a few empty ones that made them lose interest quickly making them lastly group up with the mob of the soldiers which made them curious as to why they were gathering there in the first place. Everyone, take three steps backward without hurting each other. The men carefully moved back a bit. My first criteria of selection for the initial 1000 officers is that I want those of you that have the skill leadership, at least above level 20 to take one step forward from the place you are now. About 3000 soldiers took a step forward. That's more than what I expected, though if our army expands three times more it wouldn't be a bad idea to train all of them already. I look at Mark on the side who nods as if he understood what was going through my mind. I believe our army will grow at least three times more after the speech I gave back in the capital to millions of humans, and as such, I'll take the 3000 soldiers that took a step forward, teaching them how each will lead at least 20 soldiers initially. We'll call them hum, squads, they will be composed of one officer and twenty soldiers from here onwards, the rest of you who weren't chosen for now resume your activities as I'll give you all things to do while I train these three thousand, and don't worry if you are not chosen now, the ranks will fall into different categories soon enough, the men dispersed leaving exactly three thousand one hundred and three people behind as some were curious enough to stay and learn, she walks to Mark and then tells him, make those who left, do the soldier exercises that I wrote, so that they acquire knowledge on formations and teamwork for when the officers are ready to use such information on them, leave it to me, want to tag along with me, Romeo and Sophie, Mark gazes at both after using a casual tone, sure, I'll give you a hand, the young man said happily going closer to the old one, I'll stay and help Aurora out, Sophie said as she didn't want her new friend alone surrounded by so many soldiers, as such she walked closer to Aurora waving them goodbye. Take good care of her then, we'll talk later, Romeo smiled while they departed. Sophie then walked past the last group of soldiers reaching close enough, looking at Aurora smiling. This one seems to have taken some strange affection to me or perhaps at my ass. Sisters one even. Aurora grabs a hammer, a very large piece of paper, and some nails, pounding it on a wooden wall with the help of Sophie as the 3000 humans stare quietly at them, between the soon to be strategic board, and the pink haired young woman bottom. Then with some ink, the general with a wooden brush started drawing some things with the casual help of her transformation skill. Whenever Sophie's not looking, making the men curious. As soon as she finished the blonde girl started explaining the information in the sketch while pointing at it with the index finger. This is the initial formation that you'll be making the soldiers do. I suggest you approach so you can see and study. The men quickly took some steps forward surrounding the wooden platform whereas Aurora then continued speaking. Initially we'll begin by each of you having 20 soldiers as I mentioned previously which will be this circle here. She points at it with the finger, we'll be practicing small skirmishes against the monsters and beasts that live in the forest in front of us, 
moving inside as a group of melee weapons and ranged weapons, for example, ten men carrying swords and spears and then, ten others carrying bows and staffs with one or two healers if we have any to keep everyone from dying. The soldiers go in awe as they listen to the general's teachings and the soft child voice that comes from her. What we'll be doing is adventuring deep in the forest but not too profoundly, so you all can escape if necessary. The officer will tell the men to move in, move out, attack, defend, always making clear orders such as, you ten in the front focus on this goblin, the two archers attack the ranged enemy, you two healers, heal the soldiers in front who are dealing with the goblins, you wizard blast the enemy healers with a big skill, since some abilities take time to cast, these will be the initial orders and once every single one of you masters the communication necessary to lead your group, will then start with formations, the ones who excel at both will rank up to captain then leading 100 soldiers and 5 officers, so some of you will guide those around you who don't get promoted, rivalry starts crossing the minds of them which was the intent Aurora wanted to create so that they pull through their mental limits. Every single one of you will recruit 20 soldiers from our army and start doing what I mentioned, any problems that occur, any difficulty the officers you encounter, you can come to talk with me and I'll sort them out, any internal disturbance will not be tolerated and again if one does happen, do communicate with me and I'll fix it, worst case I'll swap members from one squad to another as not everyone synergies well with one another. Do not be afraid of failure but do fear failing and doing nothing to fix it. I will not forgive those who treat the soldiers under you as tools. They are your family, parts of you, as you'll be the mind that leads the squad, they will be your legs and arms. Aurora claps with all her strength one time. Never forget that I want all the squads done in two hours max and you can even team up with other officers. Now go. Those of you who may have doubts can stay behind and we'll discuss them, three of them remained behind and they approached the girl. Greetings General, I wish to know if you have any recommendation for an initial squad. I'd say three who specialize in melee combat, two archers, one healer and one wizard which sounds balanced, if you can make the archers or even a thief that can search for traps and intruders, in other words, what I love to call a scout. They can help the officers notice the enemies earlier giving you the chance to think on a plan, instead of reacting to the danger which would lead to more casualties, as Aurora speaks the man takes notes of the words picking her interest as not many soldiers know how to read and write, and even less of them spend their money on expensive things like paper. What are we to do in case we find a similar squad but a group of enemies instead, or even get outnumbered? Make a line all together and escape back to the camp. Ask for reinforcements of close by squads and fight them. We have enough men to outnumber our enemies till the Goblin King realizes that we're here destroying their numbers. However, seeing as no major force has arrived it means the monsters we've cleaned weren't even a part of his army, in other words, his camp is bound to be much deeper. From the information the Crown Prince received which was given by the head of the Pink Rose family the best assassin in the Lumen Kingdom, it should still be very far from here, understood General, I'll be preparing my squad, he then left and Aurora went into thought, I've chosen this area in specific because it is in the middle of the supposed beast kingdoms, so this spot in specific must not falter, what worries me is that the Goblin King can go directly to a different section of the south border, can only hope the other two forces will be able to defend against them since I'm already taking the hardest location. I doubt the Goblin King would dare to move right away, but I just hope me being here won't accelerate the war instead, and we get outnumbered by millions of his subordinates. I'll definitely need a big army at least 500,000 to make a difference, but having a 20,000 force that is capable of thinking on their own will certainly be an amazing core and possible addition to one of the wings in the future. She then notices a leftover officer who stays quiet waiting for his turn. You may speak, he bows and then says, Greetings Lady Aurora I was thinking if I could take the hero Sophie as one of my squad members, as he finishes such words. We both look at Sophie who remained quiet this whole time watching over me. It would be a good chance for her to become stronger, but the choice is your hero. 
Aurora said showing that she was able to choose her fate within her army which pleased the pink-haired woman, sure I'll tag along and teach you some things. Thank you very much Lady Aurora, and Hero Sophie. Please come this way I have some friends that will be interested in joining us today. Certainly. She then looked at Aurora and said, do tell Romeo I went to slay some monsters. Little sister, she said with a proud expression. I shall older sister. A smile appeared making Sophie expression happy as she was treated like family. What are the odds I'd end up babysitting these two? Not to forget they were both chosen out of who knows how many souls, was it on purpose? Did the goddess Arya know about me? And our fight? Did she know that if we joined forces we would be unstoppable? Maybe she picked them for the unique existence that is the sage class. We need to torment and torture the Marora. That would certainly be very enjoyable, but the time has not come for that to happen sadly. Ah! Why must the master torture us so with such weight Aurora? Worry not the time will certainly come, Iris did promise I could have their lives to myself so we just have to wait. A promise. A pact. A contract. A soul bound with the Babel witch. You sure exceeded yourself this time around Aurora, just insurance you know that. Since no matter how powerful I am every time, alone we always get sealed, losing our progress. And in this third time we have found Iris, who is now precious to us, our younger sister and the one that will bring out the full potential within us. Without her we're a useless weapon. To bring death to the world, to use the legendary tome. Pandemonium. An evil smile appeared on her expression which she hid behind both hands. What will you do Aurora when Iris's soul gets big enough, awakening the one sleeping deep inside our own? that we have been protecting for 10,000 years. When that time comes both you and I will become part of her identity as we originally were. Disappearing. That's kind of sad. True. But such was the promise we made with her, that turned into a life pact. Once she no longer sleeps. The tides will change. She might devour Iris. It's all right I left insurance. Their cursed soul bound Aurora. Yes. That way our souls will eventually become one, and Iris' enemies will only be able to bow and offer their lives. However, even with the witch awakening, it'll still not be enough to unlock that identity fully. We will need sacrifices, thousands of souls. Just like in the old world where you... A man's voice interrupted her thoughts, General. She once more becomes expressionless removing the hands from her face, yes? One of the archers in the watchtower has noticed a group of about 200 kobolds moving together through the forest in a direction bit further from our camp, so we believe they're not coming to attack. Upon hearing that a smile appeared on the girl's lips, Soul's Aurora consumed them. Let us go call ten squads we're doing a skirmish. She shouted making him run as fast as he can delivering the message. Once we destroy these, more will certainly come for us. It'll certainly become interesting from here onwards. More souls, more, more. The offerings must go on Aurora. A scary voice laughed madly inside the girl's mind. A while later two hundred soldiers and the majority of the officers stood beside Aurora all armed as she was about to do a demonstration. Archers prepare the arrows, wizards prepare the offensive spells the enemy is approaching let's give them a big blow, she shouted alone in the middle of many. Once the kobolds got in the sight of the humans moments later, noticing a couple of humans approaching to slay them. Slowly they started seeing more and more figures. They grew anxious with each step the enemies made becoming heavy-hearted. Shoot! A small blonde girl then yelled from afar. The beasts then saw arrows flying at them as they showered the 200 kobolds, followed right after by all types of offensive magic destroying a great part of their numbers, along with the forest, spreading corpses and scattering body parts and blood everywhere. Mala units charge. Archers and healers support them. Wizards beware of our flanks for approaching enemies. In mere minutes 200 beings had died and after they collected the soul stones and returned to Aurora she spoke. As you've seen this is what a captain is supposed to do and the officers have to spread the orders through the soldiers as our voices have range limits. The 200 who died today could have been you all. This is a very tiny glimpse of war. The side that is best prepared is the one that is likely to win. Store the soul stones in the usual place and then resume the monster cleanup around the forest. 
take the meat of the kobolds and treat it to every soldier who helped slaying them. The officers behind her started clapping enthusiastically while thinking they'd want to be like her and do the same thing in the future. As for you all that stood behind me watching, this is the minimum you must do if you wish to rank up higher and lead a bigger number of troops. Now back to your squads show me how amazing you all will become. Yes general, they shouted mesmerizing her to no end. Aurora then walks around inspecting the corpses noticing that most were unarmed, wondering why they came to this side. It should be the opposite direction of the Goblin King base are they perhaps starting to expand their territory which made the kobolds flee? If that's the case then it's free amounts of experience, levels, and training for my soldiers. I shall reward whoever did this by slaying them flawlessly. After some hours Aurora went inside the house where the soul stones are consuming them. I wonder if I can send all this energy to her from far away as it is a different skill than telepathy. Or should I awaken to the next phase? Let's check with status. Status, level, 14, experience 1291,400, class, pandemonium race, human, name, aurora, 8 years old health, 1000 1 thousandths, mana 1700 1700 status points, 0 stamina, 100, intelligence, 90 wisdom, 170, soul power, 102,130 attack, 5, magic attack, 90 titles, etonyms, uncursed, soul bounds, contracted, noticed, god series F, devourers, skill points, 9 actives, status level 40D, darkness barrier level 7F, piercing darkness level 13F, mana coat level 8F, Dark Coat Level 9F, Mana Wave Level 1F, Dark Bind Level 14F, Extraction Level 4F, Passives, Mana Control Level 25E, Dark Control Level 19F, Monster Detection Level 40D, Beast Detection Level 13F, Night Vision Level 25E, Unique, Transformation Level 15, Killing Intent Level 5 Blessed Slash Cursed, Unidentified, Unique Element. Dark Cursed Soulbound Contracted Skills Telepathy F Giver E Deconstruct D Stacking C Consumed Skills Infected Bite Level 15 Human Detection Level 50 Brainwash Resistance Level 55 Fire Resistance Level 100 Water Resistance Level 100 Wind Resistance Level 100 Earth Resistance Level 60 Light Resistance Level 40 Dark Resistance Level 60 Ice Resistance Level 35, Quick Stab Level 70, Double Slash Level 50, Ice Wall Level 10, Dark Bind Level 7, Focus Level 18, Leadership Level 40, Slight Stamina Boost Level 40, Slight Agility Boost Level 30, Acid Resistance Level 35, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 38, Slight Strength Boost Level 47, Slighty Intelligence Boost Level 31. Stealth level 10, Swordsmanship level 20, Sword Mastery level 16, Archery level 18, Bow Mastery level 13, Wand Art level 10, Wand Mastery level 18, Staff Art level 28, Staff Mastery level 13, Unarmed Combat level 25, Shield Mastery level 20, Nature Resistance level 15, Explosion Resistance level 9, Spirit Resistance level 3, Ethereal Resistance Level 2, Poison Resistance Level 30, Stun Resistance Level 20, Knockback Resistance Level 10, Concentration Level 7, Long Slash Level 10, Weapon Smash Level 7, Hawkeye Level 3, Corpse Dismantler Level 30, Night Vision Level 20, Deconstruct Infected Bite Level 15. Notice, 150 soul power has been rewarded. Is that so? Who would have guessed that I could earn extra soul power with these shitty skills? Deconstruct all the consumed skills. Notice, 1238 soul power has been rewarded. Give all soul power to Iris through soul bound if you can. Notice, 103,518 soul power has been deducted. Wish I could see the reaction on her face when the status skill warns once she receives it. A kind smile appeared on Aurora's face while she walked outside of the room.
Upon reaching outside Sophie notices her smile and speaks. You seem happy what were you thinking about? My twin sister Iris. Haven't seen her for a while now. That means I get to have one more younger sister. She shouted while smiling happily about it. Noticing the soul stones in Sophie's hand Aurora says. It seems you had some fun killing some monsters already. Aside from almost dying a few times, it was rather interesting. We ran into some armed kobolds where some ended up running away at the end, and some of us got hurt. My skill didn't activate so I did what I could to help everyone using my knowledge with the sword alone while surpassing my limits. You can throw the soul stones inside that room and then tell me more about that. As I fought some kobolds earlier today. Sure give me a moment, she throws a bunch of them inside the house and then returns. So about the kobolds some of them were mounted. Those in specific gave us a hard time they were riding wolves can you believe that? Some sort of cavalry like some soldiers can fight on top of a horse. Yes, exactly that but a monster version of it or in this case, their race would be beasts. Since in this world people seem to categorize them differently, that is right as long as they have beast parts of sort and look sort of human they're usually beasts and the monsters everything else. Show me where you found them, Sophie. I say with a serious expression that makes her instantly move as if she realizes I figured something important. Sounds like our little general has had an interesting idea regarding those kobolds. The hero smiles curiously with expectation. After a while, Aurora grabs a map, and then we arrive inside the forest in a part further away from the goblin base closer to the south line, if we'd use Lumen Kingdom location as a central connection. They came that way. Sophie points further southwest from our camp, Aurora marks a zone on the map and then draws a horizontal thin line through the forest east to west. That line is? She looks puzzled at it while trying to understand it. I believe that's where their territory is in here. She then draws a diagonal line from a steer village to the horizontal line she made as there were goblins back then patrolling in a big group should be the Goblin King base which means there's probably something on the other side further west maybe a kobold kingdom whose territory is slowly being occupied, making them move this far in search of either a new place to reside, or attempting to kill goblins, but for now these two are the ones that we'll end up fighting currently, as I believe kobolds are being kicked off the zones where they would naturally be living while the Goblin King army expands west, and maybe further southwest. Seeing as kobolds are appearing closer to us, which for them would be north to northwest. Even though we have the same information and I've lived way longer, I can't perceive what's inside this girl's brain it makes me feel stupid, even though it was the same with Romeo. I wonder if he'd be able to pinpoint something like this with such little information. Not to forget the confidence Aurora have that the information is correct is what scares me the most. Sophie looked at her. Scares? I'm scared of a little girl for being a bit smarter than me. Impossible. She pushes her thoughts away nodding the head to the sides. Noticing this Aurora questions her behavior. Are you alright Sophie? Ah. Yes, don't worry I was just thinking on silly things, a bad habit of mine. She then proceeds to pat Aurora's hair. Are we done here little genius? Yes, we can go back before we get raided by more of those strange kobolds. Indeed. I'd rather not have to fight more of them before I heal myself up. I don't want to trigger a death flag this early on during the game. Death flag? Game? Aurora asked confused. Ah, Don't mind it, just some reference from two lives away from where my memories start. I was a normal human being there and then I was summoned into a second world at some point where magic existed. And in my first one we had games which you wouldn't know anything about, and it's hard to explain. So don't worry about it Aurora. The second was where I met Romeo. Games. Something about it sounds interesting, but I cannot remember where or how I heard about it from my past life, as most of my memories are sealed after almost losing my sanity inside of that shitty garden. Well, no matter I must focus on the task at hand. The next step observing how the officers do while passing through the soldiers training to see what else needs improvement. Decaying and moon seasons go by and day one of the flowering season arrives making a total of 167 days that went by. 
The outpost is currently holding 100,000 soldiers most of who are hard trained during the decaying and moon seasons including 5,000 officers 1,000 captains and 100 majors. The army can now correlate to basic formations as the moon season was mostly snow so that's what I spent teaching them for at least 90 days. The decaying season we had some engages but since it's the borders of the forest the experience was divided by the many soldiers making them not leveling up too much, it seems that we were wrong about the experience system, it's actually best to simply make them fight with fewer people, in fact alone gives the most experience, however, I kept the squads unchanged as I opted for the best teamwork since, in the end, they're not adventurers and even those usually work with two or three. As the layers of snow are being melted by the flowering season I'm currently on the capital with the crown prince as I left the army with Mark and Ryu, apparently, today will be the day the advisors decided for this new year annual tournament in the capital and as such, Iris will take my place, in order to bolster my honor further as the general under Julius which if she does well, it'll help more soldiers to want to join our ranks. Due to the rainy season into the snow one it made fewer people than I expected to join us. Hopefully when the warm ones are back it'll increase. After more than half a year I'm finally meeting Iris I've been sending her all the soul power I gathered even though neither of us has earned a single level, apparently I've been busy commanding and building the army, while she's been learning swordsmanship with some old guy that is not Alfred the Swordmaster so I don't really know why she chose him but knowing her I'm sure she had good reasons. You can wait here Aurora I'll go check the starting time once Iris arrives I'll tell a guard to bring her here. Thank you, Prince Julius. A while passes and Iris finally appears through the reunion room door where the crown prince spends most of his time working. The moment we see each other the transformation skill changes her body appearance to match Iris who's grown a little taller but other than that looks like Aurora remember her, and then they run at each other giving a tight hug to one another. I missed you Aurora, my dear sister, I say happily tearing up while holding her and then speak with her through telepathy, I've spent a long time alone with teacher A with casual visits from my parents, but other than that swordsmanship all that I've dedicated my time to, and now thanks to the crown prince and Ray allowing it as a battle experience to see how far I could go in the tournament. I was able to take a break and come to the capital to meet you. I see that your hair has been cut by the shoulder line, was it Ray? Yeah, he said that it was in the way and before I could even protest about it, he cut it perfectly in a single slash, that man is something else but I feel like I've progressed a lot. So I'll stick with him for two more years and do my best to surpass him. Well it still looks good on you even though long hair fitted the best, but nonetheless, we don't have much time, so tell me everything while we have the chance. I let go of Rora and turn around showing her my black outfit placing the hood on top of my head, a nine pointed white star. I turn back to her and remove my cap hood hiding the star once more, I've started to pass these cursed skills personalities, however, it'll still take a while for them to gain a form. So for now. They're slowly growing in the mirror world through rank B soul stones that I bought with the kingdom's money. Sounds like you've been busy Iris, she smiles at me, so what's your status now like? Aurora asks curiously. Do you really want to see? I giggle teasing her, of course, show me. Status open, notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 14, experience 1291400 fame. 2300, Disgrace, 25100 Unique Class, Babel Witch, Rank 3, Experience 3938 Thousandths Race, Human, Name, Iris, 9 Years Old Health, 1171170, Mana, 3700 3700 Status Points Colon 0 Strength, 301 plus 29, stamina, 77 plus 40, agility, 85 plus 35, dexterity, 119 plus 20, intelligence, 244 plus 31, wisdom, 330 plus 40, attack, 
0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 531,554 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, purchases, wisdoms, body trainings, animal slayers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sales, soul bounds, elements, contracteds, peasant, f, class a, monster slayer d, slime slayer b, skill mastery a, criminals, herbs gathered's, herbs types is, potion brewers, potion type c, status masteries, beast slayer c, horned rabbit slayer c, potion administered f, goblin slayer e, orc slayer f, Assassinations, Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer C, Notists, God Series D, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Solds, Herbs Boughts, Acknowledgeds, Disgraceful, S, Ignoreds, Forgottens, Zombie Slayer F, Curse Slayers, Turtle Slayer F, Corpse Transporters, Library Completions, Crime Series F, Wises, Strongs, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Illusions, Readers, Trees, Skill Points, 1 Actives, Status Level 60C, System Library Level 100S, Mana Coat Level 70B, Mana Wave Level 20E, Ice Bind Level 30E, Ice Sword Level 20E, Icicle Level 60C, Long Slash Level 40F, Ice Expansion Level 10F, Ice Hammer Level 1F, Ice Spear Level 1F, Ice Wave Level 10F, Ice Light Armor Level 20E, Ice Heavy Armor Level 10F, Triple Slash Level 50D, Thrust Level 30E, Parry Level 40D, Backstep Level 20E, Dance of Death Level 5F, Vanish Step Level 1F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 50D, Swordsmanship Level 50D, Sword Mastery Level D40, Mana Control Level 50D, Ice Control Level 38T, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 40D, Slight Mana Recovery Level 60C, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 1F, Axe Mastery Level 1F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10F, Brainwash Resistance Level 100S, Night Vision Level 30E, Slight Stamina Boost Level 40D, Slight Agility Boost Level 35E, Slight Strength Boost Level 29E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 21E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 20E, Slight Health Recovery Level 46D, Ice Resistance Level 50D, Cold Resistance Level 60D, Heat Resistance Level 30E, Lightning Resistance Level 40D, Knockback Resistance Level 22E, Stealth Detection Level 15F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 5, Mana Shield Level 40, Class Rituals, Snowfalling Level 40, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 60, Magic Knowledge Level 60, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20, Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Announcing, Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Illusion Level 1, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 531, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank C, 0800. Some minutes pass and then Aurora finally says something through my mind, you're becoming quite strong aren't you Iris? I blame Ray, that man is at least 100 times stronger than me. He's a real beast, I laugh lightly bringing a smile to her. You won a new unique skill? Yes. I haven't used it yet though been busy with the sword all day long, so I have yet to try it out. Iris, why is the mirror level that high? It was due to my soul growing so much due to whatever you've done on your side look at it, it's past 500,000. Anyways Aurora, 
it's time to awaken you further, Grimoire possession, she forcefully becomes a Grimoire and then, spend enough souls to rank her up, notice, 8000 souls have been deducted the Grimoire is now rank B, again rank my sister up, notice, 16000 souls have been deducted the Grimoire is now rank A, once more, make her stronger, notice, 32,000 souls have been deducted the Grimoire is now rank S. One more time, notice, 64,000 souls have been deducted the Grimoire has ranked to the first phase of unique, there are two phases of unique that was unexpected once more, notice, 120,000 souls have been deducted the Grimoire has ranked to the second phase of unique, guess I can only do it one more time you better rank up sister. One more. Notice, 240,000 souls have been deducted the Grimoire has ranked to the last phase of unique. You sure spent a lot of souls there Iris, shouldn't you be saving them? The others have told me that your powers would be necessary, so you're the priority plus they warned me that having a big soul can become dangerous as it could attract unnecessary attention. Wait. You can talk now in Grimoire shape and while possessed. Iris looks at it and notices that it now has eyes, a mouth and it has become fully black aside of the letters of the cover that are golden. Apparently I can see the mana quantity you have as well and since we are connected you should be able to. Mirror, I look at the big mirror and see the big aura around me in tones of blue. Grimoire announce, mirror retract. Aurora turns back into a human and says, it seems that my last unique phase was the increase of the power of my class skills, even though I haven't gotten any yet, she laughs feeling awkward. What else did you get sister? Let me show you, status, status, level, 14, experience 1291,400, class, pandemonium race, human, name, aurora, 9 years old health, 1000 one thousandths. Mana 1700 1700 status points 0 stamina 100 intelligence 90 wisdom 170 soul power 0 attack 5 magic attack 90 titles etonyms uncursed soul bounds contracted notices god series f devourers skill points 9 actives status level 40 d Darkness Barrier Level 7F, Piercing Darkness Level 13F, Mana Coat Level 8F, Dark Coat Level 9F, Mana Wave Level 1F, Dark Bind Level 14F, Extraction Level 10F, Passives, Mana Control Level 25E, Dark Control Level 19F, Monster Detection Level 50D, Beast Detection Level 40D, Night Vision Level 50D, Unique. Transformation level 70, Killing Intent level 5, Blessed slash Cursed, Unidentified, Unique Element, Dark, Cursed Soulbound Contracted Skills, Telepathy F, Giver E, Deconstruct D, Stacking C, Split B, Imbue A, Consumers, Unique 3 thirds Effects, Consumed Skills, With Deconstruct I can convert skills I consume into soul power, Stacking is pile up repeated ones, split is the other way around, imbue is placing one of those skills inside a knight to moor a weapon, and consumer is to get them for myself. Seems like you can finally find skills for yourself as well and become stronger. I said happily as I've been waiting so long for something good to happen to my sister. Yes, but I've accepted my fate as who I am, as such. We both know that you're the one who is to grow powerful enough to make good use of me. Well I'm sure you'll grow strong in no time and what about the unique skills? Can you clarify them for me? From the explanation, I received from the system the unique first effect is the mouth which allows me to speak while being possessed by you. The second is the eyes that can see the mana amount beings have, and the third effect is the apparent full black cover that makes my class skills stronger kind of like a little boost. Oh alright, well in that case what skills did your class get? What kind of boost is it? Apparently after checking the list many times they're all about summoning monsters of many types like goblins. For example, I think that their levels will be affected by it. Can we tame them and make them live in the other world? I don't know, but it should be possible. Worst case we end up killing it and farming the experience they give. 
We'll have to test it once I'm done with ray training in two years. I should have some of you know who, ready as well to help us with everything. Sounds perfect in a year and a half I'll do my best to have conquered some of the lands in the south. I'm currently leading a 106,000 sized army. That's very impressive I suppose that's how you've been farming the soul stones, even though they're worth money. I'm surprised you get away with them all for yourself. Let's just say that I got myself an interesting deal with one of my advisors. I told them I have a blessing skill that allows me to consume such soul stones in exchange for more knowledge, and who wouldn't want their general to become wiser right? I laughed and then said, you've also made our family part of the nobility too even though that part is whatever, I don't really need that said rank but it's fine, we smile at the idea. Aurora bows her head and says, but oh Lady Iris you are the noblest of the nobles, a princess truly. Sister eyes then meet minds and we laugh at each other as we mock with similar jokes and acting. The door knocks and the crown prince enters watching us laughing and acting like kids, making him see a side of Aurora he hadn't really met making him smile kindly. Dark Priest's Perspective The day before the tournament at the village of Tun, the unique item was working so well but now it's pointing to the capital what the fuck is going on? If only this piece of crap didn't have a day of cool down. A dark priest yelled angrily while glaring at it. That's good news that means it is most likely a human we must not halt our search, and head there as today the annual tournament begins and possibly one of the candidates will be the one we seek eth or even one of those looking from the audience. Fuck, 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 fuck. A different dark priest then spoke, Lord Zylf will be there so we must convey the message secretly, send a raven it'll get there faster than us. Come, brother. I understand your pain but our leader awaits. Uck, damn it. He kicks a rock that hits a certain beggar who gets up slowly while holding a sword. I am terribly sorry old man, as my brother did not mean to hit you in the process. He grabs the item and starts walking. I'm truly pissed at the moment. Do you want to fight? You shitty old man. You'll become my venting tool today. A poisoned knife appeared on each hand through the black robe he was wearing. We'll be heading on our way. Meet us at the capital when you're done. They vanished swiftly while the dark priest walked closer to the old beggar while chanting a curse making the man in front of him slower. I want to see you try to run from me now. The old man then said, unique skill seven sword arts. First move, the lightning flash, an electrified aura ran through the sword as it left the sheath at an incredible speed and then back inside to it, and then no longer feeling the slight weight from the curse. He sat again on the same spot without muttering a word. Are you done you trash? The moment the dark priest took a step further half of his body disconnected from his other part falling on the ground dead as the blood and organs poured out dirtying it, making an old lady who was observing the situation in fear from her room window scream then pass out. All the participants are to be expected and wear this you'll be my representative Iris. The crown prince extends me a white set of clothes who then turns around as I change. All right. I'm ready prince. Upon hearing those words he turns around and notices something. Your hair is short that could be a problem. Or not. It seems like Aurora has cut hers. We're twins after all. My sister says while she hugs me from behind. Well that leaves the eye color but since it'll be so far away it shouldn't be easily noticed aside of your opponents. Just so you know every representative under the age of 16 from the Rose families will participate along with any noble, peasant, and my brother and sister representatives, so do your best, but no need to get heavily injured for it, that would in a way ruin our image, if you must forfeit due to injuries you can do so. I understand but I believe I'll be fine, at least against the ones of my age as I'm most likely a tad stronger. I've heard good things about you from my advisors, so I feel like you'll do fine, and don't worry if you lose against those older than you. The difference in ages really does make a gap and you're like eight right? Actually today is our birthday day one of the flowering season, so we could say we're both nine years old now. I smile kindly at him while Aurora smiles awkwardly as she didn't remember that. Oh apologies, happy birthday Iris and Aurora, after today's share of fights we shall celebrate it with a banquet. Sure, looking forward to it, I smile from cheek to cheek happily.
imagining what kind of food I'd be able to dry. Good luck Lady Iris, Aurora makes a teasing expression as she says that patting my right shoulder with her left hand. Meanie, I laugh as I accompany the crown prince to the Colosseum, throwing my tongue at her just before I go past the room. A while later I and him arrive there and through the main hall I notice some statues stopping at the first one. Who is this? I ask curiously as she looks interesting, and in a way powerful along with intimidating. If you ever read a certain book called Tales of Adana that would be the hero of the first tale. I actually have. I look below her feet and read her name. Rizia the peasant hero? Yes, she was the first peasant to ever reach a class that is usually gifted by our goddess, and she was also stronger than most summoned by Arya to help the kingdom back then. Some people say that she was the reincarnation of the goddess Arya herself. The blue sword in this grey statue is still passed down to this day, to the strongest swordsman in the kingdom. I don't remember my teacher having it, her teacher having it. I'm pretty sure she turned down Alfred's guidance. Is there someone else close to his strength or did she end up accepting it? The one who owns the sword currently is Lord Alfred, the sword master of the White Rose family. He's the strongest swordsman in this kingdom. Upon hearing those words and having faced both I just smile at the statement. I guess she doesn't believe it, even though I've heard they met each other as she has the white ring in her hand. Where do we go next, Prince? I ask disinterested in the conversation we were having, in order to find something new to fill my mind with. This way towards that receptionist over there. He points towards the spot and then we move there arriving shortly. Upon noticing our arrival a man speaks, Greetings your highness, this is the tag number of your representative. The lady has been seeded as number one upon the traditions. Seeded as one? I ask confused as no one told me about it beforehand. Basically since I'm currently the most influential person in the Lumen Kingdom, you get to be the one fighting in the first round as a way to open the tournament. That's very interesting, meaning I'll have all eyes on me. I reply slightly nervous thinking on it, that would also mean Aurora will be the center of attention, so the first match has to be a victory even if someone older and stronger than me, I'll have to do my best for her. Also your highness her teacher sent this pair of swords for her to use, he said if you chip either of them that you will be murdered blondie, those were his words. The man looked really old and arrived a few moments ago. I believe that you may find him watching the tournament, and then pick you up when you lose. Upon hearing those words I gulp as I know just how much Ray is obsessed with those swords. Seems like she does have one. I wonder who it is, and for it to be an old man. The crown prince thought curiously thinking about a lot of strong people he knew. I grab the two sheathed swords and follow the crown prince towards a big entrance where light illuminates our path as we cross to the other side. After a while, we start hearing an intense mix of cheers from the 500,000 seated spectators in the Colosseum, which is its max capacity. Don't stop walking. Come, Iris. Upon barely hearing his words I keep moving as my body stopped unconsciously momentarily due to the surprise from all these voices. Oh look husband there's a cute blonde girl following Prince Julius. Whoa. You're right. Hey blonde girl go back home before you get hurt. I look at the person from the audience who shouted and notice he has a baby sitting on his shoulders while he shouts at me. Hey stop it, love, you're a little far for her to hear you. Plus she wouldn't be here if she was weak. But dear she's so small. Fine. I bet a cute address that she will reach the top 10 which is usually disputed by the oldest heads of the noble families, if I lose you can have your way with me tonight however you see fit. Eh? Even the back door? The man makes a very perverted expression imagining it. Yes, but do prepare your wallet I'll make sure to pick an expensive one. Upon reaching close to the center after barely hearing the initial shout, I notice a black stone paved area in a square format surrounded by a cleaned and well-paved ground made of dirt. Wait here, you'll be told what to do, I have to go sit up there. He points to a place where I end up noticing another male and a female sitting. An unknown man starts speaking. Welcome gentlemen, his voice resounded strongly through the Colosseum as it is amplified with wind magic by a few mages behind him. 
The crowd cheers loudly in agreement and ecstasy, as there aren't many exciting events like this one throughout the year. That's a pretty interesting way to use magic. If I had it, I'd use it to shout at my enemies to scare them away. I smile at my own silly ideas relieving myself of some pressure. The wind blows my hair backward as I close my eyes while hearing the man's voice close to me. Today the annual tournament will be in honor to next ruler candidates, starting with our Prince Julius, our Prince Marty and our lovely Princess Liliana. The crowd cheered loudly for the royal family. As you all know the tradition dictates that we have an opening match with the representative of the most influential person currently in our great Lumen Kingdom, as such. We have this young girl with beautiful blonde hair, called Aurora the General of the Crown Prince Julius Army, a peasant who ascended to nobility recently, a lady with only eight years, a genius of the art of war. Upon hearing the name of who it was, the peasants screamed even louder than before as a lot of them heard Aurora's speech. He's really trying to make sister look good, though it is normal as this happens so they can gather more men to their army. Lady Aurora you may step on the ring as you are the seeded number one for this tournament. As such you'll be fighting the one with the last registration entry, named Yona Young Adventurer from the north of the capital. A boy that looks about my age appears on the ring on the opposite side of mine. The two rules that will go through the entire tournament consist in, the first to be incapacitated or to fall off the arena will lose. Surrendering is also an extra option to avoid deaths. Without further wait, on our black paved floor, of exactly 30 by 30 meters, our two contestants will now begin fighting. I walk slowly towards him. Now then rule number one don't get hurt, the second rule would be, don't get the swords damaged, and third, win without showing any significant skills you may have. Yes that's about the assessment Ray would have made me do for this tournament after training with him for two seasons. Either that or if he was drunk, he'd just say go all out and stop wasting time hiding your true strength. Uck it's hard dealing with him sometimes. The boy runs at me from afar while I walk slowly lost in my thoughts. He's coming it seems, to think I used to run slowly like that. No wonder he would get angry at me, living in his dimension sure must feel different. It must be hard to be in the pinnacle of something but I want to be the strongest to see what he sees, so I'll have to keep chasing after him if I want to surpass teacher one day. For completing the training and in the case of me surpassing him, Ray said he'd gift me something, I hope it's not another ring like that pink lady who thought that'd be a good gift, speaking of which teacher told me Isabella was an interesting one, so she must be strong, my teacher rarely says anything good about anyone, and even that. I have my doubts about it being a genuine compliment. Five steps, four, three, two, one. I dodge to the side avoiding the blow from his club, and hit his stomach with the pommel of my sheathed short sword and then keep walking slowly in the direction he just came. Three, two, one and. A sound behind me of a body falling on the floor along with another loud one, the weapon. I tried to hold back, but after having teacher Ray as a sparring partner for that long, I don't even know how much strength I can currently exercise accurately, I didn't get experience so I didn't kill him, I think I was able to restrain myself enough, controlling my breathing, my body, walking, running, jumping, dodging, have been most of the things I've done, along with a skill or two he made me learn just in case. The crowd goes silent as most of them couldn't notice the strike at close range, since it was either vision blocked by the boy body or on the opposite side of my own. I look at the royal family who looks confused at me, and then slightly on the row above them, I notice familiar faces, such as Lord Alfred, Sylvia, a few others I don't know, the Lady Isabella who is the one who gave me a pink ring, she's also the head and lord of her own pink rose noble house a weird looking one with white and red hair, and a few others. I guess those are the Rose family heads meaning that the Pope and Saint S should be close by too. Not like it matters too much as they think I'm Aurora, so I should be fine under the Crown Prince guard. Hopefully. Seems like the sister turned out to be very strong love. To think a sickly girl would become not only a genius at war but also in swordsmanship, that's truly amazing. Your friend Rosalind was certainly blessed with two amazing daughters. Well in that note so were we. 
I can't wait to see her clash against our little prodigy, Sylvia smiles coldly and expectantly at their duel. It'll certainly be a very interesting fight, but if that was the extent of her power then she has no chance against Alicia, of course, after all, she learned from both of us, and was also blessed by our elements, I can't wait to see how Aurora will react to her, the judge in the black paved arena asks, can you continue boy, he checks his face and realizes he's unconscious, what a shame to have ended already, and the victory of the first round is Lady Aurora, the crowd cheered with a low tone as many were still confused and didn't find the duel that exciting. You may return to the waiting room in that direction, the judge points at a passage which I head towards to. Once I arrive on the other side, I sit on an empty bench and notice a lot of other challengers. Having Aurora ability here would be interesting to perceive how strong they're at least with mana density. Speaking of which will the summoned appear in the tournament too? I'd love to see how strong Gora has become. I'm sure he'd be fighting with some big hammer. I smile happily thinking back in how kind he was. A certain girl passes by me, which I instantly grab the hand tightly, causing her to turn to me and slap my cheek with her other one, whereas I'm fast enough to grab her hand surprising her, as we look in the eyes of one another while I smile. Ira interrupt her by saying, Aurora here, you're not wrong but it's a complicated matter, she nods and says, wait here Lady Aurora I have a match to win, she squeezes my hand tight and then leaves it by letting go of her softly. Not even ten minutes later and Alicia returns, apparently we both won the match with one strike each it seems you've grown stronger old friend, she sat next to me while smiling, yes. I got myself a good teacher the strongest sword master in the kingdom. Didn't you decline my father? Upon hearing that question I smile feeling like I heard that line before. I'm studying under the man who taught your mother teacher eh? I've never heard of that person before is he strong? Yes, very I've never beaten him even by using all my power which is not as small as it used to be even though I have a very long way to go. Same here, I came to this tournament to find possible sparring partners and I'm assuming you came here to do something similar. Yes, that's right and also to do a favor to a certain clingy sister. I giggle cutely making her laugh placing my hand in front of my mouth. It seems like Isabella is attempting to recruit you, I didn't expect. Then again you're probably strong enough to become a knight of any house or, or at least have the potential to do so. I pat her hair. Don't look sad at me I couldn't cope with the speed of her placing that ring in my finger she was that fast, almost like a forced marriage of sorts. I instantly make her laugh with such a bad joke. I'm truly happy to see you doing well my dear friend, she hugs me while I keep patting her hair, it seems that I have been going through the struggles that you have been with this teacher of mine he's a complete sword maniac, she laughs as she hears me venting. We both seeketh to become the strongest so it's normal that we'll cross paths at some point in this tournament if we don't lose meanwhile there are many strong opponents so don't let your guard down and when we meet I'll also go with everything I have, I wish to see how strong my dearest friend has become. Please go easy on me. My teacher will kill me if I chip one of his favorite swords, I lift them showing her. She looks at them and notices that the sheath and the short swords are both beautiful and of great quality. This must have cost a fortune you should truly treat them with care otherwise you'll have a debt for the rest of your life, she says it with a serious expression making me nervous. I'll be see careful with them. She starts laughing at me seeing as how I'm still childish in her eyes. By the way, what's your swordsmanship and sword art skills at now? Alicia asks curiously as we shared this information in the past, I'm at swordsmanship level 50 and sword art level 40 so far, sounds like you've caught my old me when we met, I look even more forward to dueling with you now, I'll be happy to show you the difference between the two of us, she gets up and walks away smiling, I wonder what's her current levels, now I'm very curious and I'm itching for a fight, two hours go by and they call for me. The second round for all of you will now begin and Lady Aurora you'll be opening this one and all the ones till you lose. I understand, I say in a serious tone as my sister has an image to maintain. Please do head to the arena the judge and your opponent are waiting for you.
Upon hearing those words I move there while holding both swords in the middle of me with my arms. Ladies and gentlemen the second round will now be opened by the representative of the Crown Prince the General Aurora and this girl from the west of the capital Ava. Good luck my lady, she bows respectfully. Good luck to you too Ava. I've heard that you only unsheath your sword towards strong opponents so I'll make sure to force you to pull it off with my rare element. She placed her hand in my direction and a two meter fireball flew my way which I dodged to the side and then with her other hand an explosion below me erupts which I backstep barely in time as my clothes get grazed and I receive an injury. Notice, 100 health and 100 mana have been deducted. That explosion was unexpected does she have two elements? It seems like I'll face her with my magic instead, mana shield. I let my weapons fall on the floor and start running, icicles I imagine they appear in specific positions, notice, 200 mana has been deducted, they appear behind her in blind spots and a fire pillar surrounds her as she points her hands below protecting herself by melting them, she then shoots a fireball at me and I use an ice wall taking a step back hiding behind it which she then uses explosion magic behind the wall missing me. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Ice Spear, as the weapon appears in my hand I throw it against her with all my strength the moment the wall melts. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Pointing as fast as she can the hands in front of her casting a fireball against it, but they get pierced by it, as Ava couldn't do it in time but, at least, enough to melt the tip which hits the middle of her chest without piercing it instead causing some impact and pain. Icicles. Four icicles appear from blind spots and as they start heading towards her she screams, I surrender. A protective barrier appears around her from the mages that are keeping the tournament safe, as much as possible so that no one dies. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Before I leave I lightly bow at her out of respect which makes the crowd cherish for both of us, encouraging Ava of her effort. I then pick my swords and leave. It seems she too had a rare element and a supposedly weaker than mine, I didn't expect her to materialize a weapon like that and throw it at such speed, just how much strength does that little girl have? Ava thought as she recalled the way she lost, she certainly got me, if I hadn't melted the tip in time, it would have made a hole in my chest, probably letting me gravely injured, if more mana had been used, I'm sure Aurora could have since I didn't see any unease in her expression. In the end, I couldn't make her unsheath the sword, I'll be looking forward to this tournament. One of the royal guards melts the ice spear and a healer treats the hands, while a different mage fixes the arena as a part of it exploded with the earth element. As the tournament went on, Xylf noticed a black raven heading towards him so he got up excusing himself, eventually receiving the message which he unfolded and started reading in a somewhat safe spot. Dear friend, it seems we were close to finding the estimated leader, however, it now points towards the capital, possibly due to the annual tournament, and as such we're heading there, will surely take a while, so feel free to pay attention to any who may use some strange elements like darkness or skills related to disgrace. A smile filled his face as a bump stretched from the pants, it seems one of the winners should be the one we seeketh, possibly even the winner, ah. I can't wait. After ten minutes the matches resumed and the echoes of the stands started once again. I sit on the bench where I was before. Sorry teacher I was careless. If it wasn't for the skills you taught me, I would have certainly become heavily injured with that combo. Here you are Lady Aurora, a man appears and starts healing my wound reminding me of my father Luke. Thank you, I lean my head on the wall behind me. If you permit me saying, that it was a fantastic duel for both sides. I agree it was enjoyable. Notice, 100 health has been recovered. Seems like you're done. Thank you for healing me. The man makes a surprised face as he didn't realize it before her. You are indeed right Lady Aurora. I'll be cheering for you on your next matches. Hope you win. He bows lightly while smiling. I wonder what my parents are doing. I couldn't get in touch with them since 30 days ago, so I don't know if they came to watch or not. I also have to get at least in the top 20 or Ray will feel offended as he thinks I can go that far. Aurora is probably bored waiting in that room, 
I bet she'd be much happier being in the tournament even though she'd probably kill her opponents. I start hearing a conversation from two boys in front of me. It seems like none of the Royal and Rose family's representatives have lost yet. Indeed there seem to be quite a few unknown names and dark horses this year round. I wonder who'll win. Well, 100 participants to go therefore we'll know soon enough if not today then in the following days, even though it usually doesn't last that long. True. It seems like Lady Alicia has won yet another match without as much as receiving damage. Prodigies don't know what's it like to work hard after all. The two boys start laughing about it. After taking damage like that I'll make sure for it to not happen again as to not bring shame to my teacher. And once I'm back to training I'll put even more effort. They continue with their chattering. That representative from the crown prince was pretty interesting too. She had amazing magic control with her icicles if the ones protecting the participants aren't careful. She's bound to kill someone from one of the blind spots. Yeah. She's very sneaky most mages use their hands to aim their spells, however, I didn't see any motion from her combat style, it's truly interesting. If my father heard the discussion between these two he'd smack some sense into them. I smile while reminiscing of the days he taught me magic. One day I'll become famous like my father even though I don't have the unique light element to help people. Ray says I should stick to one path. And in my case to become the strongest is a goal that he and my mother respect. He told me that when my mother was younger, she'd often say things like surpassing Sylvia and become the best adventurer ever. I'll make sure to reach that goal in your place mother no matter what. Less than two hours go by and I'm called once more to fight this time for round three. Once I arrive at the arena a hateful expression is shown in my opponent. Ladies and gentlemen the third round will now start between the representatives of the crown prince Julius Lady Aurora and the Red Rose family successor Kai. I look at him and notice that he's way older than me perhaps about to reach 16 years he has red hair and black eyes and looks strong at least ferocious. This is as far as you go you fake noble, he shouts at me. I guess he has some issue with sister not that I care I'll just ignore him. Should I kill him? If he stands in my sister's path it would certainly be good to remove him out of the way. That does sound like a good idea, Iris. Aurora, did you sneak out? Well yeah. I was getting bored of waiting for you, so I came to see how you were handling things. Makes sense are you enjoying the fight so far? Actually am. Um, there's some interesting participants including the guy in front of you. He overwhelms the opponents with the use of fire magic. If you surrender now you won't die, I shout at him a warning. I rather die than lose to a maggot like you, you piece of trash. Well he said it himself. Aurora laughs in my mind. Seems like it'll be a fired match, you may begin. Ice wall. I place one a little further than me of around 10 meters tall to which he starts laughing, and then as he starts moving to strike around the wall. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. Ice bind and ice expansion. As I use my skills the opponent gets stuck on the arena in front of the wall while shooting a 20 meter fireball at it. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted, the first skill roots the feet to the knees causing him some pain, and then my second skill activates making the ice bind grow which starts to climb through the legs, the first extension results in piercing through the right knee, the second through the left thigh, the third penetrates his liver and from there onwards it expands all the way up inwardly causing his organs to be pierced ending up with ice coming from inside to the outside of his body, as he didn't protect himself properly or even burned my root skill which would have been enough to stop my combo, making me waste a lot of mana. Notice, 100 experience has been received from a human system. The title Human Slayer has been received. System. The title Murderer has been received. Protection. A couple of men outside the arena shouted while rushing inside and started healing him, but from the status and system messages, I knew he was already dead so I remained there staring at him with an innocent smile, as the mist disappeared slowly from the ice wall who got hit by a 20 meter fireball. That boy belongs to the second prince faction, so that's certainly one down which should make his further take his place. Think the nobles will attempt to attack me Aurora? Don't worry Iris it is in the rules that death can happen and people do sign up for this and he was older than you. 
How are you feeling though for having killed your first human? To be honest, I didn't expect him to die that easily, but he's no different than the monsters we killed, after all, I understood back then that all of us have souls. Correct, we could have been reincarnated into a monster territory, so I'm relieved to hear that you're okay. Though do ask him if he's okay just to look friendly. Upon hearing those words, I voice, Sir Kai, are you alright? I make a worried expression, and then his body falls making the ice outside and inside break into smaller pieces, forcing a genuinely surprised face as I didn't expect that to happen. He's dead. One of the healers says which the judge then speaks. Ladies and gentlemen the winner of this round is Lady Aurora, as you all know in the rules death can happen and is something that our participants sign up for. Our condolences to the Red Rose family. The men take Kai body out of the arena and I leave back to my usual spot. At the benches where all the heads were sitting, Francis the head of the Red House family rushed to the second room where they took Kai body. You stupid idiotic son, you saw she had two rings on her hand, you knew she was very strong and it's the representative of the crown prince why did you act so arrogantly? His thoughts didn't match the expression as he made a sad face while tears streamed down. From all of the rose heads, there was only one happy about his death, Zylf. This little girl seems pretty nasty. I'm surprised to see a successor die that fast. He was like level 10 but lowered his guard trying to overwhelm her with a big opening attack which resulted in the past matches, however, he failed to gauge his opponent's strength. I'm looking forward to how many more foes she'll kill in this place with her exquisite ice element. As this arena used to be white dyed in red every year in the forgotten past. Ava who was watching the rest of the tournament after her loss thought, she did go easy on me after all. I've faced Kai before and he was stronger than me in a fire to fire match, however, by using both elements I'd outdo him, but even then he should have melted the ice in his feet, at least, that's what I would have done, the rare ice element. It truly is very artistic, when she grows up perhaps she'll even make beautiful art with those attacks. Upon entering the hallway and sitting on a bench, the leftover participants keep a safe distance from me except for Alicia who sits next to me creating confusion on their faces making one of them say lowly. It is normal for two monsters to sit next to each other, to what the one surrounding him agreed by nodding silently. Almost with a whispering tone so that no one around us would hear even if they kept some distance from us the girl next to me said. Are you okay Iris? I look at her with a kind smile and reply. I'm alright don't worry. I've killed plenty of others during my quests, not humans but monsters even though I see everyone the same, and well if I got hit by that flame ball I would be the one dead, that's for sure it was a very good wall the way you used it, ends up blocking the view of your opponent while shielding yourself giving you some time to do more skills, though if we face each other I would have just sliced it in half. As she says that I notice her sword that has a blue sheath and remind myself of the crown prince words, curiously I end up asking, is that the sword the first hero Rizia used? While smiling she unsheaths the sword and then points at the middle of it where the words goddess area can be written, yes, it is, my further lends it to me for every tournament, is there anything special about it? I hold it in front of me looking at how beautiful it is, I don't know I've had blacksmiths inspect it. However, they weren't able to find much about it other than its attack and durability. In that case, allow me to appraise it. I use the skill on it while reading out loud the information I receive from the appraisal. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. As your sword, 300 attack plus 330 magic potential is zero hero effect may give the unique hero class durability 900 one thousandth rank blessed weapon after telling her the details i return the sword to her and ask do you have a class yet alicia she takes a while to reply as she's lost in the amazing information that i gave her so i decided to poke her cheek lightly ah she shouts surprised and looks at me almost as if waking up from a trance, sorry I don't have one yet though I do have some options mostly melee classes, I was thinking of getting the blader class, however, 
If I could get a Hero 1 then I wouldn't mind it at all even though we can always change classes unless we get cursed or blessed with one. She laughs lightly taking it as a joke making me realize I'm forever stuck with mine. How about you? I have one related to magic. I say hiding which is it even though I trust Alicia who smiles at me and replies. I actually expected you to take one related to sword seeing as how skilled you've become which means you must be more talented with magic she thinks. Now it makes me wonder if I can beat her if it was a duel of swordsmanship I could easily beat her, but the ice magic proved to be dangerous, however, by using the elements I inherited from both my father and mother it should be quite possible, but I could need to go all out since the start. They're calling for you Alicia seems to be your turn. I'll do my best to reach the finals so you better not lose till then. In exchange I'll beat you to a pulp and show you that my parents swordsmanship is truly the best in the kingdom, she smiles happily while saying that. Sure and when you have the chance sign your name in the sword with your mana. I smile back at her. And then I get up and head to a little room which is a bathroom, and inside of it, I enter the mirror world. I start feeling my mana recover fast and walk around the snow. It seems like the walls have reduced their range. I tried to enter when I had that gigantic amount of soul before and their range stretched infinitely, however. Now it seems to be small again. I approach a nine pointed star circle with a soul stone on each point except on one of them where I sit as I'm part of it. I've brought some soul to help you girls grow. I place my hands in the circle and feel my soul growing thinner and thinner. An hour passes as I exhaust most of my soul. Let's see how much I have left. Status. Notice, 50,000 souls have been deducted. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 14. Experience 1391,400. Fame, 2,300. Disgrace, 25,200. Unique class, Babel Witch, rank 3. Experience 4,038 thousandths. Race, human, name, Iris, 9 years old health. 1171,170, mana, 3693,700 status points colon 0 strength, 301 plus 29, stamina, 77 plus 40, agility, 85 plus 35, dexterity, 119 plus 20, intelligence, 244 plus 31, wisdom. 330 plus 40 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1754 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, purchases, wisdoms, body trainings, animal slayers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, Cooking series, E, Slayer series F, Sales, Soul Bounds, Elements, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class A, Monster Slayer D, Slime Slayer B, Skill Mastery A, Criminals, Herbs Gathereds, Herbs Types is, Potion Brewers, Potion Type C, Status Masteries, Beast Slayer C, Horned Rabbit Slayer C, Potion Administered F, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, Assassinations. Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer C, Notists, God Series D, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Solds, Herbs Boughts, Acknowledgeds, Disgraceful, S, Ignoreds, Forgottens, Zombie Slayer F, Curse Slayers, Turtler Slayer F, Corpse Transporters, Library Completions, Crime Series F, Wises, Strongs, Human Slayer F, Murderer F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Illusions, Readers, Trees, Skill Points, 1 Actives, Status Level 60 C, System Library Level 100 S, Mana Coat Level 70 B, Mana Wave Level 20 E, Ice Bind Level 30 E, Ice Sword Level 20 E. Icicle level 60 C, long slash level 40 F, ice expansion level 10 F, ice hammer level 1 F, ice spear level 1 F, 
Ice Wave Level 10F, Ice Light Armor Level 20E, Ice Heavy Armor Level 10F, Triple Slash Level 50D, Thrust Level 30E, Parry Level 40D, Backstep Level 20E, Dance of Death Level 5F, Vanish Step Level 1F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 50D, Swordsmanship Level 50D, Sword Mastery Level D40, Mana Control Level 50D, Ice Control Level 38T, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 40D, Slight Mana Recovery Level 60C, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 1F, Axe Mastery Level 1F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10F, Brainwash Resistance Level 100S, Night Vision Level 30E, Slight Stamina Boost Level 40D, Slight Agility Boost Level 35E, Slight Strength Boost Level 29E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 21E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 20E, Slight Health Recovery Level 46D, Ice Resistance Level 50D, Cold Resistance Level 60D, Heat Resistance Level 30E, Lightning Resistance Level 40D, Knockback Resistance Level 22E, Stealth Detection Level 15F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 5, Mana Shield Level 40, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 40, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 60, Magic Knowledge Level 60, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20, Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Announcing, Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Illusion Level 1, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 51, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimoire Rank Unique Final Phase, 151200 with this much. It should be enough for them to awaken soon, Aurora really did a great job. The amount to rank her up further seems to be really far away hopefully she's able to gather more soul stones with that army of her. I get up and return to Artana's world, after passing through I make the mirror disappear just in case. Lady Aurora, Lady Aurora, I hear some shouts and head outside the bathroom. I'm here, are you in the bathroom? Apologies. It is time for round 4 to be open. That was pretty fast. Yes my lady, it'll get faster and faster now as there are only 50 participants. We usually end the tournament after a full day of fighting unless unexpected events happen or when the late king requested to be delayed due to his health. But now that is no longer necessary. I understand. I move to the arena. Once I get there the judge shouts. It is time for round 4 we have Aurora the representative of the crown prince undefeated, and on this side a veteran of the annual tournaments, the successor of the Blue Rose family. Make sure you don't kill Lee, Iris he's the son of Ryu, one of my allies. I'll do my best to hold back, I walk on top of the arena and bow lightly out of respect as he too bows in respect for me. And then I say, I do not wish to repeat what happened in the past round so feel free to forfeit. He looks at his father who can hear our voices due to the wind magic and sees no reaction. Turning back to me and says, I shall use my rapier and mana alone a contest of skill, seeing as you have two swords. I'm sure you'd enjoy that Lady Aurora. May the match begin. The judge shouts creating a strong reaction as many are fans of Lee. I place one of the two swords on the floor and make a stance lowering my hip and back a bit. I shall commit to those rules, however. You might still die, if you do I apologize in advance. A smile appears on his face which is then consumed by a serious and extremely focused expression. As I'm about to move, the aura around my body becomes vicious and mana surrounds my body spiking crazily doing cuts in the air and deep ones on the black floor of the arena. Surprising Lee who had never seen it, taking a defensive stance placing one arm behind him and walking slowly to the side. What the hell is wrong with my mana? Notice, mana and soul assimilation complete. The adorable witch has awakened. The contract has been successfully established. Status has been updated. Notice, 
A black circle has appeared on your back which will develop further as more witches are awakened. My mana returns back to normal, that was way earlier than I expected. Did she just consume the whole soul instead of sharing with the others? Perhaps that amount was enough for them? In the worst case, my mana will spike a few more times if that happens. Are you okay Iris? Yes, but it seems one of the witches has awakened, the adorable one, and a black circle supposedly appeared on my back. You named her that? Aurora started laughing in my mind. I kind of named them after what I imagined their personalities to be due to the different tones. Temporary names. Upon hearing my justification Aurora laughs even more. Well it's fine just focus on your fight and if by chance another awakens just be careful with the aura around you. It looked very interesting. Yeah, I didn't know we could use it that way. Something worth exploring in the future. I dash at him surprising him with my speed, mana coating the sheath which he mimics parrying my attack still being slowly knocked backward due to the impact. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted, he quickly uses a thrust skill at my face which I dodge to the side resulting in a series of thrusts, making me backstep out of his range while mana waving horizontally in his direction. Noticing the danger he falls on the floor with the whole body as fast as he can, making the mana wave disperse some seconds later behind him. While he's laying on the floor, I step forward and thrust towards the face, and he uses his hand to push the body away rolling to the side, then getting up carefully after the mana wave completely disappears, while sweating from the relentless attacks. How come you don't unsheath your sword? Is the rumor true that you only do it towards foes you find worthy? He asks while catching up his breath. Without knowing what to answer I say, you wouldn't believe the real reason if I told you. Try me, he replies seriously with a captivating smile. I'll be murdered by my teacher if I chip the swords he lent me. Upon hearing those words he bursts laughing. You're a funny one Lady Aurora. He then charges at me relentlessly aiming for my vital points, while mana coating his rapier which I mimic by parrying and dodging them. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted, just how much mana does this girl have? She shouldn't have this much after that last round. I'm glad she went on with melee combat otherwise I'd have to be a lot more defensive in this combat. Uck. Upon hearing me he stops and gets some distance then asking, are you dissatisfied with something Lady Aurora? I walk back and slash the air with the sheath on. It really doesn't feel right you know? He looks at me confused yet admired at the speed of my slash. I unsheath the heavy sheath out letting it fall on the floor making a low bang, and then I do another slash which makes a clean sound cutting through the air, making a smile fill my face. I pass the mana to the sword making it shine in a blue clear tone. I then turn at him and say, as I have a really hard time holding back after training for so long with my master do your best to not die, I charge at him and start slashing him multiple times forcing him to parry and every time he does he can barely defend getting cuts through his body giving him pain and making his expression slowly look grim, I charge more mana into my sword step back and throw him another mana wave at him from a closer range leaving him no option but to duck this time around while preparing a stance. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted, noticing my attack almost on his face, he shouts, unique skill repel, then the rapier attacks my mana wave throwing it back at me while releasing his own mana together with it, I charge mana and attack the mana wave with a stronger one as fast as I can as I watch it getting closer, notice, 800 mana has been deducted, the mana waves clash ultimately making mine win. Then it goes towards him which is then cut in half with his sword coated in mana, and then our swords clash as I put more on my own to match his. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted, the crowd goes crazy making the floor and air vibrate with the euphoric voices of our fight. How about we do our best skill as the last attack next? You can even use magic, you have something nastier than that unique skill of yours? He smiles upon hearing my surprised voice pushing my sword away then falling back two meters, channeling all his leftover mana to his rapier gradually making it very intense creating a wave of noise. Heavy ice armor, thick layered ice surrounds my body protecting me increasing my body weight. 
Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. I don't really like to use this much but it works against Ray. So whatever he attempts to do I'll be sure to defend it and counterattack. Whoa. That armor looks amazing. Alright, here I come unique skill lunge. He dashes forward insanely fast lowering the body while stretching the feet and the right leg to the max along with his right arm in the same direction aiming for my face which I notice in time taking a large step further, forcing the rapier to clash on the ice protecting my chest. A loud bang echoes and pieces of ice flew through the air as well as half of the rapier that broke and then without hesitation, I punch him with my hand that is covered in ice making him fall on the floor, then point the tip of my sword in the throat. We stare into each other and he says, that was really tough I breathe heavily while he starts laughing and then adds, I surrender. I then lend Lee a hand helping him get up, it was a nice much if you had user a bit more mana. I would be the one laying on the floor possibly even dead. I didn't expect you to be able to move that fast while in that heavy armor otherwise, I would have hit your face and likely to kill you. We smile at each other happily despite the morbid words. As I'm about to turn back he asks, just how much mana do you have? I've been conserving mine through the rounds but you spent a lot last match. I have 5000. I blatantly lie since I healed a lot of it in the mirror world. Insane I have a lot myself but I'm also a lot older than you. Next year I'll be 16 so today was my last tournament and I believe you're like 8. Today is my birthday so I'm currently 9. I smile and then leave. Happy birthday Lady Aurora, he bows lightly out of respect and I walk to the exit while waving the back of my hand at him, eventually picking the sword and sheathing the one I used undo heavy armor. The ice pieces start crumbling as I move towards the exit making it look like sparkles to the spectators who cheer for me. Dark Priest's perspective. A little earlier in time. The passive glow of the item has disappeared twice now and the active skill is on cooldown for a few more hours. I don't understand how a soul can vanish just like that, this being must be really special. I believe we should head closer to the Colosseum as it was the place it glowed more even though finding the right person in the middle of all of them will prove to be hard. What do you suggest brother? Perhaps we could wait at the exit? Eventually, everyone will go through it. That does sound perfect here stick with the item I'll take a look at the participants to see if I notice anything peculiar. Alright be careful with anyone from the church or even the royal guards as they might have killing intent detect. I'll be careful and currently all I want is to find the leader of the prophecy. I'll be here with our brothers waiting for the people to leave will disguise as peasants and hide our black robes. The man removes his own robe giving it to his brother and goes inside the Colosseum. After some hours of watching the fights unfold, he notices a very exquisite phenomenon. Why is that blonde girl or acting almost as if it's alive? Did she lose control of it and it's now going in to burst? With the earlier round it didn't felt like she lacked control in fact it was very good pinpointing her opponents with dirty attacks from behind. Seems like it stopped, for now. I wonder what kind of skill would allow her to use her mana to damage the physical terrain it's worth investigating if she wasn't the general of the crown prince army. Guess I'll make someone enter their army to decipher Aurora's secret. Lord Zylf appears to be enjoying himself from watching her fighting as well, too bad for him that it is yet another individual he won't be able to approach, this man started laughing at his friend's demise. That person hiding on top of the Colosseum wall seems similar to Aurora is it her mother perhaps? I'll observe both for now as they seem to be the two of the seven targets that I'd gamble my life on being worth the time. Iris perspective. Back to the present. Once I head back from the arena, I go to one of the bathrooms and then head into the mirror world once again leaving no trace. This place with the snow ritual barrier always in effect feels amazing healing my mana rapidly though this time I should have around 20 to 30 minutes till the next round. Are you adorable? I look at the back of a girl with light blue long hair, who turns to me smiling and then gets up and runs to me glomping me making us both fall on the snow. Master Iris, she hugs me tight. I was wondering how many years, months, days, hours, minutes seconds, milliseconds. I'd need to wait to see, observe, stare, witness, spectate. 
I praise your excellent and utmost glorious beauty. This girl is absolutely crazy just how was she born from my personality again? I thought that I could be backstabbed in some way but she looks obsessed enough about me to completely negate such thoughts. Hello adorable witch, mind if I call you like this? Of course not my master, it brings me the utmost happiness, a gigantic joy to be called and named by you. Ah my heart can't take it, it's beating so fast that I believe it will explode. Will it explode? It will explode won't it? Certainly it might if you don't calm yourself. Tell me something, interrupting me she quickly says, anything, ignoring her I continue and speak. How did you awaken so fast, me? Everyone will the amount of soul you gave us was more than necessary as the soul stones grades were pretty good, as such I added my own power to your barrier master so that you can feel the love that I dedicate entirely to the Babel witch. Whenever you're in the mirror world power, love, yes, focus on the mana around you, it should be recovering twice as much as my mana is being depleted, to fill you with the nourishment you need, to refill with the life that is lacking. Upon hearing those words I look at the magic circle and use the skill magic analysis. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Notice, analyzing Master Iris's magic circle. Oh. To be blessed with a demonstration of your marvelous magical skills. This one is too blessed, overjoyed even. Notice, the circle is currently erecting a snow ritual barrier through an area of 50 meters, alongside a mana channeling that will stay effective as long as the one temporarily known as the adorable witch, stays inside the magical circle. So that's how it works now I understand clearer. I wonder if the other witches will come out as crazy as this one. I look at the light blue haired me making her cheeks rose and embarrassed. She's certainly useful, fairly speaking all of them have been these past seasons, so I ought to treat them well, plus at some point they might become part of my family, it would be funny if I arrived with more twins of mine, I would love to show them and see their reactions. I'm sure my parents would panic. I sit at a point next to hers. Shall we attempt to awaken the others? Ah. Master that won't be necessary we just have to patiently wait for it, may take days, months, years, certainly all of them will awaken. I thought you said I had given everyone enough soul so why will they take longer? I humbly apologize, she kneels hitting her forehead on the snow. However my dear master hasn't awakened, so you are yet too weak to contract with more of us. You don't have to be sorry for that, I'll grow stronger in no time. What do I need to do to awaken? I don't know master, but once you do, you will know what to do next. I understand, anything else I should know about you girls? One of us has referred before, but we have conditions that would make us stronger making you stronger as a witch, just say my temporary name and status, and master will understand. Something like adorable status? A screen appears in front of me. Status, unnamed, untitled, class, witch, master, iris health, 1170, 1170, mana, 3700, 3700, parameters, the master ones, titles, the master ones, skills, the master ones, conditions to awaken, receive a flower from the master. That's certainly an interesting condition. Does it match the personality I thought you'd all have perhaps? Possibly my master, sadly the knowledge doesn't go that far, and I believe it's unhappily the time for you to go as you're expected in the other world. She looks at me sorrowfully lowering her head and containing whatever inside of the green glittering eyes. I get up then walk to her and give her a hug, I'll be back when I can. Take care of our sisters till then and tell them they can use the eye color matching the hair one, it'll feel more unique that way. The girl's color eyes change in front of me becoming light blue like her hair, and I extend my hand to her cheek patting it while speaking. I feel like it matches you a lot more now. They too are very pretty, I'll be back soon. She starts crying happily after hearing my words, knowing I'd be gone, and then I leave through the mirror back to the world of Artana. I leave the bathroom and then sit on the usual bench that is empty. Two minutes later a man appears and says, with twenty participants left as some got injured and others completely exhausted the fifth round will start Lady Aurora, once again I get up and walk to the arena.
How does this girl look so vivid compared to most of them? Even her aura feels very present, does she perhaps have some special recovery skill of the sorts? The man thought confused and curious as he looked at the small blonde girl. Once I arrive at the arena, in front of me I find a handsome dark-skinned boy older than me, with very long hair wielding a long spear. For this next opening act, we'll have this great young lady, who has shown both amazing sword skills and magic ones, defeating two successors of the great noble Rose families. She's now up against a dark horse, a peasant from the northwest border who has shown great aptitude during all his combats. Raphael the spear user. The crowd applauded us fiercely as every match this young man appears, end up becoming very entertaining. He bows deeply out of respect and says, it is my honor to fight the great general of the southern lands. Likewise young warrior. I bow lightly to repay the respect even if he's a peasant, which makes it unnecessary and strange surprising him. If I win I'd like you to marry me. In exchange if I lose, I'll serve as the greatest warrior your army will ever have. I blush slightly surprised upon hearing such a proposition. The crowd went from cheerful and energetic to euphoric, as he proposed to me out of nowhere raising the stakes of this year annual tournament. After taking a glance around me, my eyes meet his and I smile and say, very well in that case I hope you won't die before you join my army. As the words resounded through the crowd the people got up from their seats and started cheering madly. we a battle with a compromise of marriage that'll be the most promising rule yet in the history of the annual tournaments. I unsheathed both swords holding a short sword in each hand surprising Raphael and everyone else as people thought I used one-handed sword style. I'll take that as you being serious he says and then I smile at him while taking a combat stance by lowering my body slightly and crossing my swords leaving little to no openings. The duel may now begin. We start by approaching each other while walking in a circular way gauging each other range and then I feign to dash, to which he thrusts the spear and I attempt to cut it in half hitting it but failing as it is too tough. It seems like it's no ordinary spear, I smile becoming more excited. It certainly isn't it is made of steel, a tough material which will make you unable to cut it, I wouldn't be so sure about that, I mana coat my left sword making him smile and mimicking, notice, 400 mana has been deducted, he takes a step further and stretches the arm increasing the range and speed of the spear thrust, which I dodge while parrying it with my left sword causing our mana clash making a small bang, then his spear goes all the way to the floor making a small hole in it. I spined it. The tip of the spear is frozen in the floor and I take the chance to dash at him. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. He runs in my direction using strength on the spear jumping above me while mana coating the feet, which he then uses to kick the ice in the spear as he falls on it, making the masses go crazy at the acrobatic skills. I dash at him striking the waist before Raphael has time to move while he quickly jumps backward allowing the spear to extend upwards from the floor, which I use my left blade to cut it in half which is responded by increasing the mana in it protecting it causing yet another bang. Dance of death, I spin my body fully accelerating temporarily hiding my right arm which appears from his blind spot on his right flank while my left pressures the spear which Raphael notices late still doing the best possible to avoid it getting cut in the hip. Raphael pulls the spear to him and regains some distance, then places the hand on top of the body part that is bleeding and says, heal, the wound I just made vanishes leaving the shirt cut. Seems like a tough opponent has appeared, best to save my mana and make it a long battle like teacher Ray would advise me to do. In other words, I'll use my natural aura to overwhelm him into doing mistakes. I breathe deeply and then spread the aura around me mixing it with my ice element causing everything around me to freeze. In return, he extends his own aura mixing it with the light element creating a protective layer of sorts. Her aura is making me spend mana to shield myself from the cold. What a nasty way to use your element. Raphael dashes and starts thrusting relentlessly, understanding that I'm attempting to go for a long match, which I parry every blow and then mana coat my right sword forcing him to do the same so his weapon won't break, and then I add a layer of ice element to it making the spear heavier each time I hit it or he hits my sword. 
That's completely nasty, he shouts angrily realizing the weight I'm producing every time we cross weapons making him go slower. This is the only way I could compete with Teacher Ray and even then he would ignore the slowness and beat me to a pulp. At least it works against you. I smile innocently at him throwing him off. Unique skill heavenly throw, as he steps forward to finalize the throwing of the weapon, I freeze the floor beneath making him slip then fall on the floor resulting in missing the spear, which is then blocked by the mages protecting the audience as it flies far away. I then approach and place both swords on his throat in a cross shape. I surrender, and, as promised I'll join your army, to that I retract and then hold both swords with my left hand, and extend my right hand to him saying, well fought, he grabs it and gets up. Thank you your combat style is pretty ridiculous. I smile at his words and leave the arena, and the general Aurora wins once again will she be the final winner? Just a few more rounds to go everyone. The audience claps as a whole excited from all the rounds. I didn't expect Tyrus to be this strong seems like she really received her and Aurora's share of gifts, who would have guessed that a peasant could have come this far? and the same goes for that Raphael it seems he acquired the unique skill that will be a great addition to our army, the crown prince thought while smiling happily. Not only did that brat kill one of my faction leaders but also is going to fight my representative next, such nerves just where did my brother find this filthy peasant? You sure found quite the representative Julius. She's a very pretty one for sure. Liliana spoke enticed by the child, it was a random found truly. Who would have guessed my friend Luke the healer would have such an interesting daughter? Julius laughed happily while hiding the fact she has a twin sister. Playing around with trashy peasants and actually find the somewhat good ones, this guy truly is lucky. Won't you give her for myself brother Julius? Don't you already have Angelica air fighting for you? He laughed lightly to not make his sister angry at him. Well yes but both she and the daughter Angie are a little too muscular yet yours looks like a doll that I could use to sleep hugged to during the night. Sadly she's indispensable for my army otherwise I would have allowed it, my dear sister. Oh, I understand, also next round it'll be both of your representatives fighting. The statement makes the brothers look at each other. Best of luck Marty, as to which he says, for you to Julius you'll need it. Really? I look forward to seeing what your representative has been hiding. The match's order alternates to give variety and the fight that begins next is between Ange and Alicia. Seems like this one will be very interesting to watch as well. Good luck sister. Thank you Julius may the best of them win, she says with a kind smile as the princess knows both since they're practically babies. Ange wields a big axe while Alicia unsheathes a beautiful blue sword, which is now signed with her name through the use of mana. I wonder why Iris told me to sign the sword, but knowing her she wouldn't say something that would harm me, she looks at the sword confused not finding anything peculiarly different. Hello Lady Alicia. It has been a while since we played together, I hope you won't hold back, she smiles happily finally having an opponent she can go all out as the past ones got overwhelmed by her strength. But of course Lady Ange I saw a few of your matches and it looked like you were bored, that's totally a bad thing for a lady to feel. Alicia smiles back at her. The two ladies may begin the fight, the crowd especially the men start shouting, one of them even saying he'd adopt both getting smacked by the wife right after. Ange starts by using several skills that increase her statuses and then mana coating the axe she dashes at Alicia doing a body swing which Alicia blocks with her sword being thrown 10 meters away towards the side due to the massive strength and impact Ange possesses. Alicia then buffs herself with wind and nature elements realizing that this gorilla girl has gotten even stronger since the last time they sparred, which Ange called playing together earlier as a joke. Both dashed, and Ange started with a full swing carrying a brute force behind, to which Alicia swiftly dodged overwhelming Ange with her speed vertically slashing the body making a long cut to what Ange responded by using her knee against Alicia's stomach, making her curve forward in pain lifting her in the air, and then blasting her in rage with the axe dull side with a loud bang. Ange kneels on one leg feeling the pain from the cut while Alicia is practically unconscious from the pain as three right ribs broke from the impact, and then hears a voice inside her mind. Do you seek the strength to protect those around you? 
a voice, who are you, anyway, it doesn't matter shut up, I need to get up and focus, do you seek the strength to protect those around you, god that's worthless, the only strength I seek is the one to never lose, protecting others will certainly become easier with such almighty power, for a weakling you sure have ambition, who are you, I am a fragment of Rizia soul that lies dormant in that sword, didn't you sign a contract knowing that, no, a friend of mine told me to do it, a friend, that's strange but I understand, do you wish to sign a contract with me while knowing about it, what are the consequences, all the knowledge, memories, and emotions rising ahead back then will overwhelm you, if you manage to win then you may be rewarded greatly, if not she will be reborn, very well become part of my power, she grips the sword tightly, a golden light expanded from Alicia's body towards the sky, making the sword of the first hero shine completely healing her, while she screamed intensively for minutes scaring those around her, especially Anj who remained speechless and confused as to what was happening with her childhood friend, making the spectators go in or saying it is the blessing of the goddess Aria making every rose head, the Pope and even the Saintess surprised while everyone got up from their chairs. The birth of a third hero, soft words left the saintess's mouth as she watched the girl in front of her, making those around who heard the saintess, shout the word hero repeatedly, quickly propagating through the entire audience. I beat you Rizia, uck, that was quite the horrible life you had saving everyone around you yet no one to save you, tears that do not belong to Alicia fell from her eyes as the peasant hero felt understood at the very end. I don't think anyone from the participants can beat me as I currently am Ange, so resign. She points the sword at her while holding it with both hands, feeling fatigated. She smiles and gets up, seems like you've had some sort of awakening. Yet resigning is dying, if I were to die then I'd have to at the very least beat you to a pulp like when we were younger. Unique skill berserk, Ange body became stronger and tougher making the muscles bigger and sturdier, more noticeable and then she gripped the axe very tightly with both hands doubling the strength compared to before and dashed twice faster at the opponent while mana coating it, doing a big bang of a sound as Alicia blocked it being pushed back ten meters away making the girl smile. It seems I was wrong. Forgive me Lady Ange, due to berserk mode she was ignored. Alicia dashed faster than before and traded multiple sword strikes that got buried by the axe and then Ange attempted to knee her opponent who this time around dodged cutting the leg making a small cut as the skill also made her tougher. Ange then punched her making her fall three meters away while blood poured out of her lips as they got ruined. You truly are a beast. Alicia spits some more blood to the floor, if this arena was any smaller I would have fallen outside its range a few times already. Ange dashed in an insane state to attack Alicia who heard a voice, use my blessed skill otherwise you might die, and if you use it, you might die too. Not much of a choice I don't want to lose here, blessed skill flowering goddess, using every muscle of her body for two seconds Alicia passed through Ange slashing her leaving behind a trail of colored flowers completely unnoticed by the girl, making her fall flat on the floor and cutting the axe in the process leaving a long and dangerously deep vertical cut on the girl body next to the first one, and then in the next second, an intense pain filled every cell of Alicia body, making her cough even more blood as the body was not ready for such a skill, ending up fainting from the pain. The healers ran urgently healing both while the tournament went into a pause. With the two participants unconscious they both lose, the judge says as everyone in the audience rose and clapped them for a very long time as their fight was truly honorable and full of action. Iris it seems you've awakened quite a monster. I smiled in a sinister way upon listening to such words. I don't know the details, however, I felt a remnant of a soul in that sword and figured it could be from someone important in the past, so I reminded myself of you being inside a grimmer eye worst case it'd be a signed sword till the mana eventually disappeared. Understood. However, Iris there's a chance she gets possessed by the soul inside of the sword in that case. I believe in Alicia, in the worst case will brainwash whoever trying to mess with her. However, the soul inside felt weak, it should probably be inside of the sword for a very long time, so she should be able to do it, after all, she's no ordinary kid. Perhaps you're right Iris. 
it does seem like you've matured in what comes to finding solutions using your own class, truly like a witch. Well I had a lot of nagging moments with my teachers popping out often on my mind while you were gone. They kept me from feeling lonely but without you, it didn't feel quite enough, and I do believe I've changed quite a lot even if the brainwash resistance is maxed. A week ago I did some preparations before coming here and as such the voices are temporarily gone. Matter of time till we can go back to adventuring together once the crown prince wins and is elected king. I can then put Triu on a command and we can return home to our parents. I miss them. Hearing that from you makes me happy since you took a while to accept them deep down yourself. I've seen them a few times since I'm closer but I do miss them a lot too. Seems like Alicia was disqualified along with the other one both for being too injured. They're being taken away now. Too bad I really wanted to fight her and see how further ahead is she on the way of the sword, I guess. However, magic can easily beat melee weapons at least in our last world that was the case. I feel like both have their advantages, personally love them equally especially after seeing how strong teacher A is with a sword. I feel like he wouldn't lose against a wizard of any kind no matter what magical skills he supposedly might have. As long as you get strong that's what matters, once you're done with training swordsmanship we'll start handling things on the other world. Sounds perfect, even though before that I'll still test myself on those ruins back in Astia village, and see how far I can go through them on my own, so that I can compare how stronger I have become to the past where I almost died. In the end, we could really use the experience so we go higher in levels, it is a very nice way for both of us to grow stronger. Soon I'll do my best to conquer those ruins and see what lays hidden at the very deep inside of them. I'm really curious about it and also spent a while reading books. In fact, I got to discover very interesting things about this world that I'd love to share with you but sadly we'd need a lot of time for that. It certainly doesn't help that the rounds are becoming shorter and shorter almost as if they're trying to rush the tournament. From what I know it usually doesn't last longer than two days. Those who win are generally the ones reliant on a weapon, as mana easily ends after a few rounds. It would be the same for me if it weren't for the little world of ours that has a better mana density along with my snow ritual, and one of the witches providing the ritual with a boost of her own making it extremely easier for my mana to recover. You should start thinking on names for our new sisters and also figure out their titles. If it works similar to our past life, then I'd recommend giving them a title related to what you want them to achieve as a witch. For example if you want one of them to become the most knowledgeable of them, a title named Wise or Sage would be appropriate for that one to have. I'll have to think on eight names and titles. A voice interrupts my thoughts. Lady Aurora the quarterfinals is starting now. At this pace I'm believing you'll win. I'll do my best even though there's always someone better out there. I get up and start walking to the arena. Good luck I'll be cheering on you. I wave my hand at him smiling with gratitude for his support and kind expression. Next one would be nice if you could win, but no need to overdo yourself this is just practice. Is it an important opponent? She's the successor of one of the enemies from the Black Rose family, even though most families have a lot of children due to having multiple wives. Meaning that getting rid of her would be a benefit is that it? Yes. The less influence the other factions have the best. Let's see if I can do something about it as she can be stronger than me. Be careful from what I've seen her opponents stop moving once she hits them once, possibly a poison or a paralysis of some sort. Once I step into the arena the judge starts introducing both sides. For the sixth round we have the general Aurora against the successor of the Black Rose family Eliane. So this is the girl my father wants dead if possible. She controls the ice element and is good with the sword. Let's see if she can dodge my poison element along with my hidden weapons. Baggy clothes generally contain some hidden weapons beneath them, and I can expect some tricks through her body. Following what my teacher said I should make this a magic duel and swarm her with magical attacks. You may begin. The crowd goes silent as Eliane defeated her opponents in unusual ways. I won't give you a chance to breathe. Ice bind, icicle, ice spear. Notice, 
1000 mana has been deducted. I aim my hands in the air binding and hurting her feet tricking her eyes who follow them. You bitch. She throws two poisoned daggers that are blocked by two of the many icicles spreading around her while I throw an ice spear aiming at her belly with all my strength. This time without holding back. Shit I should have gone instantly into stealth. She mana coats two other daggers with all her mana blocking the spear as she can't run away due to the ice bind while being penetrated through multiple places around her body. Protect, heal. The different helpers from outside the ring start yelling. Now to make sure she dies without they realizing it, a new attack inside of her should do the trick. Ice expansion. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. The ice expands inside her body from the icicles that went through piercing the organs inside killing her out damaging the heal that is being provided. Notice, 210 experience has been rewarded from a human. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 15. I clap my hands once making the rest of the icicles that were growing against her disappear, so that the judge and those around us realize I tried to stop the attack. Thank you for stopping it Lady Aurora, the judge says which I nod lightly as I expected this behavior. She's dead judge, the results spread through the entire audience not really shocking anyone, as the barrage of the icicles was too much for her to handle. Is this Aurora's doing as the only two she murdered were our direct enemies? My brother must be pissed seeing as he thought she'd win. The crown prince thought placing a hand in front of his face hiding the smirk. The winner is the general of the prince Julius, Aurora, who will be passing to the semi-finals. There wasn't much reaction from the audience thus I left without caring about it. Will you be okay with having two of the Rose families probably even the second prince targeting you Aura? I'll be fine I have the protection of the crown prince and I can defend myself too if necessary. The unique dark element. That's certainly a good weapon sister. Exactly Iris even though I haven't used it in a while I've just been training the army and of the hero and the sage roaming around me all the time, which for better or worse I believe they would protect me, and they're slowly growing stronger since I made them part of different squads, they get to level up slowly due to the party sharing system. The ones who sealed you right? It must be painful to have your worst enemies being around you all the time. I truly would feel terribly wrong if it was me. Yes, however, I'll make them suffer thoroughly when the time comes. Are you going to remove the soul bound contract after you avenge yourself? Since that was your wish back then? I don't think it's possible to remove it anymore plus it makes us stronger so it'd be a waste to look for a way to dissolve it. Fair enough. Personally I don't mind it, was just curious. Let me have a quick look at status. See how much mana I have left for the next rounds. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 15. Experience 200 1500 fame, 2300. Disgrace, 25200 unique class. Babel Witch, rank 3. Experience 4248 thousandths race human, name, iris, 9 years old health, 1171,170, mana, 2500, 3700 status points colon 5 strength, 301 plus 29, stamina, 77 plus 40, agility, 85 plus 35, dexterity, 119 plus 20, intelligence, 244 plus 31, wisdom, 330 plus 40 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1754 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, purchases, wisdoms, body trainings, animal slayers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sales, Soul Bounds, Elements, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class A, Monster Slayer D, Slime Slayer B, Skill Mastery A, Criminals, Herbs Gatherers, Herbs Types Potion Brewers, Potion Type C, Status Masteries, Beast Slayer C, Horned Rabbit Slayer C, Potion administered F. Goblin Slayer E. Orc Slayer F. Assassinations. 
Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer C, Notists, God Series D, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Solds, Herbs Boughts, Acknowledged, Disgraceful, S, Ignoreds, Forgottens, Zombie Slayer F, Curse Slayers, Turtler Slayer F, Corpse Transporters, Library Completions, Crime Series F, Wises, Strongs, Human Slayer F, Murderer F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Illusions, Readers, Trees, Skill Points, Two Actives, Status Level 60C, System Library Level 100S, Mana Coat Level 72B, Mana Wave Level 21E, Ice Bind Level 34E, Ice Sword Level 20E, Icicle Level 60C, Long Slash Level 40F, Ice Expansion Level 12F, Ice Hammer Level 1F, Ice Spear Level 3F, Ice Wave Level 10F, Ice Light Armor Level 21E, Ice Heavy Armor Level 11F, Triple Slash Level 50D, Thrust Level 30E, Parry Level 43D, Backstep Level 24E, Dance of Death Level 6F, Vanish Step Level 1F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 51D, Swordsmanship Level 50D, Sword Mastery Level D40, Mana Control Level 51D, Ice Control Level 40D, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 40D, Slight Mana Recovery Level 60C, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 1F, Axe Mastery Level 1F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10F, Brainwash Resistance Level 100S, Night Vision Level 30E, Slight Stamina Boost Level 40D, Slight Agility Boost Level 35E, Slight Strength Boost Level 29E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 21E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 20E, Slight Health Recovery Level 46D, Ice Resistance Level 50D, Cold Resistance Level 60D, Heat Resistance Level 30E, Lightning Resistance Level 40D, Knockback Resistance Level 22E, Stealth Detection Level 15F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 51, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 5, Mana Shield Level 40, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 41, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 31, Magic Control Level 61, Magic Knowledge Level 61, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20, Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Announcing, Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Illusion Level 1, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 51, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimoire Rank Unique Final Phase, 151200, Contracted Witches, Adorable, Half an Hour Passes and the Man Comes for Me Once More, The Semi-Final and Final Lady Aurora have been delayed for tomorrow as the Crown Prince Julius wants to have everyone at their prime for more exciting matches. He also has told you to wait here for him as he's finishing a conversation with his sister the Princess Liliana. Thank you for the information. You may go. I smile kindly at the man. You're welcome lady. Also I was asked to deliver this by a... What I consider to be a suspicious man that was hiding inside a dark hood, in case it ends up being something bad you can just tell me. And I'll send the guards after him for an interrogation he said in a very serious tone making a few wrinkles and veins easier to be seen. Very well. I'm deeply grateful for your concern, however, there's surely nothing to worry about as I have the Crown Prince Julius on my side, it would be very stupid if someone attempted to do anything they shouldn't to my person. Upon hearing these words the man relaxed and smiled kindly saying, Yes. Lady Aurora I do believe your words are rightful especially so after the show you have provided to the masses today. I don't believe anyone would attempt to meddle with you easily unless they knew for sure they could beat you one on one, unless it's a group of enemies that way it becomes a lot harder to survive. 
but even then I have faith that the goddess Arya wouldn't allow someone with your talents to die easily. I'm certain that after today I should be able to honor the goddess Arya and all the blessings she has provided me, despite being born a very weak and sickly peasant passing through death's storm many times. I store the paper in a pocket and then shortly after as the man is about to reply, a different man who heard my last words voiced out in a happy tone. That is certainly true General Aurora for either Pope Klaus have started spreading the news of your capabilities towards the different churches from the non-existence of any troublesome features that most of us have, from the excellent preparing you did by creating that magnificent outpost to the defense in the southern territories, such tales have raised a great number of worshippers to which we're truly blessed to be allies with the Crown Prince Julius. In fact, I have come with the good news that will certainly surely, delight the ears of any who calls themselves a general. That man can detect your disgrace and if you're lying so anything related to the army I'll help you answer just relax Cyrus. And now bow lightly so that he doesn't easily notice your green eyes which I don't know if he remembers them, but he might, and the person next to him is the saintess. I don't know what kind of abilities she has aside of the premonition one. But from all the encounters I've had I can tell that she likes me to some extent so don't worry about her. I start by bowing while speaking. Your eminence and the saintess honor this kind hard-working soul with your presences. I have been told great things by Prince Julius related to both of you. Thus I do not know how I can be of help but if there's any service I could present with my art of war, I'd be happy to as long as the crown prince himself allows such to be executed. As soon as I started speaking a smile appeared on the Pope face which became wider and wider, as my words flowed into his brain almost like that's what he wanted to hear, words I heard and repeated from Aurora. It has gotten to my ears that the general was interested in having the saintess presence in the army, as to what I initially didn't understand the reasoning, therefore, I had declined the idea, however. After the recent events where the Crown Prince Julius is doing his best to increase his army in number, and strength which by far is the largest force out of the three heirs, we came to tell you that the Saintess will join your army along with those of the church army, they left the Pink Rose family command as they didn't care for her, they want to help us and the goddess, as such you can count with 40,000 men plus the one and only Saintess of the Lumen Kingdom to heal those who get hurt during the war. Very well, I am deeply grateful for such a blessing. I promise to keep the Saintess safe and even make her stronger than what she is currently, along with your men of faith. They too shall reach higher heights becoming more powerful through my knowledge and severe training. As for the possible rewards which I'd assume would be the new land that we conquer, I'll leave it to your eminence and the crown prince to handle. I maintain my composure and bowing posture through the entire conversation which the Pope thinks I'm simply being respectful to him, especially after the last incident that was our meeting which was pretty awkward. Of course that Iris doesn't know this. I'm truly grateful and happy for such words. I'll be cheering you up tomorrow, and make sure to compensate you with an amazing reward if you become this year's champion. In that case I'll push myself even harder to be blessed by not only the goddess but the Pope himself, he smiled and left happily and then the Saintess after checking that the Pope was completely gone signaled the man that works for the tournament to go away, and approached me whispering in my ears, I'm truly grateful and happy that I'll finally have an excuse to be able to see the world round, for more than thirty years I've been stuck in the church as a premonition too. Anything I can do to help you just let me know and I'll move mountains and rivers to see it done. She approaches her head closer and kisses my forehead, and while still inclined towards me she says, Every saintess through her life chooses between a hero, a noble or even a summoned, it doesn't matter who exactly. We of my lineage are the ones who choose therefore the one I want is you. A peasant, she touches her forehead to mine and speaks. May you be acknowledged by the goddess Arya and ultimately bring the humans the salvation they seek from all these monsters, blessed skill grace, as soon as she finished multiple voices filled my head while my whole body raised from the floor making me float and a green aura that expanded from me reached for the sky. System, the title grace has been received. System, the goddess Arya was forced to acknowledge you as an ally. System, 
the title ally has been received. System, the god of evil has declared you an enemy placing a bounty on your head through the different demonic cults, strings will be pulled against the human race as a need to avenge itself for granting you the power and thinking of you as a possible subject feeling betrayed. System, the title enemy has been received. System, the title betrayal has been received. System, the goddess of order Luna has taken a neutral stance as you took a better path acknowledging your existence once again. System, the title redemption has been received. System, the god of chaos has further approved of your chaotic self which expanded to the point of making your enemy an ally and an ally an enemy while changing the negative perspective into a neutral one causing havoc among all gods. System, due to your influence, the god of chaos through the entire world will be implementing all sorts of dangerous seal releases that will start occurring once the system finishes updating, estimated time 5 years till it's finished, such places can already be explored but they're very dangerous and not all are visible, much less easy to find. System. Due to the skill the saintess used two random skills from the goddess Arya herself will be duplicated and given to you as a blessing. System, the blessed skill soul manifestation has been acquired. System, the blessed skill endless growth has been acquired. System, for as long as you live the one who holds the class saintess will always be your ally. System, as the saintess ally the affinity with heroes will increase causing them to calculating it with your greatest type of fame parameter. Error An abnormal amount of disgrace has been detected in your status. System, the villainous title has been acquired. Together with the unique skill Hero Detector, heroes receive disgrace detection skill once they fully awaken by leveling up their class to rank 5. Affinity they'll have to you is extremely negative. If they detect you, it may cause them to think you're an enemy and attempt to kill you. In the goddess Arya realm before the light struck her, um, this is green light enveloped her duplicating two of her skills and delivering them to the chosen one by the saintess endless growth and soul manifestation the first one will make that human reach higher heights what a lucky fellow too bad for the second one which is utterly useless for someone without a realm the goddess laughed amused to think the saintess of this generation didn't pick either of the heroes i sent what a waste she drank some wine from her golden chalice and then said, well it doesn't matter, once the summoned ones grow, they and the armies should be enough to keep my race alive in Artana, no matter what happens, I will win, I must, she said fully knowing that out of all races hers was the most prominent to lose. This time I even went as far as to use all the power I had saved from the very beginning making me unable to do anything for the next 200 years. So this will be the turning point with the thirty summoned I brought, the other three gods shall lose. What's this? Why were four skills duplicated and not two? Unique skill observation, Iris, as soon as the goddess started checking who this peasant was, and started checking her information cold sweat ran down her back. Status, level, 15, experience 200 1500 fame, 3000, disgrace. 30,000 unique class, Babel Witch, rank 3, experience 4,248 thousandths race, human, name, Iris, 9 years old health, 1,171,170, ,1 mana, 3,700 3,700 status points colon 5 strength, 301 plus 29, stamina, 77 plus 40. Agility, 85 plus 35, Dexterity, 119 plus 20, Intelligence, 244 plus 31, Wisdom, 330 plus 40 Attack, 0, Magic Attack colon 0, Defense colon 0, Magic Defense, 0 Soul, 1754 Titles, Reincarnated plus S, Manas, Mana Exhausts, Healths, Purchases, Wisdoms, body trainings, animal slayers, cooked fishes, preyed upon F, cheetah, S, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird F, cooking series, E, slayer series F, sales, soul bounds, elements, contracteds, peasant, F, class A, monster slayer D, slime slayer B, skill mastery A, criminals, herbs gathered, 
herbs types is, potion brewers, potion type C, status masteries, beast slayer C, horned rabbit slayer C, potion administered F, goblin slayer E, orc slayer F, assassinations, herbalist series C, skeleton slayer C, potion selling F, potion failed D, potion succeeded D, alchemist series F, money makers, merchant series C, tradings, herbs sold, herbs bought, disgraceful, S, zombie slayer F, curse slayers, turtle slayer F, corpse transporters, library completions, crime series F, wises, strongs, human slayer F, murderer F, villainesses, completed series, fishings, farmings, illusions, readers, trees, gods, skill points, two actives, status level 60 C, system library level 100 S, mana coat level 70 B, mana wave level 20 E, ice bind level 30 E, ice sword level 20 E, icicle level 60 C, long slash level 40 F, ice expansion level 10 F, ice hammer level 1 F, ice spear level 1 F, ice wave level 10 F, ice light armor level 20 E, ice heavy armor level 10 F, triple slash level 50 D, thrust level 30 E, parry level 40 D, backstep level 20 E, dance of death level 5 F, vanish step level 1 F, passives, bleeding resistance level 50 D, swordsmanship level 50 D, sword mastery level D 40, mana control level 50 D, ice control level 38 E, slight wisdom boost level 40 D, slight mana recovery level 60 C, acid resistance level 1 F, axe art level 1 F, axe mastery level 1 F, corpse dismantler level 10 F, brainwash resistance level 100 S, night vision level 30 E, slight stamina boost level 40 D, slight agility boost level 35 E, slight strength boost level 29 E, slight intelligence boost level 21 E, slight health recovery level 46 D, ice resistance level 50 D, cold resistance level 60 D, heat resistance level 30 E, lightning resistance level 40 D, knockback resistance level 22 E, stealth detection level 15 F, class actives, dark alchemy level 52, magic analysis level 50, destiny cards level 1, cursing objects level 5, Decay level 5, Mana Shield level 40, Class Rituals, Snow Falling level 40, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery level 40, Witchcraft level 100, Curses Mastery level 100, Rituals Mastery level 30, Magic Control level 60, Magic Knowledge level 60, Ice Mastery level 40, Babel Mastery level 20, Grimoire Mastery level 20, Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimo Iron announcing unique appraisal level 53 illusion level 1 hero detector level 1 cursed unidentified skill mirror level 17 blessed soul manifestation level 1 endless growth rare element ice cursed soul bound Grimo I rank unique final phase 150 1200 contracted which is adorable just what in the world happened to this kid to have this much disgrace and a cursed unique Babel Witch class? Villainous title? Were there even such things? Don't tell me this. Unique skill art Anna records, a while passes as she reads about the birth to the present related to Iris. I don't remember reincarnating someone from a different world nine years ago. Was it one of my underlings? Why didn't they remove that cursed being Aurora from her soul and destroy it? In the end. They seem to be stuck to a soul-bound contract so one's iris dies Aurora will follow through. If it wasn't for that the weapon could become dangerous in some hundreds of years and disrupt the balance of Artana. This is strange, iris status only has soul manifestations and endless growth. Hum unidentified skill, a skill that the system couldn't compute. I'm lacking the necessary power currently to identify it. But I have enough to at least check the other girl. Unique skill observation, Aurora, she reads her status as attentively as she did with Iris. Status, level, 15, experience 201500, class, pandemonium race, 
human, name, Aurora, 9 years old health, 1000 1 thousandths, mana 1700 1700 status points, 5 stamina, 100, intelligence, 90 wisdom, 170, soul power, 0 attack, 5, magic attack, 90 titles, etonyms, uncursed, soul bounds, contracteds, devourers, completed series, god skill points, 10 actives, status level 40d, darkness barrier level 7f, piercing darkness level 13f, mana coat level 8f, dark coat level 9f, mana wave level 1f, dark bind level 14f, extraction level 10f, passives, mana control level 25e, dark control level 19f, monster detection level 50d, beast detection level 40d, night vision level 50d, unique, transformation level 70, killing intent level 5, cursed, unidentified, blessed, endless cap, endless awakening, unique element, dark, cursed soul bound contracted skills, telepathy f, giver e, deconstruct d, stacking c, split b, imbue a, consumers, unique 3 thirds effects, consumed skills, this status is so strange, I'm pretty sure sentient weapons with souls shouldn't have a weight unique skill transformation? The goddess starts laughing crazily. Quite the trickster this one is, well no matter, they'll die soon enough either from the dangers of the world, the war against the goblin king that I warned the saintess about, or ultimately from mage and their silly cursed contract which they won't be able to remove on their own. A bit calmer now she takes another sip of her wine. Since I'm forced to be allied with her till she dies or the human race wins, I hope they'll at the very least be useful to me and the humans. Let's see how they fare in the future. Time to sleep for 200 years. I wonder how much will change by then, and how big my human territory will be. I don't know what to say, Saintess. You don't have to say anything. Just make sure you keep us all safe through your marvelous commanding abilities, and your own strength leading the human race to victory, as our almighty and beloved goddess Aria wishes for. I, I understand I'll do my best to reach your expectations. Good we'll meet again soon, she turns around to the exit and heads there to meet the Pope who runs at her screaming, what the fuck did you do Serenity? I have chosen the candidate I deemed worthy. I believe that this girl will be the one to follow the goddess Aria the best. She looks coldly at the Pope as it is her right and choice. The saintess makes him quiet and furious inside as he wanted her to bless the hero they got for themselves. She starts walking back and he follows through adjusting his white hat and clothes after making a small scene, sadly for him. It was something that could not be changed. The reason why he gulped her words and moved on in absolute silence thinking in ways to possibly use Aurora in the future, alongside the church hero even the simplest method like marrying the two of them. I don't know what happened just now. I straight my body up as it was starting to hurt my back. You do but you just haven't come to terms with it. I saw this amazing green light that reached for the sky, and not only me, everyone that was heading out of the Colosseum. Rumors will now spread making me even more famous once word comes out of it. I whose system doesn't even give me fame or disgrace. Aurora laughed insanely at the irony of her words on top of the Colosseum. It seems I received a random skill from the goddess of soul manifestation one. Perhaps it'll be useful in the mirror world. I really want to help out our sister, especially since she's alone in there. Yes I know but it'll take some time for that. Once the tournament finishes go to the mirror world and try the skill in there as we don't want anyone to see you do whatever the skill does. That does sound wise I might accidentally make my soul come out of my body, and people think I'm a ghost, like in that one book I read or something silly such as that, we laugh at each other on my silly joke, and then I hear a voice. You seem happy Iris. It seems like you were blessed by the saintess wrongly, but even then the blessing is yours to keep and I'll take it as a secret to my grave. I look to the source of the voice finding the crown prince Julius. Yes, I was quite surprised myself, she didn't even give me time to swap somehow with my sister. Such things are fated, 
like the successor of the White Rose family a similar but yellow light came out of her instead, I don't know yet the details but that was the light of a hero, to think someone that young would be able to acquire such a feat, it seems this new generation is becoming rather interesting, and she's even a good friend of yours from that white ring you have, so it makes me feel that there's truly something special about you, not to forget about your sister who pretty much revered you, while she was with me at the southern military post as she calls it, I believe that my sister is the truly special one. I smile kindly at him, you give me too much credit, she appears behind the prince with the guards wearing the black hood I left in the room earlier, today was a pretty amusing day, so let's go enjoy some food and then rest, so that tomorrow we can celebrate with a big banquet, from the Colosseum we got to a wagon the entrance had some peasants initially but they were pushed away by the guards before we passed, a few of them looked at me and my sister who had a great part of her covered in a black hood as we passed by them a man screamed, at long last, the one, and then something very strange started happening, the peasants started whispering, the one as they looked at me and my sister, not really sure which as we were walking together. As time passed from the entrance to the wagon the sounds became stronger and suddenly the peasants changed into dark clothes creeping the prince and the guards around us and they started saying. The one next to the one has an enneagram. This sentence made me place my arm around my sister hiding the visible star so that neither the guards nor the prince realized it. Once we arrived at the wagon I pulled her hood backward and she climbed the stairs making one of the peasants notice that we were twins. I followed right after and soon we parted from that place. While inside I asked, who were those people, Prince Julius, those who wear dark robes are the enemies of the Pope and in a way of the Church, they are a very dangerous group of people that have classes related to disgrace who are often exiled from the kingdom though they hide in different places which is hard to deal with as we don't have enough soldiers to search every inch. We also believe the group has a connection to the nobility thus making it even harder for them to be traced, he answered with a clearly displeased face and tone. Shouldn't we have captured them there then? The guards will exile them but there's a chance they will return, they always do, and killing them would only make their group start killing civilians as far as we know they're just a group of people that were banished for the classes they received it happens to a lot of people and it is one of the things I want to change once I become king so that everyone is welcome to live as they are. Hopefully, I achieve this before they become large and strong enough to destroy the churches everywhere especially now that they gathered 40,000 soldiers to our ranks. It would without a doubt be very bad. From what he said I feel like it wasn't a coincidence Cyrus. They were there for you as you have a disgrace class and a cursed one on top of it. I don't know what they want but we need to watch out for what could happen they might have a way to discover people with such classes like the Pope has the skill to check disgrace. I received a paper which I believe to be a letter from one of them I'll read it carefully when I grab the chance we need more information about this matter. Yes it would be dangerous to act rashly, after all, we're too weak to handle that many, I honestly think that those guards weren't enough to deal with them, it's not like they have to fight them just let them be they didn't do anything wrong aside from scaring us a bit, I believe that the guards should be reinforced the number we had today protecting you, were not nearly enough prince, yes I know but most are handling the security of the Colosseum but I'll ask some extra men from Isabella the head of the Rose family for tomorrow, after a while, we arrive at a popular restaurant where we have dinner and then we head back to the guest room where Aurora usually stays in one of the mansions of the prince, this room is awesome sister, I take out my shoes and jump on the bed feeling the fluffiness of the mattress under the linens, this is so much better than what I've slept all my life, Aurora starts smiling gently, well it is the perks of high nobility the one you don't care much for, comfort and luxury, I turn my face to the ceiling while saying those words, they definitely don't suit me, I rather go into an adventure, know people, and train to get stronger, she jumps next to me and whispers in my ear, that does sound like you but more importantly I am only detecting a guard 10 meters away from us so you can check the paper now, I take it out from the pocket and show it to her while reading silently, O oh great and almighty one whom we wish to serve, we have found you after an extensive look ever since the statues of the goddess of order Luna started bleeding for 10 days, 
We have a prophecy which shows us that you're the one we must follow, live and if necessary die for. We are a very large organization that is hiding from the many prosecutors of the church who exiled many of us into the mouths of monsters and beasts from innocent kids to the elderly. We beg you to save us O oh disgraceful being you who will ascend above all others and lead us to a new world. We look at each other shocked by the information in it. This isn't a joke, is it? The goddess Luna made the statues bleed just because I received an evolution in my class? Was is that significant? It seems we have a strange group willing to join. You in war Aurora, I laugh at her slightly scared. Please don't joke about it they looked and act like a cult what could we possibly do towards such a group? We know nothing about them. Well let me turn it around and see what else it says certainly they included a way of contacting no. Plus they sound like they had a very bad life because of their classes which to be fair could happen to me too at some point. I laugh nervously at Aurora who pats my hair. Seems like they did write a bit more, I start reading it. One of our strongest assassins will come tonight to your room and talk with you about any doubts you might have so please don't try to fight him he's friendly unless in danger in which case he's a monster capable of killing someone like Sylvia. We look at one another trying to read each other mind but realize we're both without thoughts. Should we hide inside the mirror? I ask Aurora after noticing the danger of this message. If they wanted to kill us I believe that we would already be dead. You saw how they outnumbered the guards back then and without reinforces. I very much doubt we'd live even if we did tell the guards about this information probably that could lead to their death. We could hide but it would only last so long and we don't know if the other side is safe either since they know of the other world they would most likely find us or even have a way to enter it. We signed the mirror together so I don't believe that would be the case. It is your world, and seeing as the space increases or decreases depending on the size of your soul, it's safe to assume it has to do with it in some way Iris as we know that it didn't work with mine. In that case, we wait for the person to come. I leave the bed and open the curtains the windows, and stand outside on the balcony looking around to see if I can find someone suspicious or something weird. I expand my mana around my body slowly stretching it in the greatest area that I can, Aurora. I shout immediately noticing the presence of someone behind me turning around finding a man in black clothes, a mask on his mouth, and a hood. I retract my mana and stare at him who stays silently between us two and then after some seconds he speaks. I'm Omar the greatest assassin in the world who just got caught by a little girl, I tease him to see his reaction. I didn't expect you to stretch your mana like that it has been a valuable lesson for the next time I have to assassinate someone. Skilled. Very well Omar, since it seems like you guys have done their best to find me I would like to know everything there is to learn about your group and which one were you geese looking for, between me and my sister Aurora, though I feel like it's me. But of course. We're those who have been banished from the kingdom even though we live in the slums and other dark places without security. We have connections to a certain Rose family the grey one whose head works with us. His name is Zylf and he's a very dangerous man we could say not in a combat perspective but more in a money, wickedness, and nobility power. Why did you guys get banished? Is it truly only for having a disgrace class? There are eight archbishops the leaders of the octagon churches some of them conduct human experiments and when they are done with the subjects they throw them out of the country and sometimes they kill them. We're not a good group either as we also kill to survive, fairly speaking in this world surrounded by evil and death there is nothing good in it, except you if you truly are the one in the prophecy. Firstly, I am Iris seeing as you haven't said it a single time I get it that you don't know my name. Secondly tell me more about this prophecy of your group, I'm grateful for your kindness and blessing by hearing your name Iris, the prophecy started before the system was implemented, it was said back then through generations with no end of women who became the saintess that the human kingdom would perish through this or due to those messages that the goddess Aria would give them, however, back then something happened that repeated itself during this generation. A pair of twins was born one being the saintess with a blessed skill and the other with a cursed skill that did the same thing, however, in riddles and different messages. Before the cursed one was murdered she had foreseen the future but not just any close part of it, the woman prophesied that one day, 
one would get a disgraced class and grow so strong that it would bring pandemonium into this world making the kings and gods themselves fall from their thrones and realms destroying everything as it is known. Thus the church who didn't want to suffer from it created a law among other evil things to stop that from happening. That's a very interesting story yet how would all of this come towards me as I am just a normal wizard girl with no disgrace whatsoever? The man takes out two items where one is shining and starts explaining. These two items have been passed since before the system came to be and survived longer than you can possibly imagine. The one that is shining never shone before till a while ago where I assume you received a disgrace class it indicates vaguely your location so it took a while to find you, and this other one is our red book which gives us the information we need, place your hand, then your sister's hand, and if what you say is true I'll never bother you again, I promise. He extends it to me and I look at it, a full red creepy book that looks like it has teeth and bones coming out of it, any ideas Aurora? If you don't do it he'll force you, so just try it worst case I'll attack him from behind and help you. I extend my hand and place it on top of the book softly. A small red light shines and then the man in front of me speaks. You can remove the hand now. I take my hands swiftly as the book and the light being emitted from it look a little creepy. I truly don't want to touch that thing again even if I'm a witch. It looks similar to the adventurers one so it should give some sort of information to them from our status hopefully not too much. Don't tell me you have something to hide, I tease Aurora through my thoughts. Who doesn't, she smiles even though I can't see as I have a really tall man in front of me. The light stops shining and then places his fingers in the pages opening the book around half. It's been a while ever since I saw the light take so much time to disappear it is certainly a bad omen, he smiles raising the mask slowly. Oddly enough I find the book creeper than this person, he looks kind of enthusiastic like a little kid upon checking on something secret. Aurora chuckles at my comment making the man between us tense his muscles. Once he finished passing pages all the way to a specific one which I believe is the one containing my information he starts reading out loud. Iris, descendant of Luke and Rosalyn, nine years old, cursed disgrace class Babel which rank three unawakened, he looks at me confused, your class is cursed? It was given by the god of evil and god of chaos which the evil one forsake me recently as the saintess chose to bless me. Allying me to the goddess Aria as a consequence, might as well add that the goddess of order is also mad at me even though there is a possibility she's not anymore. I don't really understand the gods. He made a conflicted face as his group is anti the church who discriminates, tortures, exiles, and sometimes even kills some of them. Omar then looks back to the page and rereads as he lost the track of it during my explanation. Iris, descendant of Luke and Rosalyn, nine years old, cursed disgrace class Babel which rank three unawakened, five thousand fame, thirty thousand disgrace, special traits, and achievements, soul bound, reincarnated, system error, cursed, unidentified, cursed, blessed, blessed, villainous. He looks at me extremely happy and speaks while bowing respectfully. It seems you truly are the one. If I truly happen to be the one what happens now? Before that, I'm very interested in your twin sister as I've been using human detection and can only find one in my range yet I can tell she's behind me. The killing intent coming from someone so young is extremely absurd. He gets up and extends the book near her which she places the hand on it. A very intense red light with a layer of black shines and then, you can remove your hand, Aurora takes her hand away and the light shines a lot more than when it did to me making the teeth of the book tremble scaring even Omar who is used to all sorts of dark cultist things. Once the light vanishes while trembling Omar opens the book and starts reading out loud. As he does the fear within grows influencing the voice that starts trembling and the shake of the body growing more intense. Aurora unknown unknown, descendant of unidentified and unidentified, 10,209 years old, cursed disgrace class pandemonium unknown rank, unknown fame, unknown disgrace, special traits and achievements, unidentified birth, unidentified race, unidentified appearance, unidentified bloodline, unidentified blessing, unidentified power, walking calamity. 
Deathbringer, unfathomable power, peerless general, sealed, cursed, 100% insane, personality disorder, physical body destroyed, soul rescued, soul bound, fake reincarnation, system error, grimoire, sealed, cursed, cursed, unsealed, uncursed, mirror, unidentified, sealed, he takes careful and slow steps away from Aurora while sweating and trembling aggressively as the information that he read from the red book about himself doesn't even compare to the words of the little girl in front, and then without giving us time to say anything ends up vanishing taking the two items with him. We stand there looking at each other for a big while as I process everything I had to hear that came out of Omar's mouth. It seems your information scared him away, just how powerful were you in our past life? It's a long story, but I lost my power when my body was destroyed inside the mirror, however, thanks to you, at least my soul was rescued and now I'm starting from zero alongside you, though fairly speaking this time around I'm quite weaker than what I used to be or even born we could say. My sister sends this whole information directly into my mind just in case Omar still hiding nearby. I walk to the bed closing the windows in the process where Aurora closes the curtains and then joins me in bed. I guess they're not going to bother us further? I'm sure there will be some iris, as people always seek those who have power but hopefully they give us both time to fully awaken and become strong first. Otherwise it'll be a hassle to do anything to think the strongest assassin in the world would run away from two little girls, I laugh at the thought and then lift the sheets so that Aurora can get in to get some rest from the long day. Thank you sister, make sure you recover from all the fights you did today, for tomorrow you'll need every ounce of energy you can pull off. Yes. I huddle my sister from behind comfortably allowing my body to dive in relaxing and falling asleep shortly after Omar's perspective after he escaped to think that the pandemonium was a little girl born along with the one. It seems like our prophecy wasn't entirely right as it should only appear when our master awakened, in other words, while the prophecy might indeed be right the riddle itself may be wrong or the way that it was interpreted, with the unique item that allows us to find the desired soul. It never occurred that we should search for the pandemonium itself as we expected it to be a sort of effect our saviour would have, I must report this information before knowing what action to take. Neither of them felt like they wanted to kill me or tried to, so negotiations are a possibility even if we end up allies of the filthy goddess Aria we must have Iris to lead us into the new world. Hopefully one that the shitty goddess doesn't exist. Worst case we'll have to change this one completely so that we'll have a place where we can live peacefully. Omar ran at full speed towards the slums using all the movement skills and items he had to deliver this information. Three hours of intensive running lead him to arrive at the main den located in Zephy's territory that hosted thousands like himself as if they were normal peasants working there for the Lord of the Grey House, which was one of the ways he had managed to hide and control so many people. At the entrance not far from the Lord Mansion two guards were securing what appeared to be a completely broken tiny house made of wood, along with a rusty door that was half open, even without guards such a place wouldn't be visited by anyone as it looked like the type of abandoned place filled with trash and leftovers, but nonetheless, Omar went through both who couldn't react in time as he bypassed the security as if they weren't there in the first place. Once he went through, entered a hole with a ladder which the man skillfully slid downwards in what felt like a tunnel that led underground similar to the sewers but without the garbage, smell, or water, once his feet touched the unrefined stone floor followed by dashing with the left over body energy provided by the amount of stamina possessed, which wasn't low by far and ran through a few sections of the tunnel itself curving here and there eventually reaching a red door which Omar opened and closed upon entering. Similar assassins who were inside ready to kill any intruders had already detected a human presence with fast movement speed coming in. But upon seeing who it was they didn't do anything to the tall man as he was one of them. He passed by them without a moment to lose going through a few rooms eventually reaching a really wide room with four statues each resembling a different god, a male one that matched the god of evil. Two female ones matching Arya and Luna and a genderless one matching the god of chaos who was known in that place for being able to have more than one gender and even having none. 
This information had been acquired as all the statue's appearances would change from time to time. Evil masters, five hooded men in black clothes turned their attention to him who stood close to them while regaining his breath. Omar, what's wrong? Did the one, call the guards on you or something? Ah, no the one is named Iris she's actually pretty kind, reasonable, and gave me a chance to explain myself while questioning me about things she didn't know or understand. One of them interrupted Omar, does that mean she's willing to join us? I don't know. I found something else which made me run away in fear, as the hooded masters were about to shout angrily at him, Omar extended the red book at them noticing the teeth on the cover shaking causing an uneasiness all over them making them silent, holding their complaints back. The master in the middle opened the book passing some pages and on the left one he saw the one whom Omar identified as Iris. Then read the information to the ones around him, Iris, descendant of Luke and Rosalyn. Nine years old, cursed disgrace class Babel which rank three unawakened, five thousand fame, thirty thousand disgrace, special traits, soul bound, reincarnated, system error, cursed, unidentified, cursed, blessed, blessed, villainous. The masters thought confused about why would he fret over this and then as if reading their mind Omar speaks, next page is the one, twin sister. Once more the master started reading out loud the information in the book this time feeling a cold sweat and fear as he progressed, Aurora unknown unknown, descendant of unidentified and unidentified, 10,209 years old, cursed disgrace class pandemonium unknown rank, unknown fame, unknown disgrace, special traits, unidentified birth, unidentified race, unidentified appearance, unidentified bloodline, unidentified blessing, unidentified power, walking calamity, death bringer, unfathomable power, peerless general, sealed, cursed, 100% insane, personality disorder, physical body destroyed, soul rescued, soul bound, fake reincarnation, system error, grimoire, sealed, cursed, cursed, unsealed, uncursed, mirror, unidentified, sealed. A very long silence proceeded as the men were taking their time to absorb the information they received from their almighty book that was superior to the one used by the Adventurers Guild, and even the church and royalty ones since there exist many types. The one who had gained some resistance to the information that was written spoke. What should we do masters? It seems neither of them is awakened which means the prophecy still has yet to happen. From the information of the Red Book it seems that depending on our actions, we either stop them both from destroying this world or join the likes of the other factions forming an alliance to defeat them which the answer is obvious as to help them triumph. After all, we waited thousands of years for this opportunity. The rest of the masters agreed by nodding their heads making it look like a weird ritual was being executed. There is something else. The saintess blessed the one making her an ally to the goddess Aria and the church, noisy screams and shouts of anger spread through them, and then one of them asked, how could this happen, how did this happen, was our love for the one and the hate for those who did us wrong not enough through all these years, master from the conversation I eavesdropped while I was in stealth close by to the sisters, it appears that Aurora the Pandemonium is currently the general of the crown prince Julius who is an ally to the church as such somehow she made the saintess who was with the pope at the time, to bless the one and also join the army that is under her command and gained a force of 40,000 men from the church that are heading towards the southern post, a base that was built half a year ago to combat the upcoming invasion of the goblin king. It also appears that the twin sisters intend to conquer the lands further south. Perhaps that's what the prophecy is all about the new world that they'll create through the war which I sincerely believe to be the very nature of the one, the soon to be our leader, Iris. In other words, what you're trying to say Omar is that through many coincidences this girl Aurora reached the rank of general as a peasant which is generally given only to one of the Rose family heads, has the absolute control of how the army proceeds and is attempting to pave a new world by using her enemies the nobles and the church while defeating one of the greatest enemies of humanity the Goblin King. Yes, I believe that would indeed match every bit of information we've obtained from the General Aurora who turned out to be the twin sister of Iris, Master, 
A different voice joined the conversation from one of the masters. Even though they were born from the same parents why is it that Aurora ones are unidentified such a weird thing, since Iris is a type of witch that I have never heard, Babel in specific, so I do not know the differences between her and a normal one, there is a chance that our enemies have been charmed or even brainwashed to some extent to help them since I do know that's two skills some of our witches have. A different master added, I do know that the brainwash can be countered but perhaps as Babel witch, it gives her a greater power that enables it to happen otherwise I don't believe the saintess would bless someone without proper evaluation. A different voice added from the only one who still hasn't speak, the one must truly have profound magic otherwise how would she escape the identifiers of the Pope? Four of the masters along with Omar turned to him surprised as they remembered that such skills were indeed used to identify different allies and even used to extract information from torturing methods since the Pope has a human lie detector skill. If the Pope and the Saintess have been brainwashed or even one of them, then it makes sense that we join the fight in the south which we could contribute greatly along with the Grey House. Omar then said, if we fight against the church it would only weaken Aurora army possibly making the Goblin army beat them due to the internal struggles of the Lumen Kingdom, but I don't think it is wise for this information to reach the Lord of the Grey House. I wouldn't want our savior nearby that fellow, no matter how much potential both of them might have they're still nine years old since they're twins who were born at the same time, which means the Aurora girl age must be the body and the really old one mentioned in the red book could be from her soul who somehow ended up in our world Artana. If I had to guess, Iris is the culprit for that to happen who probably summoned it while inside her mother womb through some cursed method, after all. It would be weird for the two pieces of the prophecy to appear out of nowhere, I have faith that everything happened for a reason, and this world was certainly chosen by them to help us. I truly value your faith in the prophecy and as such we shall go into a votation as we have always done the five of us, who votes to aid the pandemonium girl in the war against the goblin king while making a truce with the church till we beat him, raise your hand if in favor, three out of five raised their hands. So the man continued by saying, this means that we shall use three-fifths of our force to help Aurora and then the other two along with Omar shall take care of things in the kingdom while we're gone and keep an eye without getting too close to the one as we still need Iris to awaken and it may take some years still as she's ranked three, but at least is beyond enough disgrace to grow much 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 more, everyone agrees. Yes, Master Balthazar. They replied in unison in a creepy tone. On the following day two of the flowering season at a room where Alicia was laying down on a bed, it seems you went beyond your limits, I had never seen you using such a beautiful skill before, that last one you used daughter, Alfred said happily as he was excited from the swordsmanship she displayed earlier. It was a very incomplete level 1 skill that I used from the remnants of the peasant who ascended to a hero, who gave it to me. I now have a fragment of her power so I know what I must do to improve further and get even stronger like she was, Alicia said with a calm and mature own unbefitting of a child her age, Sylvia noticing a few differences as she's very obsessed with her daughter she says, what else did this hero of the first generation blessed you with, Alicia? I got to see her whole life in a glimpse, so I got to experience her memories her emotions and I've come to realize many things especially the truth about the human kingdom which I'll do my best to change, once I have obtained the hero of the first generation power, it was thanks to her that the goddess started summoning heroes, however, it was not always like this, this blue sword was also summoned by her and there more of these things hidden in the kingdom, I'll be sure to collect every single piece or armor, accessories and weapons that may be loitering around before they fall in the wrong hands, you changed a lot dear Alicia, are you still my lovely daughter and not the hero? Sylvia asks as Alicia feels too different from what she was used to be, Alicia stares deeply into her mother eyes, I didn't go through all that training to lose to a mere soul fragment of a hero, I am the heir of the White Rose family, the daughter of the sword masters Sylvia and Alfred. I'm also the best friend of Iris who told me about this sword secret so that I could reach higher heights, I won't let any of you down, and I'll for sure become the strongest sword master the world has ever seen. I understand dear, 
Sylvia patted her hair softly and then Alfred asked, since you're out of the tournament what would you like to do next Alicia? I'll join Aurora in the south once I'm fully healed since I have the memories of the past wars against such monsters. I'm sure it'll be helpful as the hero used to be a brilliant general if the two of you allow me of course. They look at each other and then each nods slightly. I'll allow you to assist your friends and the army that is being led by the General Aurora. Mostly because we are allies to the Crown Prince Julius and the Blue Rose family, however, I'll have you train for a while with your mother instead once she thinks you're good to go. Then I'll have no objections daughter, after all. I can't have you dying. Upon hearing these words Sylvia smiled, it seems like you'll have to get stronger fast if you want to go meet your friends in the southern outpost even though if the armies fall we'll all die, no matter how strong an individual might be. It only matters in a one on one, if you're faced with hundreds, thousands, millions of enemies, you can't help but get tired of cutting them down eventually dying, that is how war is, a greedy monster consumer of souls. Alicia smiles as becoming the strongest has turned out to be her absolute goal. I understand and I know. I saw the memories and felt the despair the hero did through the wars she led. The friends she lost. It was. Truly sorrowful. It even made me pity her who sacrificed everything, becoming the first hero and also the strongest woman in the kingdom back then, and the main reason the expansion of the Lumen Kingdom even happened, past heroes don't compare to her much less the current ones who are still growing. In other words, now that you've obtained the hero power at such a young age which probably took her the whole life, you'll be able to transcend her past achievements, but even if that's true your body can't keep up, and you using that skill demonstrates as much, so you must train harder but for now you must completely rest as the healing was successful but that won't dissipate the fatigue you made your body feel. At least I didn't lose to ants this time around. Alicia laughed lightly and then fell asleep, whereas Alfred pulls the linens closer to her chin to make sure she has no cold and then he says. Surprised Iris knew about the sword secret. It is information that not even I had. I wonder how that mysterious girl unraveled it. Must be a skill of sorts also it seems the saintess gave a blessing just not sure to her yet but a green light was said to reach for the sky and when that happens it means the goddess Arya will directly bless the chosen human. Talking about that the one fighting for the crown prince Julius was Iris right? I believe so Alfred, since she said Aurora doesn't have an element and since they're twins there's a big chance the crown prince asked Tyrus to fight in her place to increase the general fame which could result in a bigger number of troops for his army. Hum, I'm wondering if the sane Tess didn't mistake the twins and bless Tyrus instead since she was fighting in Aurora name and place. As soon as Sylvia's words finished Alfred started laughing and then he said, I honestly hope she did I'd be happy since she's Alicia's good friend and a potential knight to guard her in the long future to come. With a lower tone while signaling him Sylvia says, not so loud honey, our daughter resting, and yes either of the twins will be a good addition, they both can easily serve a certain purpose to Alicia in the future. The hero can and his colleagues perspective around the same time. It seems we will be deployed to the southern outpost to take a role in one of the prince's army. It took a while for the church to come with a decision but it seems like we'll have the support of the saintess. I just wish she'd choose to bless me already so I can reach higher heights and become a hero among heroes, he puffed his chest full of pride. It's probably due to your personality that Lady Saintess hasn't chosen you, she seems like a very long person who's more likely to choose someone who actually does something other than being lazy waiting for orders. At this pace we're sure to be behind in levels compared to the other parties, even the other hero where one of the priests said they were already there fighting along with the army, yet here we are catching criminals and doing all sorts of religious missions. I feel like you choose the worst place for us to be here, said Ong Oka as she exploded tired of hearing him being so full of himself almost every day. Another classmate of their university spoke. To think I'd live long enough to see the calmest girl of the world to erupt like this. Oh shut up Vinny. 
It's not like anyone else said something when we were summoned you all agreed to be here and some of us are already on the battlefield if anything being here at least has kept you all safe from harm, so suck it. TSH, once a trash always a trash, even if you got lucky and received the hero class I'll still become stronger than you. Just wait, I'll make you suck in those words soon, I'll be heading out I'm done being in the church if anyone wishes to come with me feel free to join my party. From this day onwards I'll become an adventurer and grow my own status in this new world. As he left the church dining hall some chased after him including Ong Oka leaving Ken behind with the leftovers who didn't care too much about what who to follow. I'm not sure about the rest of you who stayed but I'll do what the Pope asks as he treated us in a good way and I do believe in him and the Saintess. We can certainly take our time leveling up and getting stronger, after all, if we die it's the end, yeah. You're right on that Ken. We have time to get stronger and it's not like everyone wants to fight. There are many ways to help the kingdom prosper, with our knowledge and different blessed skills it is only a matter of time till a new king comes forth and then we'll bring a change. That's reassuring Zen, however, we should indeed step up a bit more so that we can at least protect ourselves from the other summon ones, as we may have to fight them in the future. Leave it to me. I've already started befriending nobles and got some contacts with the different Rose families. We'll start by establishing political and economical influences, raising the prospect of our future so that we can then manage what's to come and easily control the outcome of the Lumen Kingdom, by getting the new technology to be used by everyone, which will make our pockets full in no time. They smiled at each other as they planned quite the scheme to overthrow the kingdom behind the church. Iris's perspective and the present I open my eyes and look at my twin sister Aurora who's resting next to me quietly, I really do look different with short hair, don't think it looks bad, maybe I just grew used to having it long for most of my life as a mother would only cut the tips to keep it healthy. I get up quietly and softly to not wake up my sister even though I never really know how her sleeping works as she calls it a sort of rest and not quite the sleep she knew about in times. Once I'm up on the room floor I dress into the set of clothing a maid brought even before we were here. And I end up in a very interesting uniform of sorts, I walk closer to the windows and take the left side curtain to the side leaving the other side dark where Aurora is. I then grab the chance to look myself into the window reflection, it really does feel reassuring being able to see my green eyes unlike when I was even younger. And this uniform. It is quite cool, white shirt with a blue dragon and a sword in the back and in the front, the flag of the Lumen Kingdom. I suppose the today match will be quite important even though at the dinner yesterday night. The crown prince said I would most likely lose, after all. My opponent is the daughter of Isabella the successor of the Pink Rose family, an expert at assassination and the one this pink ring in my finger belongs to, my dominant left hand trembles of excitement. Teacher A himself said I wouldn't get very far and he was right, if I didn't use my mirror world to always be in top shape towards my mana, I certainly wouldn't have bested some of them, perhaps I would even be heavily injured. Ray said I can try again in two years after he finishes training me, if I am able to learn everything I'm sure a lot will change, but I wonder if it will be enough to become the strongest like that. Teacher did say that there are very strong people in this kingdom, however, they don't compare to those outside, monsters, and beasts capable of destroying us as if we're nothing compared to them. My hand shakes so I grab it with my right one to hold it tightly. Yet. Why is it that I can't help but smile at such thoughts? The stronger the opponents the more excited I feel running through my veins. I want to go back to adventuring with Aurora I leave and take our parents with us so we all get stronger and even Elise to learn with my father. I could even introduce her to Alicia. I'm sure they would become good friends. You're sure filled with happy thoughts all the time little sister Iris. I turn around slowly and notice Aurora sitting on the bed to which I say, good morning big sister, making her laugh. It is interesting how I get to read your thoughts just by turning telepathy on. Perhaps it is due to all the things that connect us. Prying on my thoughts you evil sister. I can't even have any privacy. I start laughing mocking her. 
Related to your thoughts I'll try to conquer the southern lands as fast as I can but it'll depend on the total number of forces I'll receive from all of this. After all, compared to the enemy we are truly outnumbered reason why I haven't started attacking and have only been invading closest parts of the forest killing whatever beast or monster we find so the soldiers get stronger through levels and skills while learning teamwork. Leading an army sounds very tough. Shall I ask the adorable witch to give you a hand? It can be tough but I already have some experience, and can she even go past through the mirror world to the world of Artana? Now that she has a physical body, and a complete soul made from a soul stone that belongs to the world of Artana, it should be possible. I did try to use the most expensive ones for that, some of them were really old since not just anyone can kill rank B monsters and beasts. That does sound interesting but I have the hero and the sage always close protecting me, so it would be best to get her to do something else instead. Just not sure what she can help you with. She made it so the mana recovery in the other world would become a lot faster for me, as long as she's in one of the nine spots of the magical star circle, which I used to always have close to the maximum mana during the tournament. That does sound useful but since she's over there maybe she could explore the mirror world? I'm afraid that's out of the question since the soul I used awakening you has been reduced a lot, and I don't know how much more I'll need to fully awaken you, so we'll focus on you acquiring soul power and then you can proceed to awaken on your own, along with consuming any skills that you find during the two years I'll be gone, and convert everything that you can't use since you're a grimo eye into more soul power. Once you fully awaken you should save the skills that you find useful and give them to me once we meet again, you can either do this from the very beginning or not depending on how close you are to awaken, one way or another, I'll go back home once I'm done with Ray and wait for you at our home while doing some quests and explore the ruins from back then. Sure Iris, that's a good plan, I'll keep consuming soul stones while I can even though at some point I might have to exchange them for money for supplies in case we run out, even though I've been setting some countermeasures to not be low on money, as well as making the soldiers create farming fields by rotating crops, including some taxes from entering and leaving the kingdom, along with some other things which Prince Julius is sorting, so I can avoid someone messing with the economy while I'm absent. I'm surprised how you can just think on those things so easily. Well I did live for quite a long time and learned with a lot of mistakes and people always trying to steal the things I acquired, and since I can't just kill traitors neither opportunists, I'll have to do my best to not be stabbed in the back while I'm in the front lines. The main reason I put the one who has the most to lose handling the capital and domestic affairs, the prince himself. I suppose he won't bother you while you command the army that way as well. Exactly. This world will soon become filled with chaos once I get enough pieces to toy with. Truly like a pandemonium, Aurora makes a cold smile upon my words. A certain being's perspective. Oh, all hail it, the evil god of demons. I almighty lord Harthus, he who has sent us an ordeal. The supremest of beings in the demon kingdom kneels toward the statue of his god and a voice behind him spoke to live to this day after centuries to see the demon king Mrith kneel before something. I truly have lived long, the female demon Lord Mazdara started tearing up as she knelt behind him. In their eyes, a bloody scroll appeared on top of the statue feet shining with a crimson aura which the demon king grabbed and slowly opened while bowing and then he reads it out loud to the many beings behind him. The ordeal of Harthus bring death to the human called Iris who's a servant of the goddess area of the Lumen kingdom to the south the one who kills her shall be rewarded with a godly skill, capable of becoming the king of the different demon kingdoms, the many demon lords gulped practically at the same time due to the reward not as much for the mission, and then the king spoke in a surprised tone once more. Just what in the world did a puny human do to enrage our god to this extent? How are we supposed to cross the Red Dragon territory? We would need to go around conquering everything to the east, then to the south and attempt to cross the mountains to do so. Such ordeal will be very difficult to achieve, it'll have to be delayed as we're amidst a crisis against the near monster nests who keep stalling us. 
Perhaps it is time to expand to the west instead we'd have better chances conquering that side and slowly but surely become stronger as well as possibly convincing the west demon kingdoms to join forces with us and become one, perhaps they too received this message and will be willing to work with us, despite our differences, demon lord Nyo. I believe not a single of the demon lords and kings would dare oppose the god Harthus ordeal. So we should strike our enemies to the west and start making alliances with the rest of the demon kingdoms. In preference conquer them and having more strong types of demons serving me, that would be the most idealistic. We'll do our best to bring that wish into realization, demon king Mrath. To think the demon kingdoms who are in a deadlock till now would start moving due to a single human girl. Demon Lord Oza thought while smiling excitedly as they've been increasing their forces carefully for the past centuries, slowly expanding to the sides. Iris's perspective back to the present. It's time Lady Aurora for the next fight the round 7 which will be the quarterfinals for the tournament the opponent will be the daughter of the head of the Pink Rose family a direct descendant of a famous old ninja hero from the tales of Artana. A direct descendant? I ask curiously as I remember the tale where a man was able to kill a few demon lords and beast lords eventually succumbing to one of them after a failed assassination. To my question, the man nods. It is in your best interest to surrender the next fight as your services are needed as a general more than they are as a soldier. She's that strong. My left hand starts to tremble with excitement so I grab one of the ray swords sheath that he lent me. Tightly, despite the man's advice, my body moves as if I'm being pulled by the magnet of a stronger opponent which he bows out of respect in my direction going unnoticed by me. Ladies and gentlemen we'll open today's seventh round with our amazing general who no one expected to have come this far versus a true descendant of one of the most prestigious bloodlines of the entire Lumen Kingdom a direct heir of the old hero Fafna the ninja. I present to you Moonflower the one known by her meticulous assassinations towards the enemies of our past King Francis, rewarded by him with the title of the Quiet Flower as her fighting style is as silent as one could expect. The crowd went euphoric with the introduction as Isabella daughter is simply that famous and a winner of past tournaments. We stare at each other on the black ring and then Moonflower says, your hand, so you're the one who my mother chose, I make a surprised expression which she ignores and says, I understand don't worry, however, I'm sorry but you'll lose, but don't feel bad I carry the blood of the past hero and also his blessings and I've trained with my mother the best assassin in the world. As a noble I'm simply above. Without saying anything I unsheathe one of my swords and hold it with my left hand preparing to attack as soon as the judge says the word. You may begin. I spined. The moment I speak she cuts the ice surging from the floor while jumping backward, and then she vanishes. Stealth. I extend my mana through the entire field and am unable to find her and then out of nowhere I feel a heavy blow on my stomach making me cough and then I see her in front of me. Notice, 130 health and 70 mana have been deducted. Even though she looks unprotected my fist didn't sink as deep as I thought. I wanted to make her go unconscious, seems like she's pretty tough strangely for such a young girl. She looked at Aris from top to bottom looking for answers. Good thing I had my mana shield activated otherwise that could have been pretty bad it almost made me lose my senses from the pain alone while I can see her now I'll have to attack. I grit my teeth and slash at her horizontally which she ducks and kicks my feet making me fall. As I'm falling I see her taking a dagger from the back of her waist, icicle, ice wall. An ice wall quickly splits the two of us leaving one on each side while icicles appear above her stretching towards her which she backflips a few times dodging them and then disappears once again. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted, damn I lost her. How am I supposed to find her if my mana isn't detecting her? Does she have a skill that makes her undetectable perhaps? I guess this was how she beat her earlier opponents, in that case. There's only one thing I can think about to attempt to count to her. I take a deep breath and get up and then summon icicles through the whole floor and use ice expansion creating ice vines all around me hoping one of them will hit her. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. As I keep a defensive stance, I notice a drop of blood that is not mine, falling in front of me, 
and as I'm about to react I feel a knee hitting on my stomach and then a punch on my face throwing me forcefully to the floor. Notice, 360 health and 140 mana have been deducted. Mana coated physical attacks sure pack quite the punch yet this girl is hella tough. What's up with her body? Past opponents that were older than her were already on the floor crying and surrendering yet this kid is looking with those green resilient eyes trying to figure out how my unique true stealth skill works. But sadly for her, there are not many direct countermeasures, even if she was able to scratch me with that ridiculous ice spell. Now, icicles. I surround her whole body with magic circles and icicles start pouring out stretching at her from all the blind spots she has to which she responds by disappearing and dodging with her speed and reflexes. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted, I wonder what Tichre would do in this situation. I close my eyes and start imagining her moving, I take a deep breath and relax my body. I'm glad that I came to fight. I smile. Why is this girl smiling and looking so relaxed? I could have killed her a few times now if I used my weapon instead of my body. With her pride hurt, she strikes her dagger at Iris's neck, and as she does her sword parries the invisible attack surprising Moonflower. What? How? She asks confused at what just happened. The crowd goes crazy about the development and then I use a different skill as I can now see her, before you vanish again, I raise my hand at her. Destiny cards system, the skill could not be used the requirement to activate it requires the awakening of the class. Ah, I didn't know that in that case, I'll put everything on this last attack, ice coat, decay, vanishing step. The sword started shining light blue, and then a deathly aura aggregated around it merging with the coldness scaring moonflower for a moment, and then suddenly iris speed raises so much making her approach the neck of the assassin girl with her sword. Notice, 1100 mana has been deducted. That aura looks extremely unpleasant just what skill is that? I guess I can't play around any more with her, smoke bomb, substitution skill true stealth. I hit her neck with my sword which starts decaying her body while slowing her down, as a purple cloud appears below me quickly blinding me, and then I sense the earlier killing intent on my flank, I don't know how she did this but it appears that the one I attacked isn't the real body. I slash where I feel her and then I hear her words, switch skill, and I feel a cold dagger pierce my hip from the right side where I had struck the body earlier on. Notice, 300 health and 100 mana have been deducted, the smoke bomb eventually fades and I realize what happened, it seems like you switched places with whatever this is you made, I lose the grip of the sword and let it fall, falling on my knees feeling my body getting numb, and then I completely fall on the floor. The match is over judge, I hit her with paralysis she won't move for quite a while. I don't want to die again. Especially after discovering the sense Ray was trying to teach me. I was just about to take the next step into the training. Notice. The skill paralyze resistance has been acquired. Not. Yet. I. Refuse. To. Lose. As tears fall from my eyes I do my best with all my leftover strength while losing blood to get up. As I force my body to slightly raise, it's over Iris you did well, come back when you're stronger. I feel a hit on the back of my neck and I faint, take her and make sure she's healed properly. She was a worthy opponent. Moonflower walks back while bleeding from a few places, as many icicles grazed her a couple of times making her smile. I can't wait for you to grow up my little knight. You'll surely become even stronger. Moonflower looks at the audience where her mother Isabella is and despite being far she realizes she's smiling happily. Guess you weren't wrong about her after all. If it wasn't for my stealth being unique it would have been a lot harder, even though I'm the ninja descendant who was born in a place called Japan, and not to forget that the night is still my realm where I'm ten times stronger than this, as she passed through the tunnel she laughed softly. The winner is Moonflower. We'll be starting the next combat very soon. Feel free to go get some more food or have a bathroom break. Goblin King a bit less than a year ago. Deep in the woods where the nest of the goblins resides a very big goblin remains seated planning on the future that is to come. It seems the humans are gathering numbers in the south, 
compared to us goblins they're still far below us, so there's nothing to be afraid of, last time it took 500,000 humans and that very strong hero which I managed to murder to push us back, and thanks to killing a hero I was able to get a very special ability to name powerful goblins allowing them to become even stronger, he smiled as he thought about it. The problem is that our mother the goddess Luna statues bled and as such it feels ominous to start a war now. I initially thought on invading in three or so years, but now I don't know if it's wise. The day I killed the hero the goddess Luna the mother of all goblins whispered in my ear to retreat and build a very numerous kingdom. Yes, that voice which is impossible to forget once heard. A delicate tone that makes the ears happy just to be able to hear it. Yet someone or something made our godly mother angry enough to make her statues bleed. But I do not know the meaning, the old goblin shaman is waiting for one of his visions so that we're sure the invasion this time will work out. I have mimicked the humans from the last war and learned their tactics. This time around we'll emerge victoriously, but I suppose I can delay it a bit more and gather stronger goblins by naming them whenever it's not on cooldown if I die those who received my blessing will lose their powers, so I won't be joining the front line this time around, as such, I'll need strong leaders and smart leaders, even though most goblins are stupid little cunts who can only understand fear. Goblin King I request an audience please, a big goblin with a big axe kneels before the chair where he's sitting, hopefully not another dumb goblin requesting for power just to end up dead or permission to use one of our sex slaves, the goblin king sighs and then says, raise your head and speak goblin, I am grateful goblin king, I have been mourning for the death of my son who was killed by a blonde female human, our mother the almighty goddess Luna whispered me, and she said the human is the reason why the statues started bleeding. A powerful seed capable of changing the world if left alive, and she granted me a special class called Buzika to stop her. Upon hearing these words of the goblin underling the smile and happy mood the king had vanished and he made a creepy expression filled with wrinkles. That human a blonde one did our mother Luna whispered to you her name? No king. But I know she's blonde and uses ice. My sworn enemy and the human I'll kill once I master this new power our mother blessed me with, with your permission of course O oh Goblin King, we'll go to war soon, however, I'll be spreading my own blessing towards strong goblins so that we're sure to win what's to come as such, you shall receive a name and grow even stronger, the Goblin King raises his hand pointing towards the Bezaka and says, unique skill kin awakening, now show me how strong you'll become, an aura from the Goblin King spreads to the Berserker engulfing him and then he starts changing. His body starts becoming bigger, more muscled and uglier small white horns appear all around his beard almost like teeth, and then when the aura dissipates the Goblin King receives a message from the system. System, congratulations your underling has successfully become a Goblin of the Lord type the strongest grade right after a King one. This is the first time my power produced such a strong type of Goblin. It seems that it may have been due to the special class he has, including the blessing of our godly mother. The Goblin King raises from his chair making the many Goblins around a look at him and then says, my children I have a new order for all of you instead of fighting each other reducing our numbers. From this day onwards you all shall go out and find your own strengths you have to fight strong opponents and experience the world and then return to me once you have acquired a good class, so that you may become the next goblin lord like this fellow here today who shall be named as Zrix. The goblins started spreading the word while making noise with their feet while screaming in honor of the new named one. Now raise Rix and become stronger so that you can exact not only your revenge but also the mission our mother choose you to take, you may command as many goblins and train them as you see fit, Eyes Rix the goblin lord will do my best for you my king, and destroy those filthy humans once I master this new power, he gets up while grabbing the axe tight and then does a vertical cut after stretching his arm in the air noticing that his strength and agility increased considerably making him laugh crazily. He grabbed the axe so tight that he started feeling something peculiar, he and the Goblin King started noticing his mana aura coating the axe and so the Zrix started focusing on that failing miserably many times but getting to shape the axe with a thin layer of it as he lacked mana control severely, 
Nonetheless, he smashed the ground with the axe making a deep cut, one deeper than the length of the axe itself thus he and the king realized a new skill had been born for them in that right moment. This consumes a lot of mana and needs an incredible amount of control but if we are to teach them to every single goblin, we'll definitely become even stronger like those few humans who have shining weapons. I always thought the humans had found a way to make special weapons but for it to be the use of mana. As soon as he finished those words the king started laughing and then he spoke, with this discovery, we're surely to make a change but for that, we'll need more goblins with a lot of mana, most of us don't have much of it, the system titles, some of them must give mana, how else would humans have so much, unless they spend their points solely on wisdom while most of us spend them on strength, perhaps we have been relying too much on strength as ricks, it's time to explore new ways before the war that is to come, go find goblins with a lot of mana and train them while you learn yourself, so we have at least an elite force of shining weapon goblins, as you command O great king, Zrix left heading towards the goblins, I'm level 114, but I received a lot of curses from the last time I fought those disgusting humans, especially that hero if it wasn't for that I would destroy them on my own, no matter what I'll enslave every single one of them and eventually become the king of this world. At the entrance of the Colosseum, two hours later a very old man walked towards the receptionist. Greetings sir, how may I help you? The man asked awkwardly as the old man in front of him smelled badly alongside the scent of alcohol. I've come to pick my student she's the one who ended up in fourth place the short-haired blondie. This old man is the teacher of the noble Lady Aurora? He started laughing and then he said with a mocking tone, Do you have any way to prove what you're saying, old man? A voice coming from a couple that was passing at the side along with their child and a butler who carried her was heard, to think I'd meet you here for a noble ray. The receptionist looks at the source of the voice and notices the head of the White Rose family Lord Alfred. Upon hearing such words Ray turned round and starts laughing upon noticing who they are. To think I'd meet the two of you here, so this is the weakling you married Sylvia. Ray started laughing some more. Upon hearing his master being mocked Robert placed Alicia on the floor as she stood on her own who was on a piggyback ride till now. Once Robert starts unsheathing his sword to teach a lesson for the humiliation the old man is making a different voice is heard, Teacher A. I've brought you the swords and as promised didn't break them at all. As soon as I look around I notice Alicia family and say, why is? Oh. My, I go silent as Robert has his sword unsheathed and is walking with an angry expression towards Ray. Seems like a light warm up before we resume your training student Iris he said politely making it look like I stand above Alfred whom he just mocked. Once Ray takes one of the swords from me I walk away knowing that it won't end up good seeing the glitter of seriousness on the teacher's eyes. You should run Robert. This is my teacher the strongest sword master in Lumen Kingdom. I warn him as I appreciate him for always taking care of my friend Alicia. So this is the person Iris decided to follow instead of picking my further offer. I can feel the pressure of his skills, as Alicia is about to warn Robert to step back, Sylvia says, it's been a while teacher eh, you sound as rude as ever and peerless with the sword too, I thought I had been the last student before you retired, but it seems you picked someone rather interesting, Ray started laughing and then voice his opinion, interesting to say the least this little girl will with time become a monster with the sword that will surpass even me, after her training. I'll definitely retire, he smiled excitedly while showing his yellow, black, and missing teeth. Once Robert reaches the range of Ray he says with an angry tone, I hope you have prepared yourself, bring it on puppy. The swords touch, as soon as the swords touch each other the duel begins, both elemental coat their swords and Robert takes the initiative by doing a flurry of windy thrusts, a rapier style that's very gentlemanlike. Ray smiles, and then weirdly enough his sword looked like it bent and bounced the rapier away making Robert's eyes open wider in surprise confused at what happened, taking a step back. Was that it? That was worse than a light warm-up, 
Once again Ray starts laughing while everyone is focused on his sword including the people that ended up passing by watching a dispute between the White Rose family known for peerless swordsmanship and an unknown old man who kept on mocking them with words while waving a sword. Ray starts walking outside as this place is becoming too crowded, noticing this. I follow through leaving the nobles behind after lightly waving at Alicia whose eyes were fascinated at the old man's skill. That old man is quite dangerous, it seems like it wasn't all talk, I don't know what he did but it looked like his sword bent and then bounced mine off. Never seen something like that, that was the old man showing off one of the skills I didn't learn due to marrying Alfred, but I know the theory, the sword didn't bend neither bounced that was mana with a soul layer which makes it look like it can stretch or enlarge by taking the same appearance as the weapon itself. We humans have a low lifespan so our soul is usually small but that old man has lived for quite a while and has done quite the killing and title farming, and on top of that he has learned how to do things with his soul. In fact, during one of the matches Iris Mana started doing cuts on the floor, that was a different use which I disregarded initially, however. Now that I know she's her student it's no wonder that happened once she ages a lot more she'll be able to take the next step of swordsmanship. Mana coating, elemental coating, and soul coating, Alicia says while smiling excitedly to learn new things. I do understand that. However, the old man looks truly ancient so it makes sense. But how come Iris was able to do it? Robert questions making Sylvia also confused. I suppose Iris must have a considerable big soul already perhaps since she has a twin, maybe they're connected in a mysterious way. Perhaps since Aurora can't use an element she becomes a sort of reserve power to Iris. That does sound like a plausible theory my lady, but I don't know anything that could measure a soul size, I've seen the adventurer's stone book and inside the pages, something like a soul wasn't mentioned. I do know the royal family and the church have a unique book of the sort. I've also heard rumors about a red book used by the dark priests that criminal cult. Alfred said confidently as he remembered them. In other words, from all of them the one who could possibly measure souls would be the church one since they serve the goddess Aria who makes humans reborn through the reincarnation portal, it wouldn't be weird if their book had something like that in it. Are monsters, beasts, and demons able to possess such things? Since in the end, they should be able to learn mana, elemental, soul coating, and all sorts of skills and classes that we have, since the system is the same right? Alicia sneaked to bomb into the conversation as she knew through the hero memories that such things were indeed real and in the past had been quite the threat to the human race. Go on ahead I'll go back and talk to Julius right away as what you said makes complete sense and we didn't even think about something so simple like that. Monsters might be stupid but what if one of them actually learned the very few weapons that have kept us humans survive till now, including our war tactics and everything else, in fact, Alicia, you have the memories of the hero so be honest with me, was it on purpose? Upon being questioned Alicia smiles and then says, I did say I acquired important information and tactics from long ago to deal with the enemies of humanity. Not to forget the hero summoning isn't restricted only to the goddess Aria though compared to other gods she's a cut above in that ability. Upon hearing her words Alfred ran towards one of the Colosseum rooms to meet the crown prince Julius and Aurora who he assumed would be together. Iris and Ray left for the Tun village while Sylvia and Robert took Alicia who's still recovering to the wagon while they waited for Alfred. Meanwhile, Alfred found two royal guards protecting one of the rooms which he passed through without asking them for permission due to his own status. The doors opened with some strength surprising Aurora and the crown prince Julius who were discussing domestic affairs before Aurora returns to the front lines and a maid who was on standby waiting for orders. Julius, we need to talk. As soon as Aurora heard that she was about to get up out of respect for their relationship with one another. And then Alfred said, this matter includes the general too. Aurora stared at him as it felt strange from the few times she's been with the White Rose family to head the girl had never seen him this flustered. What's wrong Alfred, come sit with us. Do bring the Lord a cup of tea, the maid who was on duty during their discussion leaves the room and then he starts talking while approaching them without sitting. 
so basically. How should I say this? You might not believe me but my daughter Alicia has gotten the memories of the first hero the peasant one, and she said that the system works equally for every race, in other words, he unsheathed his sword and mana coats it and says, this is one of the things we humans learnt and used to fight our enemies, but Alicia said that there have been monsters and beasts capable of using this skill too, which would include elemental coating as everyone is generally born with an element as well as soul coating that is very exceptional. More like the only person I know that can use it is the old teacher of my wife, the sword master known as the fallen noble Ray. He took a deep breath and then continued talking. The skills, classes that we humans have, in other words, it wouldn't be weird for the goblins to have them, be fey more disgraced type ones. Their king should also have learned to use the tactics that he encountered through the last war waged against us as well as having subordinates equally or even stronger than us, could even appear a special type of goblin summoned by their goddess Luna, the more and more Alfred talked the more startled the crown prince Julius became, as for Aurora she remained quietly listening to every single word unfazed as they were pieces of information that had been assumptions, while she learned more of this world and that she knew the short straw had been taken by her, as Iris race had been the weakest of them all and ever since reading about the system being fair, it would certainly mean that every god had close to the same set of skills, that's indeed pretty dangerous and could without a doubt make it harder for us especially since their number will be a lot more than what we have currently. What do you think general? Julius asked while sweating nervously from the room temperature and the news, as long as my conditions become true before the war begins, I cannot possibly imagine us losing to goblins, of course that for our victory to happen the army needs to keep training and improving the way I envision them to, while we get the number of soldiers I need, we're currently way too few and if I were to guess they should attack us with their whole force, be it composed of goblin children, females, men, or even elderly, from the information I've received from the Pope and the Saintess 100 years ago, they used half of what they had a force of 400,000 goblins, after studying and learning more about goblins they should be around three times more so and million and two hundred as long as they're not fighting other fronts, in reality they are one million goblins due to the ceremony they do with the children from time to time, due to it the number ended up reducing by one hundred thousand and the rest murdered by other races around their kingdom, as well as internal strife and the law of the strongest, that's an insane amount. Alfred said and then both of them frowned as Aurora had kept this information to herself to not demoralize anyone. She then spoke, and yet we live in Lumen Kingdom despite everything we have around 9 to 10 million humans, just not many into the army, in other words, due to the summoning of the heroes and the visions of the same test the humans got used to living in comfort and peace, forgetting that they live in a world that they can die at any given time. They have turned into slothful beings, Aurora said coldly making both of them silent. Get me at least 500,000 soldiers and I promise I'll wipe the goblin race out of this world in less. Of course there are other goblin kingdoms around the world seeing as we barely had any information about what's around us, the reason why I've formed some scout parties when I joined the army and have been acquiring information from all the fronts that include the sea in the west and beyond the mountains in the east where it is recorded for an ogre kingdom to exist, but basically I'm drawing a map of the world, certainly we won't be able to reach to the deepest parts, and possibly not even to the edges of the world due to every freaking enemy we have to face because we don't have a single allied kingdom of any type, aside of perhaps the Gillums on top of the mountains to the east who are just peacefully living there. If it wasn't for that I'm sure we would have been invaded by that position as well. Even though she's saying everything bluntly and in an angry tone she doesn't look mad at all. She's truly different than her twin sister Iris who is fairly easy to read. What are ogres even? Alfred thought while paying attention to this little girl closely. The most interesting point would be her confidence that seems to have no end almost like a bottomless well, but from everything she has done the numbers don't lie. In a very short amount of time she's cleaned the entire central southern section of the forest and even cut the trees as she progressed shortening the territory of the goblins by force, 
picking small to big groups of enemies defeating them mercilessly without going beyond heavy injuries, there hasn't been a single death for now at least, if she were to fight an army of 1.2 million with what she has currently, everyone would simply die, even if Aurora has the skills but does not have the numbers, she's bound to fall. Currently the defenses of the kingdom consist of mostly the guards, as the military left Isabella to command and will join us in the south through the support of the Pope, seeing as it was the choice of the people it simply can't be helped. Furthermore peasants who hear your tales from the Pope, your speech and also from the tournament, they will for sure be encouraged to join our army Aurora, I believe it's truly just a matter of time. I agree with Julius it'll be even easier now that it's flowering season named after the goddess area. The weather will be perfect for people to be convinced as well as I'm sure people are hearing all the changes and laws you and Julius been preparing, especially the one that protects those who end up with a disgraceful class, and that criminals will be solely those who harm others in some way, everything is changing. In fact, your brain is truly special, I'll let you meet my daughter once she's finished her training. There are some memories that Alicia wishes to share with you to help you beat our enemies. To that Aurora replies, I'm thankful as every help is necessary especially information, the more I have the less to humans will die on the battlefield. Oops, the word toys almost escaped my mouth, she let out a smile. I'll be going now your highness. General if either of you needs anything just write me. I'll be contacting the noble houses that are connected to me. So the army side expands, once I have a decent number of troops I'll be going south to give you two a hand, and hone my skills too. Can't allow that freaking old man to mock me like that and get away easily next time I meet him. Seems like Aris did find a great teacher how amusing. Aurora smiles lightly, making it look like an innocent expression to not disrespect Alfred. I'm thinking in making word be spread for peasants who don't have a job to become guards increasing the law and enforcement of justice in the capital, and with an even better payment to become soldiers of our army, as well as doing a deal with the other prince and princess, so that they too get a share of men as the scale of war, we'll need all fronts to survive since we don't know if it's only the goblins we'll be facing or not, and we may even end up fighting one of the other two successes if they don't achieve enough. It's also an option that could lead to a usurpation of the throne once we win. You're truly a confident child Aurora, to think you're only nine years old and go to that extent even if I don't spend much time with you. I can tell that you're truly something else. I've met kids your age my daughter and your sister included and they're a lot more childish. The only child aspect of you is your body. For that mind of yours it's like it has lived for a very long time, Alfred says and then turns around leaving. See you later Alfred, Julius says as he stares at him leaving, and then the maid arrived with some tea and cake, seems like our break from work has arrived, Julius says happily as Aurora smiles at something since she's not looking at anything in particular. This world is starting to get fun with the number of pieces I can play with, Aurora thought to herself filled with amusement. I can't wait to destroy millions of beings with you again Aurora, it'll truly be a vicious and delightful meal. Speaking of which, you didn't tell Iris that you two received two skills from the Saintess and the Goddess Blessing via Soulbound. It is fine, one of them is the Endless Cap which will allow my pandemonium skills to be better used, but she needs to awaken before we reach that stage, and the other blessing skill is Endless Awakening which will be interesting to use once I'm alone, even though as a weapon I probably have a limited growth rate, but it should at least help me get to it faster. That way you'll become even more useful to our master as well as strong enough to protect us. Indeed, this world will be turned upside down soon enough Aurora. The voice started laughing madly in her head and then it started talking through her mind again. Will you ever tell her about our past? After all, we did. As the voice was about to say something Aurora's head started hurting making the voice disappear. She places her hand in the spot where it's painful. Are you okay Aurora? Does your head hurt? Don't worry Prince Julius everything's fine. All right here. Have some tea. It'll help. Thank you. She takes a light sip noticing it's pretty hot. Even if I wanted to tell Iris anything about my past life I don't remember it. I was something different in a world of humans I was a different being. Something else entirely. But I don't remember what. 
In a way, I hoped the Red Book held the answers to my problems but the information was classified sadly. And even then my memories are all messed, cursed, sealed. I don't know who I am anymore. All I know is that I'm Aurora, and even that name feels rather wrong for me. Year 5009 After the system day 5 of the flowering season at the capital South Gate, they say destruction only comes at the hand of the powerful. Thus the strong can't help but extend their arms and break those around themselves. Do not forget that through the entire story of this world, it is mentioned that the weakest can't help but cower in fear, for when those who are born superior decide to tear us apart, and steal from us everything we have, we end up with nothing but the darkness of death and the poverty of our souls. We've faced every possible defeat before the system was implemented, as the different races were born unequally, but even then ours was since birth inadequate and utterly weaker compared to those around us, the humans in front of Aurora who's making a speech, lower their faces knowing how powerless each and every single one of them is, yet upon the records of the church we're currently at the year 5009 after the system, and I ask you all, why is it that we're still alive as the inferior, is it because of the goddess who conveyed us with her messages through this person next to me the saintess, to warn us of the dangers, no, she shouts angrily with all her strength, is it because the goddess decided to summons heroes from different worlds to aid us, no, that's not it either, she shouts while raising her hands in the air at shoulder height clenching them into fists, I ask you all, why is it that we as the human race are still standing, and have a decent peaceful kingdom of 10 million humans as the weakest race. Aurora observes as people whisper among each other for an answer while different peasants and nobles trade confused looks with one another. The answer is simple. It is because we're nothing more nothing less than cowards, who know when to run when things get dangerous. We grasp our survival as the most important factor because we fear the strong. We fear death and utilize our brains and wits to its fullest to come up with tactics and even dirty tricks. All of this to defeat our opponents who are fiercer and wilder than us when we are feeling threatened. But all of you who got used to these peaceful times, forgot that the monsters are still waiting for a chance to gnaw and devour those around you, to break, torment, torture, and even make some of you as their breeding materials an enslavement. The citizens' heads gradually started to rise once more in silence while they felt nervous towards Aurora, all of them being entranced in her words. We are weaker than goblins in what comes to the strength attribute, that is true. Not to forget they also have more stamina than us making them tougher and resilient to kill. We're also incapable of using magic as adequately as monsters do, and they even have opposite and multiple elements the way they are while we're stuck to the minimum of one. Not to forget, that we're nowhere close to having as much mana and magic power as demons have, as well as the big lifespan that allows them to reach higher heights than us. But I mean, that goes for every race except ours. And yet we are freaking alive as the utterly worms that we are. She extends her hands towards them opening her palms facing them towards the sky. Did you all truly think that we're alive thanks to the goddess Aria? It is true she's been a good supporter of our race and has helped a lot, however, what have you guys done except being lazy and scratching your asses with such assistance? How is it possible that out of 10 million humans, the three human armies barely reached 200,000 men together? The reason is quite simple dear citizens, you're all not only cowards who are waiting to be slain by your enemies, but are also too lazy to do anything about I. If you won't change. You'll all die, your mothers, wives, and daughters will be raped by those green monsters. Your sons, husbands, and fathers will meet their deaths or worse, and yet, all you'll do is experience such fate while complaining that it was inevitable, and that you were born weak. The destiny you were all too lazy to change. I will march today towards the south, and heed my words with your utmost attention. I will expand the human territory to the infinite so that this world can be truly peaceful, and it shall be used by all the humans who support me like the goddess Arya assisted all of you. Alongside the 40,000 men the church kindly lent to our cause, including this almighty beautiful woman Serenity, the saintess, who's a weak woman like the rest of you, yet she's willing to fight. And I a little child of nine years old that has become a general, 
a male born like most of you here today. She points randomly from one side to the other of the crowd passing her finger through millions. If I can do it, so can every single one of you peasants and nobles alike. Aurora then points towards the flag and says, I will cut fate and make a new one. I hereby declare it in the name of Prince Julius the oldest prince and next heir to the throne. A ruler who loves humans and seeks to amend the mistakes of the past, so that everyone has a fair chance, be them peasants or nobles, be them, owners of disgraceful or fame classes, every single one of you, if you so wish to have a job to become either a guard to protect the Lumen Kingdom, or a way better paid job as a soldier in our army where your achievements will allow you all to rank up higher, and earn more money and lands, the ones from the territory that you'll help capture alongside me. The citizens started echoing at the greed of promise money and lands, after feeling utterly bad inside from her words, letting it all out at once. I am Aurora, the general, and in my name, with the unique element bestowed by the goddess herself through the saintess blessing, she raises her right arm to the sky and a dark aura surrounds it creating a big enough dark ball for everyone to see, causing them to feel the pressure. She then shouted higher than ever before. I will destroy our fate as the weakest race, and obtain what we humans deserve, the world. The ball then flew towards the sky and exploded, hiding the sun above the capital south walls for a moment, turning the whole place completely dark on the ground into a large ominous shadow, where the peasants and nobles who were assisting her speech went in awe. This was quickly followed by a similar ball of light from the saintess, that irradiated them afterward, making it look like the brilliant hope the one that would bring a new future after the darkness destroyed its enemies forcing the crowd to go crazy in ecstatic screams, echoing through the entire south wall. The world awaits. It is begging for the blood of our enemies to be splattered, it reeks of the stench of the corpses that we'll pile up as we fight. But that is fine. That is welcome for the ones of us that die. They will become bridges for the rest of us that will walk over their dead bodies. At the end of our journey through this world my dear humans, will have completely dominated the world and offered our souls for our mother the goddess area to care of, the people shouted the superior being name extremely loud with all their hearts in unison. The three successors of the king will wait for all of you brave souls, who are tired of being weak, coward, and lazy, to come, walk, run, trip, rise, fight, survive, live, and ultimately become stronger with us. Aurora expands her dark element around her whole body making her look extremely eerie while the saintess next to her mimics her, making herself look entirely divine. And then, they extend their hands towards one another while holding them, and they start smiling showing that under the name of the goddess be they who they are, they have a place under the banner of the general Aurora. The close to six million people assisting this, started shouting the words General Aurora alternatively with the word saintess while clapping and stomping the ground euphorically shaking the area around. A new era begins today, Aurora raises her head and looks at the sky making the sunlight turn her blue eyes even clearer. It seems no matter where I go the darkness and the stench of blood will always follow me through. At least this time around I have someone worthwhile fighting for. All is in the name of our savior Iris. Aurora let us show the world the one they call Death Bringer. The Walking Calamity the white demon of the bloody plains, the one who murdered billions of beings. The extra voice laughed wickedly inside her mind. Even though that was my past self, in other words, the sleeping one, not the current me whose identity was born in the mirror world, it is not wise to release her unless truly necessary, it was already a miracle we were even able to stop her madness. The reason she didn't overthrow the gods didn't even dare to mention it. Keep an eye on her and shut up Grimoire. Year 5009 After the system day 30 of the flowering season at the southern outpost, General there's been the sight of a very strange group of black hooded figures, about 10,000 of them coming towards our gates. They have finally come, let them in, they are expected allies, and they too are part of the humanity, to place them on the opposite side of the church troops, to avoid confusion and internal struggles, yes ma'am. At once, are you really taking them into the army? Their group is mostly composed of dangerous criminals Aurora. That's fine Saintess, they will not dare to betray us after what they've witnessed. 
You mean the speech, it was something else, but that did help a lot too. The only two forces missing, for now, are the grey and white houses. Why would that wicked self be part of our army? Same reason as the dark hooded came here, speaking of which. Greetings General Aurora, and Saint S. I lead a Balthazar of the dark robes. Have brought the strongest of us except for Omar to support you on your conquest towards the prophecy. Upon hearing these words, the Saint S. remained silent and neutral for the time being out of respect for Aurora, while feeling confused at the word prophecy the man spoke before them happily. Don't tell me Omar the greatest assassin in the world, who rivals even Isabella the head of the Pink Rose family, was too scared to tag along. Balthazar started laughing and then said, Well I can't believe anyone wouldn't after what appeared on the Red Book of the Prophecy. I'm surprised you convinced the Pope and the Saintess to be here with us. He looks at her while speaking effortlessly. She was the one who actually chose me. Perhaps for my feats as the general of the army despite being born as a peasant. I only have gratitude towards her and the blessing she gifted me, so do treat the saintess well from here onwards Balthazar. This is truly unprecedented, to think you were chosen solely on your capabilities, he knelt towards Aurora out of pure respect, and then added, despite the past, we're willing to support those white robes under you serenity, as long as this lady goals, aren't betrayed by you at least. Humphrey, don't be a fool Balthazar. I can't even betray Aurora even if I wanted to. After all, I blessed her. One way or another I believe in this little girl. I prayed every day for someone to come to lead the humans to victory, and honestly this child has been doing quite a great job so far. She smiled confidently showing superiority over the black hooded man. With this, all conditions have been met as I currently have 609,000 soldiers under my command and most of them are training one another upon my teachings. I'll just need to rank up a couple more humans with good enough leadership, and then we'll start agitating the waters to drag the Goblin King out of his nest. Balthazar upon being accepted stood next to her in the opposite side of the Saintess, on top of the wall. There stood a blonde girl looking at the horizon where she'd eventually meet the Goblin King, at the right. A white hooded robe figure that looked like an angel with green long hair coming out of her hood, and on the other side a figure in a black hooded robe, whose silhouette was identical to a demon. The pieces have mostly gathered. It is time to play this war game and bring the first calamity to this world. Ah, I can't wait to consume the soul of the Goblin King. How delicious will it taste? Year 5009 after the system day 31 of the flowering season at the southern outpost. This group is the people that I chose to lead those around you. The ones whose leadership is highest. Heed my words gentlemen for you are the chosen to protect the lives of those under you. Yes, general. The men shouted proudly for being chosen. The men on a line behind you are the ones who you'll take lessons and learn from. Once they claim that you have learned what I taught them then you too will get a group of soldiers to cherish, to protect, and above all to lead as parts of your own body, you're the line of humanity that defends the kingdom if you fall your troops will reach disorder if any of you fail my orders, my strategies, they will end up all for naught, resulting in your own losses, so always follow your orders whatever they may be, however, don't be cowards. If the situation allows you to help on killing your enemies, and securing your allies, support those under you, the time for cowardice, fear and laziness has ended. Yes general, the new and those who will teach them shouted excited to be part of something bigger than what they've been so far, being able to teach others while redefining their own understandings of war. You're all dismissed. Once you train and have some doubts or confusion that you can't sort on your own, come talk with me. I'll be in my tent in the middle of the outpost as you know, and for those who don't, now you do. Aurora goes to the stairs out of the little wooden platform they made for her, where she usually makes speeches, eventually reaching the tent and as soon as she enters it. Welcome back Aurora, the sage Romeo and the hero Sophie tell her in unison to what she smiles and replies, thank you, how are the preparations? Everything's said general. We're also starting to become a force to reckon. Even though if it was the old world we'd be thousands of times stronger than here. We've participated in a lot of fights with the army but the experience we get for these lowly creatures hasn't been that much. But since you need us here, 
for you and of course the prince who assists us. We'll stay and keep doing what we can. In war, you'll be able to get a lot more experience, as at some point we'll start fighting the powerful ones that are hiding in the Goblin King camp. But hell even after this long I'm getting even at chess against the Prince Julius. But you're on a completely different level Aurora. For someone as young as you, you truly were blessed by the goddess and now even the saintess. I bet not even the past generation heroes were that lucky. They're bound to become super strong eventually. All the thirty summoned that the goddess Arya blessed us with, each will become a very strong individual capable of shifting the Lumen Kingdom. I just hope it'll be for the best, I really don't want to have to fight any of them. I'd be murdered easily after all, Aurora words gave them a sense of superiority but also a wish to cherish such a little girl in front of them. After this whole time they looked at her like their daughter, a genius one, but definitely one of their kin nonetheless. In case the worst comes to worst, we'll protect you so that we can clear the ordeal the goddess asked of us so that we can return to our old world. She promised we could have a second chance to enter it, the one from before the void, and for that to happen in our Tanoa world a lot more dangerous than the one we use to live. We'll have to count on our little general talent for war, which feels like it pairs the stories of the legendary god of war from our old life, Romeo said happily as he remembered himself of the many gods that are now gone and are completely different from the ones in this world. Exactly just like Romeo says, either hero will triumph over every other summoned and bring you any victory in all the battles we'll wage. All we ask in return is for the possibility of victory to exist in the battlefield you send us no matter which it is. Of course, I believe in both of you, and knowing how important the two of you are, I wouldn't send you to a dangerous position of the battlefield, unless there was an ambush or a lack of information like in a place where the eyesight is not favorable to us. For example, deep inside of the forest in front of us, Aurora points at the forest of the south that has been cut down almost every day forcing the monsters, beasts and even animals that live in there to hide further to the center of it. Sophie approaches and hugs Aurora lowering herself to her height while whispering to her ear. You haven't told us why are we cutting trees even after this long. When are you going to tell me your little secret my dear younger sister Aurora? She looks at the girl making a lustful stare trying to pry on her thoughts on a friendly way. To what she replies. I have three objectives towards the wood cutting, dare to guess? Aurora smirks bullying them with this little mental game of hers. Romeo taking on the challenge declares. The initial goal should be to use the wood to fortify and increase our defenses, as well as to extend the wood wall so that the beasts won't be able to surround us. Neither get past us harming the gigantic fields we have and our supplies which the two siblings have started to copy us in that sense. Of course, that they lack our numbers and also the initiative we took, not to forget. They don't know the reason of why are we doing all of this. Sophie does a whilst as a compliment from the great explanation he gave and then Aurora speaks. It's a good thing that you've been learning and observing. Not only our army but also theirs. It'll prove quite worthwhile in the long term. Do you happen to know the three objectives though? I expected that to be at least one of them. Romeo chuckles in disappointment but is used to this by now. Inside the tent Aurora places the chessboard on top of the table and starts positioning some pieces, and then she explains in a very calm tone, and as she's about to start Mark and Ryu who's taking a break from observing the troops return to the tent alongside the Saintess, Balthazar, Zylf, and Alfred. Welcome, Grey and White Rose family heads to the southern outpost. Aurora voices out so that Romeo and Sophia understand who the two new faces are, after noticing the rings in the white and red-haired man. I'm delighted in meeting you young general, I am Zylf and I've come to join the cause placing my share of men alongside Alfred's, to protect our supplely route just in case. Aurora looks at him with her typical cold gaze and thinks, quite the bold move allowing him to manage the supplies and doing as he pleases if that's what this man thinks will happen at least. I'm grateful but your men can join the front lines as the supplely lines are already protected by his highness, with a very cold tone putting him in the rightful place she adds, Prince Julius, 
Without showing any emotion he says, I understand general in that case allow this one troop to be part of the central section of the formation. That section is already completed. I'll let you choose between the left wing where I have your friend Balthazar troops or the right wing where Ryu army is. Knowing what this man is like I can't allow him to be in the center much less to be close to the Saintess, and neither nearby to the supplies, much less to be part of the reserve forces which I'll implement later so pushing him towards one of the wings will be one of the possible moves unless my force is of 20,000 are mostly composed of mercenaries we could say, and of course that includes horses, so they are a very peculiar force that might not fit into the wings of the army. He smiles coldly hiding his true nature. Horses. It seems I have underestimated you Lord Zyalf, to think you'd actually bring such an interesting force to my army, in that case. I'll place you on the right wing, and have you do hit and run along with flanking tactics to support Ryu engages, I assume you can do that much correct? This bitch who does Aurora think she is talking with, with everyone watching me. Can't be helped, I have at least made her acknowledged my war knowledge and innovation in the use of horses in from of them. This girl doesn't sound useless at all either, this could be rather interesting. I'll take the bite of the bone you're giving me for now young lady plus I get to play with Ryu, that's not too bad either, Zyalf then opens the mouth and voices coldly, that sounds fine for now. Very well, I'll appoint you as a special leader and the head of the cavalry, so that you can despite being on the right flank if necessary assist a different section of the war, which if you're talented enough, you'll be able to shine the most. Upon hearing those unexpected words Zylfs who didn't expect to be acknowledged to that extent smiled happily, which didn't contrast at all with the way he usually is. Only a psychopath to control another, Aurora thought while smiling at Zylf confidently of her new decision. With that taken care of, I've brought 20,000 heavy armored soldiers, reason why I took so long to arrive, that's pretty amazing Alfred, unexpected yet expected perhaps. I'll place your men in the middle of the center so that they form a line between the lightly armored soldiers and the archers, mages, and healers who will be behind the heavily armored troops as a last line of defense, in case some extremely powerful creature appears like the Goblin King himself. It is expected for him to be way above what any human has ever achieved in levels, I wouldn't be surprised if he was a level 100 or even 200 being and move another 20k from the central to the left wing so Balthazar gets two of Moraine. Everyone gulped except for the Saintess, Mark, and Ryu who knew about it for quite a while now, excluding Balthazar who simply bowed happily. Regarding your question earlier Sage Romeo, I have been cutting the forest from our front, so that our soldiers can notice nocturnal attacks from the watchtower or even the walls easier. Also so that the enemies have fewer places to hide and ultimately to force them to roam to the sides causing strife and harm to the neighbor beast kingdoms of the different species, like the kobolds and whatever else is hidden, which will passively trigger wars between them while we push and pressure the goblins more and more. An ominous aura surrounded Aurora making everyone respect and perceive how nasty the tactics employed by the general there currently below are. Zylf looks at Balthazar who notices him smiling happily, for him to be this delighted it must be her, the one they've been waiting for which is weird as the saintess doesn't seem to be bothered by Balthazar's presence and his men. Is this girl charismatic and resourceful enough to actually bring enemies together turning them into allies just like that? After such long strides no less, there was also the annual tournament where she reached fourth place with a rare ice element and then my spies told me she was blessed by the saintess and the goddess Aria, and now has the unique dark element as well. On top of that this young lady seems to know what she's doing towards the upcoming war, everyone here is of importance and they all seem to respect her highly even someone as annoying as Alfred, quite the unusual young girl indeed, kids at her age are usually farming the lands or learning etiquette if they're nobles not commanding armies. I can't help but respect her intellect as a very intellectual person myself. I could not find any flaws or weak points so far. There's not many like this chick. I'll have to get my hands on her, she'll surely be useful in the future. A wicked smile appears unnoticed on Zylf's face by those around but Aurora, who pays it no mind as she knows worse.
Would this army be able to defeat such a high-level monster? Romeo asks a little scared of the answer. The records say that even a level 1 can damage it as long as they hit him. It's not likely his immunity to physical or magical damage, if a level 100 at max spends every single point in stamina. He'd have a minimum of 5000 health, but that's only if he spent all his points on that. However, that's unlikely plus he should also have a bunch of stamina from his age. He must be quite old and the older we get the more status we receive, in humans case a single stamina per year, we can expect a bunch of extra on him, alongside the bonuses of all the titles, and a king type of evolved creature which means a lot of tricks, be they extra status bonuses or even skills from attaining such rank along with a little more than one million goblins. The more this girl explains how strong the Goblin King might be, the more I realize how interesting it'll be to take on such a monster, as the strongest sword master in the Lumen Kingdom I can't help but find it a worthy opponent, I bet if it was my wife teacher that old man, he'd be able to understand this feeling too, Alfred thought as his right hand grips the sword handle on the waist excited and nervous about the coming war. Can we even win this war? Zylfs asks as he now has a clearer perspective of the war that is to come and on his cautious and meticulous mindset the odds aren't that great. Of course, now that we have at least a number equal to half of the goblin army under my command it is a matter of time, but for now the soldiers and the leaders I appointed will have to take the training the first soldiers have done before and of course I'll be taking this deployment a few steps higher afterward, not to forget the motivated and egotistical soldiers on the other two armies due to my speech, which served to wake humanity up. Do as I say and the goddess area will shine victory upon us Zylf. This kid really doesn't lack confidence, one of my daughters in her place would be peeing of fear if they had to lead a thousand men and yet the prince who's supposed to handle the army that is past 600,000 is nowhere to be seen, normally I'd check her background to blackmail if necessary but I didn't see Omar yet, so he must be protecting her parents from the shadows. This will be complicated, but this lady will eventually lower the guard down, even if I must come and find the girl while she sleeps, what happens under the linens stays inside them after all. Year 5009 After the system day 35 of the flowering season at the mansion of the royal family, I'm truly surprised about everything that has been happening ever since the death of my further Ange, and the more I dig the more interesting I take the kingdom to be. It is almost as if I'm making one big puzzle and soon when I complete it, I'll be able to change the world or at least influence it in an interesting way. She's making that expression unbefitting of a princess again. A very sorrowful one. And who finishes taking a sip of the hot tea asks, I am very sorry princess I'm not following this new subject, would you be willing to clarify please? I have found a cute little doll who is very mysterious and intriguing to the point of having spent a good fortune on researching everything possible related to her but not only did I ended up spending money I also made some of those who I hired face death. I'm still confused princess. What doll? A cursed item perhaps? And looks confused making the princess chuckle. The blonde. Adorable. Young. And short doll called Aurora the general of my eldest brother Julius. Oh the one who ended up in fourth place at the annual tournament. People seem to be making quite the ruckus about her ever since the speech she made. In fact, the masses are only talking about her despite me and both my brothers existing a peasant of that who was made a noble by my brother Julius. From nothing to everything is it? How did she ascend to where she is now though? That was the exact question I had in mind, however, after all the effort I went through. There's some pieces that have yet to connect properly to one another. What could possibly be so hard about a little peasant girl who was born not that long ago, princess? What if I told you that both the doctor who helped giving birth to her says she was born without an element? and that this information was approved by not only Julius but also the Pope. Hum? Wasn't she the one with the rare ice element? I saw a few matches of her unless I'm confusing Aurora with someone else. Exactly, not only has a rare element but she also has blonde hair which is rare and blue eyes which neither of her parents has. Of course, that this could mean nothing but it is certainly interesting. Maybe her grandfather had blue eyes and only passed down on her now? No? Yes. 
A possibility but what's interesting is that she has an element yet the information I gathered said the opposite till recently or it means someone hid it from me, so things get better, there goes the princess again, that sorrowful stare into something I can't begin to comprehend almost as if she's looking into a completely different world whose gaze goes through me, princess, you were saying, seems like I was lost in thought again, even though I just had an interesting one, one from your cursed skill, Perhaps, even I don't know how to differentiate between them, since some are real and others aren't. A few belong to it and the rest don't. Anyway, what we know is that my brother is hiding something, possibly big related to the general of his, and you may not yet know but she was blessed by the saintess and the goddess Arya on the end of the first day of the tournament. Whoa, just how lucky is she? A peasant that has even earned the blessing that's... Wasn't it something that only heroes are able to get? The truth is that the saintess can choose whoever she wants once per life, however. This one in specific hadn't chosen anyone despite the many requests of the Pope. I believe it has something to do with her mother and last sister. And after making a surprised face asks, she has a sister? From the information I gathered let's just say that she does, and the Pope exiled her from our kingdom at the cost of a lot of lives. One of the darkest secrets of the church, don't tell anyone though you might die, as some of the men did. Ange makes a cold expression and says, I'd love to see what fool would dare to kill me, and meet my mother's wrath. My my, how scary, my little Ange should be cuter. As soon as she heard the princess's words she returned to normality smiling kindly and bowing lightly. I have received the information on what her blessing was, dare to guess? Isn't it a skill that the goddess uses, usually that's what it's supposed to give no? The princess smiles creepily and then whispers. She got the unique dark element which caused a ruckus in the church, as their doctrine is against the demons in the north, that appear from time to time who are brutally murdered every time. That pope is having a hard time? That's hilarious he's usually the one giving trouble to others thanks to all the fanatics, and their stupid ideologies. Well the most interesting part was that the Pope used his skill to examine Aurora's disgrace, and she was completely pure absolute zero, and now even got blessed by the saintess and the goddess probably due to that. Seems like this doll is having a fun time causing havoc wherever she goes. Yes, Aurora is having fun, I don't know what kind of person she is from the little time I've been with her but sounds mostly a troublesome puzzle piece that doesn't fit anywhere, I just can't seem to place her. That would be a first princess, but I'm sure it'll be a matter of time for you to be able to achieve its full progress. I wonder, it feels like I'm missing something important, especially since one of the spies I hired was murdered recently. Oh right princess, you did mention it caused you some losses what was that all about? Her army is composed by the white, blue houses who have an alliance to my brother Julius which is quite normal. However, she also received 40,000 men from the church that would also make sense since the church saintess by whatever reason blessed her, which includes the woman herself. Another reason the church is starting to crumble is the devotees are taking over her side, towards what they call a divine war in the name of the goddess Arya against the goblin king who is represented by the goddess of Order Luna. And bites a cookie breaking it in half making it fall inside the tea doing a gulp little sound and then princess Liliana continues talking. What I found unreasonable was the grey house and even the dark priests faction to also join her, who have been at war with the church, and yet they're actually in the same army. Isn't it unbelievable? What? Isn't that crazy bastard Zylf obsessed by the saintess? Why would Aurora allow someone dangerous like him at close to her? The dark robes too. They're criminals. He might have his issues. A lot of them to be fair, more than most men, but he does know how to wage war, and either we are like him or not, he's intellectually brilliant. I don't deny any talent that man might have, but he's not someone who is controlled by others princess. Don't shout dear. I know that myself. However, Aurora and the Saintess showed those around them that the unique dark and light elements were convergent, thus making it a symbol for opposite forces such as the priests of the Pope and the dark priests of a guy who I found absolutely no information except the name and title Master Balthazar who seems to be the leader of such force. That's insane. 
How did your brother even allow all that to happen? Apparently he barely leaves the capital doing the control of the supplies. Julius seems to firmly believe his war intellectual is not necessary as long as Aurora is handling things, and this piece of information I heard about him personally. Furthermore said there were many issues within the kingdom pointed out by his general that needs to be fixed before she can start expanding towards the south. I don't know what to say, princess. This all takes us back to who is Aurora? From the information I gathered, let's just say that she does not have a strong background like you or Alicia, and despite her further being a famous healer, he's not someone good enough to teach her the talent which was shown in the annual tournament from swordsmanship and magic to the recent achievements related to fighting against the goblin territory which they've been pushing the enemies back, not to forget the girl was born sickly and lived most of the life in such a state, and without an element, yet the talent with ice was honestly quite capable. I guess it could have been due to her sickness perhaps a cursed skill that she bested recently. Curse breaking is not something we mere humans can achieve otherwise I would have paid someone to clean mine, I do however think of another possibility though I could be wrong. Wondering what the princess sees when she gets like this, days becoming nights and nights becoming days, and yet getting stuck peerlessly ignoring everything and everyone around. Princess. R. Ah. Uh, oh right. As I was about to say one of the theories I found thanks to the help of the king advisors and the royal library that only the successors have access to. I found a book about summoned people, but princess, the thirty summoners came recently so that shouldn't be possible for her, especially since she was born here in Artana. Princess gets up and while pointing the index finger at her she shouts, you're absolutely correct, but summoning is not the only thing that can occur in this world. What do you mean by that? I'm talking about the reincarnation portal, but not the one where those that are not already alive in this world go through, I'm talking about the reincarnated ones from different worlds, whereas they receive two random skills from the goddess as payment for coming from far away, at least that's what was written in the book. In other words, she may have gotten two blessing skills one for swordsmanship talent and one for magic talent. What about her war skills? Possibly her memories from the past world. There's a chance even if small that the goddess Arya allowed her to keep them in exchange for helping the humans perhaps. Seeing as she's moving rivers and mountains that could certainly be true, but princess what about her twin sister Iris? Almost as if the whole puzzle broke down to the princess Liliana, as not a single one of her spies searched anything about the twin, since an unknown piece and was absent from her home training with Ray. Like a miracle making she shed tears in front of Anne who looked as confused as a young teen could possibly be, but who remained silent as the girl could tell that the princess had reached some sort of realization. Then as if matching with the thought of Anne turning out she was actually right about it, the princess sat expressionlessly staring blankly at something. Iris isn't Aurora, they're twins, each has an element, Iris the one with ice and Aurora got the darkness element from the blessing. But since she didn't have any element and they happened to be twins the crown prince Julius decided to hide this fact and conceal the details of everything, but, I'm lacking a piece how is either of those dolls connected to Balthazar? Why would he behave so nicely even with one of their greatest enemies in front of him? Unless they are allied not to the church but Aurora? In other words, was Balthazar expecting something? Maybe one of them? If their twins could both possibly be reincarnated? Since they're twins and one is extremely good with magic and swordsmanship, and the other has a good brain that might not be so, but the knowledge Aurora displayed to my brother to completely make him support her makes me instinctively force me to believe otherwise, it would make a lot more sense if those two weren't normal, after all, normal peasants couldn't possibly achieve that intellect and strength, that power, and authority that only nobles are supposed to own at such a young age if Iris received a skill for magical and another for sword prowess, while Aurora received one for her brain and the other for surviving the disease. You. The princess looks scary though what she does sounds pretty plausible, after all, even though I'm a little strong I did have a lot of help to get here. We can assume that both of them receive two blessings differently upon birth then. Can we not princess? Yes. That's correct. I don't know how my brother found these girls or if they found him through their father, but he truly has luck on his side, 
I must do whatever I can to at least have one of them under my care for the future to come. Should I give both the golden ring then? No one has beaten me yet so I still have the five rings to use, even though Alicia was the one who told me about Iris recently and she already has the white and pink rings. Aurora hasn't received one since she's the general of Prince Julius. I'll have to win this succession throne battle and prove to them that I'm the one worthy of them to help. As much as I love my siblings they'll have to step down on this one, by having the knowledge of the general I'm starting to believe we could conquer this world and for that to happen we need soldiers. The princess starts writing a long text which she then signs and gives to Ange to read and act. One of the reasons that I've found fault in our kingdom is the fact that only nobles receive education. I want to find more talents as my brother did, and for this to happen I'll open similar institutes to the magic institute but this one for both peasant and nobles alike who will be able to join. I'll also hire good teachers, and through the generations, those who know most will be able to inherit those teaching positions and be compensated on their knowledge of the world. What kind of institutes would that be? wouldn't it outshine the nobles making them lose their sense of superiority as only them were able to learn? Nobles alone can't compete with our enemies. We need everyone help, and nobility is a bloodline they will always be superior in what comes to money and lands. Knowledge may allow those from below to rise, but that. Yes that is necessary to create competition between the different social status. I will start spreading and building such plans through the kingdom but mainly in the capital while I still have the power and the funds from my parents to do so. My brother Julius is a humanist and I'm sure he'll accept such propositions, not like he can say no to his younger sister, especially after having refused me once towards the request to have his general for myself. She grins enthusiastically ready to create a significant change. How come you want to do this now? Doesn't this make you a humanist too? Aiming for equal rights and ceasing social classes strife to one another? My dear Ange, in this world, I seek the completion of my desire since my cursed skill is something that allows me to reach any path I so desire. In exchange, I just have to find out what the puzzle pieces I'm missing are to achieve certain things. Once I clear this specific puzzle, and also abandon the disgrace class's belief seeing as the church influence dropped in that regard, due to the most recent blessing of the unique dark element, and the union of the saintess with the general, I believe that now is the time to strike as the next queen of this kingdom and bring the peasants to my side through a different method than the one Aurora is using thus obtaining as many tools as I can. Such resolution. The Princess Liliana truly is fascinating. I'll do what I can to be of help, even though Aurora is starting to become quite the big obstacle for us, despite what the people think that she's being controlled by the Crown Prince Julius. It feels to me that the girl goes way beyond that. The Princess finishes writing and then gives the paper to her, once Ange is done reading what the Princess wrote. Her face becomes shocked and she shouts. Are you truly sure about this Princess Liliana? Of course, Ange, tell your mother she can announce it, that the soldier of my kingdom be it a man, woman, or any other, shall have me as their wife if they bring me the head of the Goblin King, ascending to royalty. This announcement will surely increase our army size as well which will make things easier for your mother who's in the front lines. I understand Princess. I'll pass the message right away both to my mother and the king advisors so it goes across the entire kingdom, as well as all the noble houses who we're allied with which should quickly spread quickly, especially among peasants. As Ange started leaving towards the door she turned back and questioned, in case a woman slays the goblin king would you be willing to marry her? She asks curiously. Why not? It's not like there's any prohibition of same gender marriage. In fact, there are some who marry those of the same gender, the church holds no prejudice about it either since the goddess isn't married to anyone, understood princess, I'll be back soon. Year 5009 after the system day 50 of the flowering season, with the passage of time, the second Prince Marty and Lady Angela the head of the Golden Rose family and general of the army of Princess Liliana adopted the suggestion sent by writing letters from Aurora from each creating an outpost with two to three watchtowers with an archer on top. Bells were created to echo through the watchtowers so the soldiers would have time to organize themselves or even defend themselves from possible nocturnal attacks. 
The wooden walls were reinforced by earth and nature mages making them a lot sturdier. Blacksmiths from the capital and merchants were able to prosper in such places, contributing to the strength of the different armies, as well as farmers who took over the fields once the soldiers finished their training. Of course, that with the increasing number of soldiers the fields did too. Do the Crown Prince Julius took the South lands to himself as an investment towards the expedition along with those living close by to the southern outpost of Aurora. Despite the hate, Prince Marty felt for the peasant, he followed every guideline she had sent him as it explained thoroughly how it would affect and the benefits of her ideas, even creating long and vast fields along with storages for the materials, and creating his own supply routes while creating a group to protect both. Simple formations were also handed to the second prince and Angela, where each was symbolized by the number of troops the army would be able to gather, meaning that some required one to two hundred while other more complex formations needed four hundred or above that number to be efficient. In such a matter, the second prince disregarded the formations completely as he and his advisors, the head of the Black and Red Rose families took over tactics while the Green One, stood on guard towards the supplely route, and domestic affairs through all the territories the different houses own. The Queen remained neutral staying with the head of the Pink Rose family, who together with her and others would keep the capital safe from harm, while her children would dispute the throne as her husband wished for that to happen on his death will, for the following two years, to be more precise. A year and a half left even though this period could be extended as long as the Queen desires, till she and her advisers who used to work for the King, arrives a decision related to the winner so that there may be a successor and a new ruler. With the information provided by the Saintess such a will has been formulated by the king, so that in case anything happened to him they would all follow out of greed the way to the throne. The path towards defending the Lumen Kingdom while expanding, as such he had considered that the one with the most merit would then be elected by its people, and even gain the respect of the soldiers. The soldiers who left the Pink Rose family ended up joining the Aurora army, but due to Aurora words. She had passively regained the numbers of Isabella, through what she nominated of the guard job so that she'd feel safe in the front lines, by leaving a good amount of soldiers patrolling, protecting, and controlling the many forces mingled in the kingdom. Due to this Isabella the head of the Rose family felt like she owed Aurora a favor, which she would pay it once her sister Iris would become the knight of her daughter. From 10,000 soldiers to 50,000 guards from Aurora speech alone. Iris was pretty amazing having grazed me during the tournament that much, but compared to Aurora's achievements, she still has a very long way to go. Upon hearing these words Isabella smiled lightly. Oh, by the way, mother why was my name announced this time around in the annual tournament? Wasn't it supposed to be kept a secret? We named you after our ancestor, the hero Fafna. There will he left us with to protect the king generations of the Lumen Kingdom, from assassins for five thousand years has ended with my generation, as such, you've received a name that resembles the freedom of such oath. Thus you may choose to keep serving the next ruler as I and those before me have, or find a different meaning to your life. I don't get it mother. What does the name Moonflower has to do with Fafna? Regarding the oath, I don't know about it. I've ever only thought about the training you made me do. So, Fafna was from this world he called Earth a very cold place at the north, and then one day he decided to go east, where he eventually met the woman who became his. Her name was Hellflower, both of them lived together for a while, and eventually she got pregnant, and then one day they were summoned, and blessed, however. There was a complication that the goddess at the time didn't realize, as the woman hadn't been pregnant for a long time yet. Did the baby die or something? Not at all. But it didn't grow up normally. In fact, I don't even know if growing up is the correct term for it. I only know that it grew, not sure to what since there are no records, and the hero Fafna became a legend for being one of the first heroes ever to slay those who call themselves lords from other races as they are extremely powerful. Even if he ultimately ended up dying to one of them since he was always fighting alone, I guess he was strong enough to do something like that, and perhaps those around would only become a hindrance to his assassinations. After all, if one of his companions would make a hint of noise, it could turn his surprise attack into a very bad scenario. Yes, 
that may be so, but with companions he would have a chance even if small to be rescued, having allies is a good thing, especially those who do everything they can to see you well. So what is it that you really want to say? Moonflower crosses her arms with a bored expression noticing that her mother isn't being her usual self. We're one of the very few families who hasn't failed a single generation, and we have an heirloom that the hero Fafna left behind in secret. It is something we have also been protecting all this time, and it will belong to you from here onwards. Eventually pass down towards your descendants. What? An item? A weapon? If it was from the hero Fafna then a dagger maybe? Come. The two of them go through the mansion towards the basement discreetly. Eventually going through a few hidden magic passages that were sealed by an item going further deep underground. Eventually reaching a small room with a lot of books, items, and weapons. What's all this? She asks curiously as she's looking everywhere. Isabella then walks some steps closer pushing slowly the things on top of a table and then she lifts a square part in the center of it, taking out a black box with golden strings coming out of tiny holes, giving it to her daughter. Once Moonflower receives it she says, what is this black cube or maybe a box? Mother, I don't know either, but with this, the oath with Fafna is now complete. From this day onwards that is yours, and yours alone including everything in this little room, from here on, you may try to find clues about it if you wish. Haven't you already researched through this room? I haven't. Since this place is only for you, she smiles kindly at her making her further confused. Why would I want any of this? She places the box on top of the table. I don't know myself Moonflower dear. It is a special inheritance, and it's been so long that it is impossible to understand the reasoning behind it, and there's a chance that the answer won't even be found amidst all these things. Moonflower sighs and picks the box again. I guess I'll hold onto it for now, at least till I find what out what's inside of it. Her mother smiles hiding her expression from her daughter while leaving this place they're currently in leaving her behind. Now you have something to kill your boredom, my little flower. The daughter sits on the table while looking at the box. She starts thinking as she tries things. So it's a black box with a few holes each where a golden string comes out of it. But they're the perfect size so I can't look inside of it. I also can't seem to open it. Should I try cut it with my dagger? I could end up ruining it. Not like I really care about it, she smiled and took out a dagger from her waist and struck the box failing as the material is too tough making it slip downwards, then she tries to cut one of the golden strings also failing as they too are very tough not even leaving a mark. I could always use my mana coating, and then slice it in half as I don't feel like reading all these things. She charges her dagger with a good enough amount of mana and attacks the box as soon as her mana hits the box it gets sucked by one of the strings, making the dagger once again hit the box and slip a little. Now that was weird. It seems like it is a defensive item capable of negating mana attacks, but what about elemental ones? She mana coats then transform it into her own element and repeats the attack also being absorbed this time by two different strings each absorbing a different type. My my. This is quite a cool defensive item. Let's see what other items the hero left behind in here for me to use. Year 5009 after the system day 60 to day 70 of the flowering season. Inside a tavern in one of the villages at the north. Have you heard of the newest rumor? A man who was eating and drinking to its full content asked excitedly. The one where Monica bought 20 new cows in one go? I'm still surprised how a peasant managed to get that much money. I wonder if some rich lad sponsored her since she's kind of hot you know? Maybe the person wants to have a go with her in exchange. Ah. Yeah, I guess. But no I meant the new rumor. The one about the nine-year-old peasant daughter of the famous Luke the healer has ascended to nobility and is currently leading an army as the general, and waging a war against the goblin king in the south. The man who heard the newest rumor started laughing and then he promptly replied, Nice joke man. Nice fucking joke. A woman who was eating alcoholic bread with wine shouted, Fool. It is no joke I was there in the capital when a little blonde girl made a speech for the masses. That girl had a very scary dark elemental aura, and it is said that she also owns the rare ice element, 
and received the unique duck one from the saintess and the goddess blessing, due to that the church is having very big issues, since their doctrine banished users of that element in the past, and dictated demons evil for using them which made them be murdered on sight for who knows how long. The man who was laughing gulped upon hearing such words, and then nervously asked, so you're saying she's leading the late king army of 100,000 soldiers? 100,000? You jest. Just on her influence alone she gathered close to 700,000 to fight under the same banner be they peasants or nobles, as she's been both. The general Aurora pays both equally and more depending on their achievements, even allowing soldiers to rank up with her own war system. I send my eldest son there to earn himself a good position. Since he's a pretty good fighter. The man who said the Roma said, I sent my two daughters to support the cause, I taught both how to hunt since young. I'm sure they'll be able to trap a lot of those nasty and stinking goblins, he said while praying to the goddess area in his mind to keep an eye over them. It's a good thing we don't live close by to the southern outpost of Aurora, otherwise we'd be forced to fight alongside her. Upon hearing those words from the man who hadn't contributed with anything the woman said, if the demon forces invaded with a great number from the closest border, with that useless and lazy attitude, you'd be the first one to die. The man smacks the table with a closed fist to cause a ruckus, and as he's about to protest, the man in front of him punches his face and shouts, You fucking idiot look at my clothes you made my drink jump with that. Geez man if you can't hold your own from a simple discussion Harmin, then go to the southern outpost and kill some goblins. They're paying pretty well. The man who ended up receiving the punch in its full force ended up sobering up, and undamaged from it, he said. I might just go with my unique graded weapon. The woman sitting at the table next to them said. Yes if you see my son over there tell him his mother misses him a lot. Is this the return of the villager hero, the great wielder of the red hammer? The man who punched Harming laughed happily with respect for him. Can't just let my unique hammer rest to the point of rusting. Harming got up and left the tavern without paying his share, and then went into thought. It's been a while since I fed it with blood, for a weapon that once belonged to the goddess Ariu it sure is very wicked. It was quite lucky my ancestor found it long ago. However wielding it makes me a tad insane, great power really does require a big toll. On the east border of the Lumen capital, a young boy was fishing. It sure took a while to get the legendary fisherman title, to think I needed to catch 1000 fishes, with this I've reached my grandfather level which he mentioned in the diary. You seem happy brother Ming. Did you finally achieve it? That thing you've been practicing for, for years now? His sister asks innocently while holding her hands behind her back, leaning slightly forward towards him. Yes, Momo, I've finally achieved the legendary fishing title described in those very old diaries he left behind. It's a good thing you somehow self-learned how to read, with only the basics mom knew, otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do. Mother says I'm a prodigy, the only one in the entire village who's learned how to read at such a young age. Not like there are many who know how to read or even had the chance to learn, or they will too. In the end, it's all about motivation and you have enough, so what's the next title little sister of mine? From her perfect memory, she says, there's one called Rock Breaker, you just have to smash rocks with the rock itself, apparently, before tools that's how the first titles were earned, back in the time where civilization didn't exist. Very well. I'll become strong enough to find a way for us to rise in life, worry not Momo. All right brother Ming, I'll do what I can on my own to help you. In fact, there are whispers coming from the capital and the south. Your cursed skill soul whisper, what is it telling you this time around? It, her hands trembled which made Ming hold them softly to support her, as this skill in specific grants fears to the user upon using it. She upon feeling karma continued speaking. The soft and cold whispers said that there's a great war to come in the south, between humans and goblins, and the result will decide either our race lives or dies. I guess you want to partake in it to help them with your skill? I don't know much about the war but perhaps someone there does, 
and depending on the information I can give, maybe it would make a difference. Well you know we can't leave our village till I complete all the titles our ancestors left to our grandfather, and now to me, so we'll sneak out tonight with the books, and I'll do the training on our way there. The books stay, I have memorized all of them with my unique skill photographic memory, so it was pretty easy despite consuming a lot of mana, but I had time to do so. Should we share the knowledge of the titles among the other soldiers? It should make the war easier. I'll evaluate all the generals over there, and if I see any that is worthwhile of using my knowledge, I'll see what I choose to do with it. Guess I'll take the unique fishing rod with us. It can easily be used in battle. Do as you wish Ming. All right. We'll depart a night through the shadows. Make sure you pack us food and money. Later that night as they have opened the door to escape home where they live with their parents and grandfather. Outside of it an old man was waiting for them. I don't remember Ming finishing the training, nor either of you having my authorization to leave the village. Grandfather with all due respect. My sister Momo heard a whisper that a war in the south will happen and I'm sure we are both necessary there, after all, if they lose we'll all die anyway. Fool! I've told you not to hear what that cursed child says. Momo lowers the head, holding back her tears while clenching the fingers on her cloth dress. The grandfather takes out his own necklace and says, you know very well that our village exists to protect one of the keys, he shows the black key in front of them. That shitty story again grandpa. Our family has been training by studying those diaries to have so much power, never doing anything other than protecting a key that doesn't open anything, and all this in secret for who knows how long, fool. This is just one of the keys. They are not meant to be brought together, much less used. Otherwise great chaos would fill our kingdom. I've told you this many times before you, idiot. Sister did get my share of the intelligence making me an idiot, but at least I know that I must protect humans and if they need my strength I couldn't possibly be here waiting for the goblins to breach through killing everyone, ending up getting the keys to themselves, the grandpa throws the key to the cursed child feet, then take it and never show yourselves in this village ever again, or you will not live another day, I'll leave the fate of the human race in your shoulder, may it end by the keys or the goblins, I'm too old to care anymore, now fuck off before I kill both of you right here. A murderous intent filled both of them as the old man walked between them back to the house closing the door behind them. I don't know what the key is for, even with my soul whisper I haven't received a single message for it, so let's take it with us for now, Momo said softly with a sad tone to it. Ming who was tearing up while feeling angry started walking silently towards the south, alongside his little sister who placed the key around her neck. She then approached closer next to him and grabbed his hand, understanding the sadness he feels as she had been discarded by the entire village due to her cursed skill, since it was a reference to the disgrace which for thousands of years the church does their best to discriminate, and some places have different ways of handling it other than exile. Through this darkness, we shall pave a path towards the light we hope to find. Year 5009 after the system day 70 of the flowering season. General it is as you said, the goblin kingdom seems to start past that. I've found some goblin marks on some trees as wild boars do. Great job, you heard the man prepare the fireworks gentlemen. Today we'll grace our enemies by setting their home in a big fire. Unknowingly to the goblins. A large-scale fire spell by fusing various fire skills was being prepared to bombard in two specific directions. Aurora? You know the goblins should block the spell right? Don't worry Sophia, the spell won't be directed at their base. After all, we don't know what kind of tricks the Goblin King may have, there's a small chance he could have a unique skill to reflect back magic killing our mages. Then what's the purpose of this spell? to set the forest on fire at two sides slowly reaching their camp. We'll then use wind mages to make the fire become bigger and stronger, in case the goblin king is a magical type he'll be forced to spend his mana, making everything a lot easier, in case he disregards the situation, it'll mean this is just an outpost of their true base, one way or another, once the fire starts going large it'll not only affect the goblins but the other races who live here, killing enemies without discretion, is it? Well, since they are mere beasts and monsters, 
it ends up not really mattering so what are we going to do afterward? We'll stay placed in this spot one of the two escapes they'll have. The other being their territory further in, Aurora merged her darkness making the fire spell slightly darker. May these black flames consume even water, she says coldly including an eerie expression. I'll support you Aurora, skill amplification. Romeo shouted while granting Aurora element a powerful buff. Thank you elder brother, that will certainly make things more effective seeing as I'm the only one with the dark element, even among the dark robbed ones. They seem to be lacking it. History says other humans have been born with it. But since most were either exiled or murdered, there's a chance that elemental line died. Sophie says understanding how effective the dark element can be in war after being taught by Aurora. Archers prepare to shoot your weapons once I shout, as we've trained and attempted sometimes already. The men rolled and started preparing the different weapons from bows to the crossbow. Once the archer line concludes the first volley wave of arrows, the heavy knights step forward and block the incoming goblins who'll fall for the traps of the earth mages, while the mages of the rest of the elements prepare a second wave spell. And you healers and supporters keep those shield heads alive. As you command general, the spell after taking a long time to cast was shot towards the south forest, southeast and southwest of it as further away as possible so that the smoke wouldn't block the army view to be able to slay the survivors without an issue, as per instructed in the many reunions Aurora had with the now formed Fire Mage Squadron. Even though her commanding abilities far exceed what she has done, Aurora decided to go for a cautious pattern, in order to teach them just enough to vanquish the forces of this world, who were strong but lacked the knowledge of warfare allowing her to triumph over the goblins who were strong and resilient warriors, as they naturally had the same health and double strength a normal human possesses. At this point in time, she had all the leaders she needed, and they were executing her orders without second questions asked, due to betrayal or refusal which would be considered a crime inside her army alone, allowing Aurora or a superior to execute them on the spot. This was how she disciplined them from the start so that they would devote their entirety to her, like the pawns she loved to use in the chessboard. In fact, the favorite chess piece of hers was the pawn, since it could reach the end and be promoted, this was her philosophy to the soldiers in front of her, despite the leadership roles she attributed being based solely on the leadership skill. The roles related to the mage squadron ranks are designated on each individual prowess and achievements, in other words, the one mage who killed the most enemies would be the captain of one of the attack magic squadrons, while the one who saved the most would be the captain of the support one, this would be applied to all the 100 man magic squads who were splitting through the three sized formation forces. Aurora figured that in a world with magic, condensing too many of her troops, and the same type in one place could be disastrous, to avoid the absolute chaos she taught everyone equally of their roles, so that they'd be able to do their job to the utmost within the possibility to do so. As death and fear rule the battlefield, and a very powerful magician in the opposite side could be the end of a great part of the army. The army formation she decided on splitting her army in was 200,000 in both wings leaving 300,000 in the center. The wings had been instructed to intercept any force that attempted to flank the middle section of the troops so that they could push all they could and pull back if necessary. The right wing cavalry was also tasked with a pincer movement towards the enemy army if a chance to do so appears. The one in control of this move was set to Zylf, who after a few achievements on skirmishes was feeling pretty high and mighty with the praise of those around him. Even when he went too deep Ryu would make sure to keep his back secured. It turned out that they were extremely compatible, and each would make the other improve. The left wing was a bit special used mostly for defense and backup. They showed no initiative as Balthazar was the one in command. He had been instructed to intercept any force that attempted to flank, and not influence the center afterward. The reason for this was unknown, but it was within Aurora's plan. Balthazar was thankful, but his eagerness to make himself useful would make him feel bad. However, with the firm belief he had, he entrusted himself to Aurora plans. After all, this man more than anyone else on the battlefield knew just what kind of achievements the little girl had from the Red Book, 
some that even he had trouble of accepting as real, but after countless tests, and the book is the most important to the cult he did not doubt any of it, she told him that one day the force she'll need the most might be his, so the men she left under his care had to grow the strongest, once Balthazar passed such a message to the soldiers they cheered with happiness, and the black robes whispered happily the words entrusted ordeal which made the rest of the left-wing soldiers shrug their shoulders not paying it any mind. Aurora selected the most ruthless and cold bunch to join the Darkhoods and also the ones who seemed the strongest. Of course, she had no way of telling other than asking everyone their statuses through personal data, but she had no time to compare everyone. So she made some questions in general, like do you fear anything? Are you ruthless enough to torture and kill a baby if necessary? A few others in that genre made her quickly reach a certain amount of men who she mixed with the dark robes. At first, the soldiers felt some creepiness as many despite not being religious most believe in the goddess area, and while notwithstanding the ideologies of the black robes cult several remained defensive especially during the night in case they'd be harmed or murdered in cold blood, maybe even poisoned, raped, or cursed, so first the first week they'd feel tired, eventually getting used to being in their presence and even talking with them. Even then a lot of the soldiers only started less skeptical once the skirmishes began and some were saved by the black robes prowess from the disgraced classes as most of them spend a good part of their life aiming to become stronger to one day exact revenge, this wish still remained just the hope of the one and the pandemonium twin sisters appearing, lighted up a new path which made a lot of them restrain themselves for the time being. The average level of the army currently was around 10 as the last war had been at least a hundred years ago as such this could be considered one or two generations ahead of that time, and only adventurers would gain some real experience killing other races, even assassins like the black robes wouldn't get much experience from slaying normal humans as they were mostly all level 1, so 10 experience more or less each one. After some time of the trees starting to burn the ground started shaking as the monsters and beasts alike started moving in panic and fear as this never happened before. Those who ran to the sides ended up getting themselves hurt. And due to the panic, some would end up clashing with one another ending up in casualties. As the fire progressed the beasts and the monsters with the instinct started mostly running north towards Aurora camp. The reason being that South would at some point lead to the kingdom of the Goblin King which most of them feared and knew they'd end up dying. Thanks to the Wind Mages the fire also propagated fairly easier to the southeast and southwest making similar effects on the beings living there which would affect the neighbor kingdoms along with the second prince army who remained southwest of Astia village, and the princess Liliana army being led by General Angelica on the opposite side leaving Aurora's army in the middle of both, leaving Ryuvan's Zylf's right wing at the direction of Angelica's, and Balthazar's left wing on Prince Marty's side. Aurora who was currently on top of the wooden wall which had a small margin for one person to walk alongside it from up above made for the archers and mages to shoot freely stood there with a totally blankless expression with Sophia and Romeo at each side of her as they kept on evaluating the tactics that she employed to the utmost detail which were different than the Aurora they knew, but even then they did so to learn with her improve their knowledge and act accordingly to her requests whenever they were needed, both of them were currently the jokers who could go any part of the battlefield freely and take command of any force if ordered. Due to the past life, Aurora was extra strict with Sophia who was a muscle adhere making it easy to be stomped in the many skirmishes they fought one another while Romeo was polished as he had some natural talent for it along with experience. The current Aurora didn't fear teaching and improve her past enemies as she was resolute she could murder both if things were ever to go wrong in the far future as now they were surely on their side as every point aligned in her side almost like a cursed fate for the two of them who knew nothing. It is time for the both of you to experience one-sided bloodshed, today we dye the ground with the red of our enemies. Despite her young age the charisma both of them felt from her, was strong enough for both to gulp and coldly look at what was about to happen in front of them without so much as to blink. Year 5009 after the system day 70 of the flowering season. 
the burnt smell started spreading further south and the sound of earthquake got stronger towards the north, as monsters and beasts started running desperately facing even bigger despair once they saw numerous humans waiting for them while wielding weapons thus knowing by instinct that the path behind would kill them anyway, so they charged at the army in front of them while grunting and roaring. Enemies were mostly composed of goblins, kobolds, a few monsters colored slimes who controlled the clear ones below them uniting themselves with the beast races, and a few big and fat orcs with pig heads holding clubs. It is of most importance that no one is left alive, so I'm leaving you two and the few assassins we have, to handle the survivors or messengers that may attempt to deliver information back to the goblin kingdom or a other. This way it'll all appear as if it was a natural accident in the forest, Romeo and Sophie nodded after listening to Aurora and rushed to one of the wooden houses where some humans were gathered playing a game of throwing pointy sticks at a straw doll. A while earlier before the fire skills fell, a certain goblin warlord perspective ranked sea threat upon the adventurer's guild, to think I, one of the goblin king Varak guards would be sent this far to explore the reason why so many goblins have been disappearing, the two meter tall goblin with a very muscled and large body sighed as soon as he finished speaking. A consistent sound of staff hitting the ground behind him could be heard ever since he left the goblin kingdom main base, and an old voice said softly, it is the order of our great king, I'm as unhappy as you but sadly I was the one who advised him as such therefore I'll be sure to keep you safe young one. To think one of the goblin shamans would step forward for a mere problem like this, goblins disappear all the time either they're killed by one of the other races or simply find some female and seclude themselves in some hole with her. The old one carrying a staff started laughing lightly, even our female goblins do the same it can't be helped. If the king was more careful we would have way more fighters than we do currently. Some millions difference I suppose? He scratched his head softly with his purple nails. Pretty sure we'd be more numerous than the orcs and kobold neighbor kingdoms. He coughed some green liquid onto the ground. You okay shaman? Yes. It is by the age of this one. After all, I've lived even longer than our king. Far longer. Age. I certainly wouldn't mind staying at my best forever. Imagine all the females I could bang. The old man upon hearing his honest side laughed lightly. After 300 years I have yet to see an end to all these wars, so I don't think that'll happen anytime soon. It would be a lot easier if the other goblin kingdoms further south would join us to beat the kobolds, the orcs, and of course those humans who we almost beat a hundred years ago. Worry not old man. This time around we have a lot more goblins than last time so we'll beat them for sure, not to forget some of them have learned the mana and elemental coating, he raises his voice and shouts, we've become stronger with a cold gaze, he said, we have an ordeal from the goddess Luna, it is said that a blonde woman will go against our way, I don't know how a single whimsical being could possibly do anything against us, but if our mother warned us then we must proceed carefully, it's okay old man, I was blessed by our mother twice now, there's no way I'd lose to some human scum. I've even fought one of the famous sword masters fifty years ago, some human called Ray. He did leave me a deep wound, but ultimately I won. He got lucky to have escaped. Luck. No, perhaps fate youngster, that is what our mother sees. A destiny that we must unfold, deny, change or overwhelm depending on her will. The staff clank got heavier making a hole on the ground. Lunua, I wonder if she'd let me bang her. The goblin warlord got excited thinking on it when the old man smacked his head with the staff. Fool don't disrespect the goddess it'll certainly bring you a fate worse than death, he said angrily. I was just kidding, he laughed while scratching his head once again as it left a minimal wound and then spoke. I haven't noticed anything peculiar so far and we've come a far away from the base. Upon noticing something passing through the air he added, what are those things flying in the air shaman? Once he lifted the head and saw it, flames? No, that sinister darkness around them. Don't tell me, demons, did they defeat the humans further north and have come towards us? Is that the reason? Fast we must uncover the truth and fall back before it's too late. Aura of speed. 
A light surrounded them along with some other goblins who traveled with them and they started running forward towards the north as the flames started falling putting everything on fire on their east side. Shit to think demons would finish those filthy humans before us, the goblin warlord gripped his broadsword tightly as they ran for some minutes. He speaks, can you feel this old man? There's an earthquake going on, don't tell me. He looked everywhere and as he was about to talk, yes, the monsters and beasts are running. But it's strange I feel them coming from both sides, but I don't understand why. Was it perhaps the fire we saw before? But wouldn't they have three ways out? Wait. What if, with a worried expression the warlord spoke, what's wrong? You're the most intelligent goblin in the kingdom. Did you reach some conclusion? Indeed child, it's just a guess, but let me make sure wait a moment. They stopped and then with both hands he struck the ground while shouting, blessed skill or a perception. A light expanded from him towards all sides and after a while, it returned to him. Seems like someone burning both sides leaving a straight wide path between the fires, possibly on purpose. Meaning we are expected at the end of the north side. Shit, seems like someone smart awaits us is that it old man? Yes, I shall buff us with the aura of defense, magic defense, attack, dexterity, intelligence. Multiple lights surrounded his group in succession. To think I'd see you use the five lights of the shaman seems like you're serious about this old man. Then I as well shall keep up to the best of my ability, skill, toughness, attack boost, war perception, muscle strength. Four more lights enveloped the warlord. I feel powerful, he grinned. Skill echo message, a wave of sound expanded around him loudly. We are the close assistants of the Goblin King there's some enemies in front of us be there beast or monster accompany us and stop panicking our enemy is just one come to meet with us at the north opposite of the Goblin Kingdom. The message reaches several monsters and beasts, from beasts like kobolds, orcs, goblins, to monsters like slimes, tusk boars, shroomies, and wild animals. A half hour goes by and a few thousand monsters and beasts charge towards the north under the guidance of the goblin shaman, and the warlord. Without stopping eventually reaching closer the warlord says, what are humans doing here? Are those wooden walls? A base this far so close to our forest? Seems like the forest that was here was all cut down. To have them face us in an open field? Whoever came up with this plan has my respect. Should we retreat old man? It's too late now the flames behind us will soon close the path, now we must win no matter the price. The old man eyes looked above finding it strange that the sunlight wouldn't reach him anymore eventually meeting a blonde woman on top of a wall, being able to only see the head as the rest was covered by the wall defenses. No matter what happens here you must kill that woman up there who has the unique dark element aura. The warlord looks up and notices a big dark aura extending so high that it completely hid the sun, covering the field in a vast shadow. Is that the one from the goddess ordeal? It must be, once the orcs clash tanking most of the damage jump on one of them and climb the wall, if it's you. It should be an easy feat, she seems to be alone, so it should be easy, don't die young one. Likewise old man, this is just the first step to conquer those filthy humans. Their hands knuckle each other and the warlord draws highly making everyone around him speed up, and then a loud yet soft girlish voice echoed the battlefield, archers, let loose, the girl arm on top of the war descended and a volley of arrows from within the wall flew over her beautifully bringing despair to the monsters and beasts who approached. Year 5009 after the system day 70 of the flowering season back to the present. As they fell from the sky some monsters countered with offensive and defensive magic while a lot of them had neither, being injured by some of the projectiles, dyeing the ground with colored blood types along with some metal pointy arrows. I've set up the bait, after listening to Balthazar and the statue of the goddess Luna who reigns the beasts they should be coming after me, I did exude all my mana, after all. It would be a waste if such a beautiful darkness capable of hiding the sun that is behind wouldn't make them captivated enough to try to take a bite at this young lady. Aurora grinned wryly extending the evilness within her to those in front, despising every soul that awaited to gnaw at her flesh. Thunders and roars approached the general, and with a cool mind and cold decision, another order was given. 
ready the second wave of arrows, pour some element into those, the soldiers inside the walls started charging mana then converting it into the many different elemental powers making the arrows shine in different colors while Aurora looked at them readying it up as the enemies started coming close to the humans who awaited them. Seeing everyone ready Aurora once again shouts, release the arrows. Once again hundreds of them flew above the walls, but this time she released the dark aura making the sunlight cover the entire field blinding the enemies as the allies already had the shadows of the tall wooden walls and the sun was behind her. Their 10,000 mana I just spent on making a long vertical wall of darkness better pay off now, notice, the skill dark wall has been acquired, as soon as it dispersed. The light blinded everyone in front of the soldiers, and the elemental arrows mercilessly penetrated the enemies. The human army, knowing this would happen, started their charge at the enemies as the return of light was the promised signal by their general. Marvelous. It seems like my blessing truly wasn't wasted. The saintess started laughing while watching from the wall but further to the east to avoid being harmed or even killed. A lot of enemies were murdered hastily and slowly as the vision became clearer the combat between both sides started slowly becoming more even as to what the support squad buffed the human side while the healing squad kept them alive. The archers would shoot normally from the war while the offensive mages would alternate with their own elemental single target attacks except for some area damage skills further to the back of the enemies to avoid hurting the allies. The repetition of these attacks as they hadn't expected any of this was enough to uneven the balance between them allowing the humans to defeat their enemies easier. As the orcs who were the slowest of the enemies arrived at the front line the humans using shields felt the heavy blows they would cause making their arms and hands go numb, realizing this approach from them, Aurora shouted to the archers and mages on the wall, focus the fat big headed ones. It was at that time that a big and fast goblin jumped tall a meter and half on top of the shoulders of one of the orcs mana coated his broadsword and feet and jumped once more towards the wall slashing with all his strength at the neck of Aurora. As she saw him in the air, darkness barrier, transformation, the goblin warlord got blinded, executing his skill anyway as not many would be able to avoid such beautiful slash missing the supposed neck of the girl. He then hit his body against the wall as the jump lacked height enough to reach the top of it and he fell to the very bottom numbing his feet. Just how? It was way too clean. I didn't feel it. He looks into the sword and notices no blood whatsoever, and then his heart is impaled by a spear from behind fully mana coated. Who do you think you are of attempting to hurt my future wife you piece of shit? A Raphael the spear wielder shall have you die today. He removes the spear and the goblin turns around as blood pours out from the sides of his mouth. He charges the broadsword with all the mana he can pour and slices at the human in front of him at least to take him to the grave and keep the warlord company there in the afterlife who he blocks while jumping backward making Raphael fly a few meters against another human hitting the poor man in the back. Ouch man, you sure are strong, he balanced himself, took a few steps forward and then charged mana in the spear tip, then how about this, unique skill heavenly throw, the spear flew at a very fast speed which the goblin warlord blocked with his broadsword facing the tip to the ground staying there immobile, just now, seems like I wasted a lot of mana in an opponent that was about to die, but man to stay standing even after receiving my strongest skill, you're sure making me look weak, if it wasn't for you being blinded and surprised, it looks like I have to become stronger, the shaman who had cited the efforts of one of the strongest soldiers of the king and one of the very few friends he had started running away boosting himself with speed leaving the beasts and the monsters to die, including the goblins he brought with him. He looked back seeing the girl on top of the wall as he ran and thought to himself, shit, just how the fuck that human didn't die? It looks like she didn't even take a step from where she is. How can that be possible after that peerless attack from the warlord, he was no incompetent goblin. Damn it, goddess Luna, mother of us, if you're hearing me why did you not give us the power to make your ordeal real, now that the chance was so close, I must find a way to escape no matter what it takes. As he ran further and further away from the battlefield towards the only possible path, ten humans were waiting for him. 
here's our seventh prey of the day, the pink-haired lady said while smiling and holding a sword. Pink hair? Who are you human? Me? I'm a summoned hero by the goddess Aria, the one who'll vanquish you today. She points the sword at him and the shaman started laughing loudly. I see, yet the one the goddess Luna ordered us to murder no matter what was the blonde girl. She made her put all the lunar statues bleed for ten days non-stop. Just what kind of human is that? Is she one of the shitty heroes of Arya? Hey don't talk about our general like that, and what do you mean she made your goddess status bleed? What kind of weird shit is that even? If you wish to know you shall allow me passage, either I live or die from the fire behind you humans, shall be a fate decided by the gods. How's that a deal for allowing an old goblin as me to live for such valuable information? Very well, now tell us everything you know, Sophie said angrily while feeling frustrated for now knowing anything about it. All I know is that she incited the anger of our goddess as such all the beast races through the world one way or another will chase after her. It seems like her talent for war might be the reason seeing as I've completely lost today. Hey muscle head doesn't just go make decisions on your own. She asked us to not allow any survivors as it would make things more complicated in the future. Romeo pokes Sophie's cheek. Ow oh, fine, we'll capture him then and make him spill all the information about his boss. Too bad I'm a shaman and a very old one so my statuses have long been decreasing as such I don't think I'd beat ten humans. The odds would be fine if one of them wasn't the hero. Knowing the heroes from the past generations, alone I wouldn't stand a chance, as such. Imana coats the staff, grabs it from the middle with both hands and pierces his heart suiciding in front of them. Loyal people are scary. Romeo muttered softly having seen this a lot in the past as he fought Aurora underlings. Sophie didn't say anything and just watched the old goblin in front of her die peacefully. Should we go help the army? The ten of us could strike the enemies causing them to falter faster. One of the assassins voiced his opinion upon noticing the sorrowful mood coming from both of them. Yes, let's go, and try to capture one of the goblins alive. Information warfare is something Aurora instructed us with, Romeo said coldly as he understood that no matter what he'd either have to side with humans or a different race and for him who wanted to give a good life to Sophie, siding with the Lumen Kingdom was the only possible choice. As they walked back Romeo whispered, are you okay Sophie? Yes. Sometimes it feels like we're used to shedding blood, and honestly, we killed some even before that one came, but I don't know, it felt different somehow. Since he was able to talk normally like a human I guess, most of them don't have much of an intellect, and that one had everything we have, but even in our old world, we killed humans knowing it was required, and in this world the necessity also exists. I'm tired of killing. She places her head on Romeo's shoulder. I know. Let's do our best to dominate this world so that we can retire early and have a good life with everyone else. Yeah, I'll have to apologize to Aurora after this. It seems that her talent is so outstanding that the enemy goddess is trying to hunt for her, and I almost doubted her. She truly is a prodigy. And she was also blessed by the goddess and the saintess herself. So it is normal for things to be like this. If you thought a little you'd eventually reach this conclusion, enemies ahead, let's go, Sophie, you'll have to work twice harder as a proper apology, Romeo shouted increasing the range between them while smiling at her, yes, let us finish this and go rest, they start running to the encounter of the leftover enemies whose numbers have been reduced by more than half, year 5009 after the system day 70 of the flowering season at night, the smell of blood and death was so intense that no one dared to approach, the bodies weren't buried as they would eventually convert into soul stones, and the weapons and other types of equipment had been removed both from the enemies and the allies who fell during combat on the battlefield. Usually, scavengers would make a lot of profit, but upon Aurora orders, the soldiers who didn't participate would be the ones collecting those things and then be stored in one of the storage rooms they had made and guarded, not many fools would attempt to steal from an army, but foolishness existed for a reason, so to avoid that Aurora had contacted the merchants to get her some important people to handle the upcoming trades from the loot that she'd acquire from the skirmishes she had done so far, and of course the ones that were yet to happen. A lone girl stood in the middle of corpses while focusing on a human, 
beast, and monster detective skills to be sure no one else was close by while she prepared for her awakening. Just in case I'll do a little trick so the men on the wall or in the watchtowers won't see me with their skills by accident. She expanded a dark barrier around while transforming into a grim eye and absorbed the few thousand soul stones round at a good pace, eventually consuming all of them. Notice, 300,000 soul power has been received it is a sufficient amount to fully awaken by using the blessed skill of endless awakening. I received a lot of stats from the recent awakenings, as well as 1000 mana for each time I did. I wonder what the end will be, I wish to fully awaken as well as to deconstruct every skill I received. Notice, 150,000 soul power has been received from the deconstructed skills. Notice, for the last three stages 204-800 soul power will now be consumed, the result for full awakening is unknown, do you wish to proceed? Yes, she said expectantly as Aurora couldn't bear to remain weak forever, without knowing what true power in this world yet meant. Notice, soul bound has reacted. Experience, skills, and soul can now travel between Grimo Iron and Master independent of the distance. Notice. You have successfully awakened to the first of three phases of a cursed grimoire, as such, all of your blessed skills have been sent to the master to avoid losing them, from now onwards the same will happen to any new ones given by higher entities, including divine and holy types. Furthermore the grimoire cover has been updated turning into crystal clear yet hiding the words in the pages. As she became further cursed, the affinity with the dark element grew making the aura around her grow darker than black inside the barrier she erected earlier. Notice, with the first phase concluded you've earned an extra thousand mana capacity, 100 durability, plus 1 attack, 10 magic attack, and 500 magic potential along with a cursed effect. Notice, while in Grimo Eye form you'll be able to see in a scope of 360 degrees, such vision can be blocked if there's anything in front of you. In other words, you cannot see through. As the aura grew stronger and wider, forcing the dark barrier to extend covering a further area, the ground beneath and the leftover corpses started disappearing faster. Notice, you have successfully awakened to the second of three phases of a cursed grimoire. Notice, with the second phase concluded you've earned an extra thousand mana capacity, 100 durability, plus one attack, 10 magic attack and 500 magic potential along with a cursed effect, status points function has been removed, all the points spent have been reverted. System, the title cursed weapon has been received. Notice, while in Grimo I form the skills used by the master will have a better chance of hitting. Finally, the aura grew to such an extent that even hard things like the stones and bones started turning into dust and then even those grains disappearing into the nothingness of darkness. Notice, you have successfully awakened to the third of three phases of a Grimoire becoming a full-fledged and max-ranked cursed weapon. Notice, with the third phase concluded you've earned an extra thousand mana capacity, 100 durability, plus one attack, 10 magic attack, and 500 magic potential along with a cursed effect. Leveling up will now automatically increase weapon type parameters. Level and experience have been thus reset to give birth to the new application by the system. Notice. Unique skill transformation has evolved into cursed skill transformation allowing the birth of a new skill. Notice. The cursed skill true form has been unlocked. Notice. Due to the evolution of the transformation skill, status has been reverted to normal. Notice. Due to the cursed transformation skill the status is protected by a curse that hides the information no longer necessary changing it, this has already been applied by using part of the immense aura around the grimoire. Notice, the third and last effect requires an awakened master thus it'll stay unlocked but dormant for now, status has been updated and will now open, skill points have also been removed along with its function leaving all the pandemonium skills locked. Status, level, 1, experience 0 100, class, pandemonium weapon name, Aurora, type, Grimoire, speciality, rank, cursed durability, 2300 2300, mana 13000 13000 attack, 
13, Magic Attack, 130, Magic Potential, 6500, Soul Power, 245,200 Titles, Etonums, Uncursed, Soul Bounds, Contracted, Devourers, Cursed Weapons, Completed Series, God Skills, Actives, Status Level 50D, Darkness Barrier Level 15F, Piercing Darkness Level 17F, Mana Coat Level 11F, Dark Coat Level 13F, Mana Wave Level 1F, Dark Bind Level 14F, Extraction Level 100S, Dark Wall Level 10F Passives, Mana Control Level 25E, Dark Control Level 19F, Monster Detection Level 50D, Beast Detection Level 40D, Night Vision Level 100S, Human Detection Level 70C, Unique, Killing Intent Level 5, Cursed, Unidentified, Transformation Level 100, True Form Level 1, Unique Element. Dark Cursed Soulbound Contracted Skills, Telepathy F, Giver E, Deconstruct D, Stacking C, Split B, Imbue A, Consumers, Unique 3 thirds Effects, Cursed 3 thirds Effects, Consumed Skills, Seems like I've started from zero once again. She muttered upset into the night feeling weak and powerless once more as having a ton of mana was all she had, and by using her past life memories to get a comparison. It wasn't necessarily the greatest of things. At the very least I have enough mana to play tricks during the many war skirmishes to come. It seems like the goblin shaman told Romeo and Sophie about the goddess Luna. But luckily he didn't mention any name. With all the blessings I had going over to sister I can only truly hope she'll be able to become like I used to be. Meanwhile she gets stronger. I'll keep doing my share through commanding. Reducing our enemies as much as possible. With the fire further spreading, it'll eventually reach the enemy kingdoms. I can't help but seeing how they will handle it. Best case scenario would be having beasts fighting the other beasts unless it doesn't reach them as the forest is bound to end at some point. Actually, that would be an interesting plan. She started walking deeper into enemy territory after removing the barrier around her while coating the entire body in mana to avoid being assassinated in one go unless the enemy was so powerful that it would break through. The good thing about being how I am is that the heat and this burnt smell and or even the smoke don't really bother me, but it'll certainly be harmful to the enemies which allow me to explore freely. Let's see what I can find in the middle of the darkness of the night illuminated slightly by the fire further south and the remnants of black and red charcoal a blonde short-haired girl ran happily smiling. Half an hour later of continuous looting of soul stones from corpses she finds and shiny stones on the ground. Her passive skill alarms her of a beast nearby. Without much care, she keeps running southward like a moth flying in the direction of the flames while feeling really good about herself. After interrogating some of the goblins that were captured by Sophie who apologized to her for having some doubts due to the shaman words, the assassins obtained a good amount of information. Not even an hour of torturing and they were blabbering all they could with the words they knew. As the intelligence owned by such creatures, young ones even were certainly not the best. Nonetheless, for Aurora it was enough to finally pinpoint with absolute confidence the enemy king base which crossed close by to what she had estimated, and also got to learn a couple of important things such as what type of monsters and whose kingdoms were around it. From the information, one of the kingdoms parallel to General Angelica was the Kobold Kingdom who was wide enough to reach the sea at the west, and on the opposite side in the east. There's an orc's kingdom reaching all the way to the end of the mountains that start northwest of the Lumen Kingdom. What intrigued her the most though was that despite the goblins having told everything she wanted to know, from the things they used as the weapons, skills, classes, evolutions which were something only beasts could do, a better estimation of their number, and of course what was behind, in other words, further south than the goblin kingdom. Once her question was answered, she then realized how exactly the human kingdom would fall like the saintess predicted, since further behind the goblin kingdom, were three other similar kingdoms of the same race, apparently led by the goblin king Varag brothers and sisters. In other words, in the future based on the saintess dream, the odds were that the Varag allied all the goblin kingdoms destroying the kobolds, orcs, 
and of course the humans, allowing the goddess Luna to become the ruler of the south. After a lot of thought, Aurora realized that if the first kingdom to fall wasn't the one in front of her army, then even with the knowledge she possesses, it would be impossible to stop total defeat on numbers alone. Despite being a weapon perhaps due to having a past personality and soul which remained all the way to this life, she was feeling stressed and impulsive which resulted in this little trip to refresh her ideas. This is, she kicks slightly a green thing on the floor. Ah, it hurts. The thing turned out to be a female goblin who turned herself upwards after rolling to see who kicked her roasted goblin meat. You look delicious. The wicked perverse side of Aurora who is currently in control said while licking the lips. The goblin female got up despite being injured and looked down at the young girl who was smaller by at least a quarter part. Who do you think you are calling me a goblin warrior of level 10 delicious like that? Not even us female goblins when going on a mating season are that straightforward. She shouted angrily at Aurora who was not even listening to her and then she activated it. True form. Once she used her new skill, Aurora appearance transformed into what it used to be heightening up to 180 centimeters, well-built female naked fit body, and a long white hair reaching the ground, with blue icy eyes and an extremely white pale skin filled with very complex tattoos all over her body in her face included. Notice, true form skill bringing you back to a portion of your older self can only last for a minute per the level of the skill while consuming 1000 mana each time, and for every level, it increases the quantity of power you can use. The abilities of your cursed colored marks all over your body will slowly be unlocked. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted for the first minute. What's up with this human filled with war painting of different colors, white hair that goes all the way to the floor? She looks very old, grotesque even. The female creature thought evaluating what was in front of her who had been a cute young girl not too long ago. Two voices resounded through the same voice making it sound like an echo. It has been far too long since we have become true. The goblin in front of Aurora started shaking aggressively as the killing intent was naturally activated as the voice spoke. As she looked at the target in front of her an eerie dark aura took shape surrounding her hands and then she opened her mouth where sharp and big teeth could be seen. A monster? A D demon? The goblin yelled confused without knowing what creature the supposed human in front of her currently was. We are hungry, come here, let us eat you. We are starving, the world must be consumed, as Aurora approached. The goblin warrior tried all sorts of things eventually coating herself in mana gaining some resistance against the killing intent that was striking her, no longer shaking in fear and preparing an attack as she got closer. Once Aurora got in the necessary range, the goblin mana coated her fist and punched towards the girl's face in front of her. The fist flew through Aurora's head trespassing it without causing harm causing the goblin to panic further and then the darkness around her became many arms with hands, and they grabbed the green creature tightly hurting her physically and also with the element slowly turning the body into nothingness, two of the hands grabbed her legs making her immobile, two more grabbed her arms forcing the creature into submission, and another one her neck lowering the body by pulling the neck towards the ground curving the goblin back, to which the enemy did its best to fight back but to no avail. With the neck now close to her, Aurora's mouth grew wide enough and she bit it off causing the head to fall on the floor. Notice, 550 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, Aurora has leveled up to 3. Every 10 levels an upgrade to the statuses will happen. She chews sometimes and then gulps the goblin meat down. Notice, something has been rewarded. System, couldn't understand or input the reward into status. Notice, the pandemonium class has progressed. System, this type of reward has been directed by default to the tome of pandemonium who holds the knowledge from a different world. Once she devours the entire goblin which didn't take more than 20 seconds despite the big size, a voice is then produced by the old woman, monster, demon, abomination, creature, god, phantom, devil, calamity. We've been called many names by the old humans, but you're all wrong. Where? She smiled evilly as her mouth was full of blood with small pieces of green meat, and then she returned naturally to her normal human form as the time ended. 
Seems like our gamble didn't pay off even using our true form, but nonetheless, we have found a way to fight the system in this world, though I'm not sure what progressed in the pandemonium. Indeed Aurora, it wasn't so bad, we'll possibly be able to change this world unlike the last one, and find a way to bring a calamity to those gods who oppress us. Yes, secretly we'll exploit the system, sneakily we'll devour the many beings around, stealthy we'll close the gap towards the higher beings, we'll destroy everything and everyone who stands before us while saving our master from this pathetic world. Now sleep Aurora, your time won't come for a while. MHM, I'll have to level this skill up at some point and use the other tricks I brought into this world, the girl laughed wickedly while surrounding herself in an ominous aura. Detecting humans coming from behind. 2. Must be the hero and the sage who must have noticed my absence, transformation skill, the blood and the smell disappeared without a trace from her making everything clean and perfect as it was before she arrived here. Then with a fake smile, she turned round and started walking casually while holding her hands on her back against each other. After a while, as Aurora is able to detect humans 100 meters away, she meets the couple who's always on her tail. Aurora, are you okay? Sophie hurriedly approached and checked on her. Yes older sister, I came to explore this late at night to refresh my ideas especially since no one would be here, after that big fire, she smiled happily making Sophie relax her body, I suppose it'd be hard to find a monster around here, everything smells very bad, Romeo agrees based on logic, having both hands around his nose making it look like a small mask, let us return we shouldn't be breathing this, it won't do us any good, we shouldn't, what could a smell like this do, Aurora asked innocently since the kingdom is advanced but not to a medical extent since magic can heal a lot of things, I'll explain on the way come you two, alright, Aurora replies happily while grabbing Sophie's hand and walking back to the camp, I'm relieved you're safe, next time at least take one of us with you, alright, I'll let you know next time I need to relax from planning things, it truly must be tough for someone so young to bear such a big burden. The couple thought in unison completely falling for Aurora's innocence. Year 5009 after the system day 72 of the flowering season at the Goblin Kingdom calls Rix here. One of the small goblins who'd do any of the biddings of the Goblin King ran in search of the Goblin Lord, after a while. A green goblin returned clad in black armor while having a big axe on his back. A small one asked me to come. What's wrong king? It seems they haven't returned, the shaman and the warlord, two great goblins. That old man with the staff? I'm sure he's alright. He compared to the rest of us was probably the wisest one with all the respect king. It's true that one was easily at the top especially with how dumb everyone is. I want you to order some goblin assassins and archers to scout the surroundings towards the border with the human territory where I sent them but you will stay at the ridge just in case they fall in a trap or something else happens, as you command King Varag, I'll go at once. Good, feeling unease for the past days he went into thought, is it possible someone as smart as the old man really fell for some trap? No, impossible he was the reason we almost beat the human a hundred years ago, he might be growing ancient, but he wouldn't fail for a simple trap like the ones the humans used to do. What if it wasn't a simple trick, perhaps? Blonde girl. Goddess Luna. A smart human? Smarter than the shaman? Impossible. They are filthy and while not dumb they weren't anything special. If it wasn't for the powerful heroes and the use of shiny weapons, we would have beaten them long ago. This time for sure. Now that the goblins are learning how to make their weapons shiny, we'll surely defeat the humans, but just in case the shaman perished somehow, I'll have to find a smarter goblin. Goblin, go send a message to my sister the Queen Gruag of one of the three kingdoms the one in the south from us, the middle one. Don't get it mistaken, and tell her I asked for one of her smart goblins for a war to come in a year and a half, tell her the old man shaman died of age, take some others with you so you don't get murdered on the way there. Why yes almighty king. The small one went in search of some helpers leaving the king completely alone. Once I beat those humans I'll take their entire territory and make amends with my two brothers and sister, 
and together we'll form the biggest goblin kingdom in the world by uniting our four kingdoms. Of course, to achieve it I'll first have to show them mine is greater so they submit to me, he smiled satisfied with his goal. Still, where's the old man? He's been here since I was born, he even chose me back then during the goblin ceremony. Year 5009 after the system day 75 of the flowering season at the goblin kingdom. King. I've brought back what's left of the shaman from the looks of it he chose to kill himself with the annoying staff he used to walk with, he shows a very dry dark green body with a hole in the heart. What? Why would he do something like that? Varag shouts angrily scaring those around him. From what the stealth assassins could tell there are some wooden walls near the border to the north, and the forest that used to be close by vanished leaving only charcoal behind. I'd assume the humans burnt it down. The goblin king punched his stone chair leaving a big crack on the right side where his arm was resting. So that's what the black smoke some days ago was. To think someone as brilliant as the old man would suicide. Was it to avoid dying to the flames? Unless someone tried to capture him. No normal human would be able to do so. A hero? 100 years passed so this should mean the heroes are back. Shouldn't we kill them before they get strong king? We should but I need some more time to fully heal from this curse, a hundred year curse from the last war, once that is gone we'll murder those filthy humans. Till then we play safe is that it? For now we'll increase our defenses and rebuild the forest but further away from us so if those filthy humans decide to burn it again it won't affect us this far, putting goblins on the lookout and killing any scout of theirs will also be beneficial. I understand king, you may go and put those goblins working harder on weapons, training, and for those who went to level up tell them to avoid the north due to the shitty humans, I will, as he walks to do what he was ordered the king goes into deep thought, to think humans this time around would be the first ones to do the first strike, they haven't done that for the past centuries, why now, did they perhaps go insane and are trying to go all out? It will certainly be fun to slay them if they attempt to come closer to us. An evil grin was shown on his face as he was sure to win any open field battle, and the main reason that he lost the Great War a bit less than a hundred something years ago was due to Lumen Capital Castle stone walls and the heroes who were powerful and tricky to deal with but now they're long dead and compared to the past ones are still super weak to make a difference. The epilogue of the war prelude dark year 5009 after the system day 90 of the flowering season inside Aurora tent with all the leaders. It seems like they haven't moved even after killing a few thousand of them, General, Mark mentioned while scratching his beard as he looked at a map showing as accurately as possible the territory they were in. Didn't expect the Goblin King to be such a coward. But that is fine, we shall bring the war to them. Zylf smiling coldly says. What is the plan O oh great general? That is simple, you go at them, provoke them as only you know, and then flee. Meanwhile we'll extend our army and proceed slowly halting at the middle. Even if I do that and somehow make them come, wouldn't their numbers overthrow ours? Worry not, for the next twenty days I'll do the adequate preparations with everyone's help. And once I'm done I expect you to have quite the provocative bait for the little king. Aurora smiled coldly at Zylf whose hands started tremble of excitement. I have quite fun plans. I suppose I can do as I please? He asked while licking his bottom lip from right to left. Of course, Ryu and Mark gather all nature and earth elemental mages. We'll make some interesting things. The rest of the army shall stick to help the farmers expanding the fields. We'll need as many resources as we can. Regarding the fields, they've been taken care as you requested. We also secured some water sources by digging deep enough the way you asked. Wells were built and the river comes from the capital far from the goblins so we can rest assured that it won't be poisoned. It won't be poisoned. Aurora started thinking deeply as a new idea popped up. Everyone looked at the young girl who looked seriously into the ground inside the tent and then turned her face to the map and placed her finger seeing how the river presented itself in it. She then smiled slightly and took a paper which she then started writing on it. Upon finishing words came out of her mouth, Mark, 
do take this message to General Angelica, tell her to execute this as it'll affect the enemy kingdom in front of her which should spice things up making the Kobold kingdom be forced to act. Mark upon taking the letter and reading it says, won't this make us have to fight two kingdoms at the same time? Don't worry, I'll put some goblins doing the poisoning for us, we did capture a lot of them from the last war skirmish, what will we do once the kobolds arrive there? The old man asked trying to understand how deep the plan went. We kill the goblins and tell the kobolds they've been poisoning our side of the river too, and then we'll ally with them, allying ourselves to beasts. The saintess shouted surprised at Aurora's plan. Why not my dear saintess? It'll allow us to diminish both of the beast kingdom's numbers. After all, from the information we gathered we'll need both the kobolds and the orcs assistance to completely defeat the four goblin kingdoms. Once we're done with that, kobolds and orcs are next, no matter how meticulous my guidance is. I can't possibly beat six beast kingdoms with this army. Ah, so you meant it like a temporary alliance? Well in that case I don't mind. Even if you minded it wouldn't be your job to decide, I'm here to make the humans and the goddess Arya win. As such, everything and anything that will allow more of our soldiers to survive is the ideal. Upon hearing that the saintess expression dulled but realizing Aurora was right she bowed lightly out of respect. To put the saintess of the Lumen Kingdom in her place. This little girl never ceases to amaze me, Ryu thought as he too agreed with the general since for him religion and war aren't necessarily the same despite the Pope passing such an idea when it came to demons. Alfred tell your men to help with the usual activities I've done with every other soldier. It'll make them stronger as they'll certainly receive a lot of titles. The same goes for Xylf though in his case only for the next ten days. Understood, both said clearly with confidence. To make my soldiers from different noble houses farming, fishing, and who knows what. Though as long as they do become tougher that might not be so bad, plus it'll help our resources for the cold seasons that will arrive soon. I wonder if my mercenaries will enjoy doing such disappointing tasks. Xylf grinned holding back his laughter. Romeo and Sophie, I'll leave the poisoning by the goblins plan for the two of you, with your skills and the assassins, it should go without an issue. Leave it to us. Romeo smiled happily for being relied on while Sophie winked at Aurora. As for the orcs, being on Prince Marty's side, they probably wouldn't hear my request, so I'll have to think a bit more on that section. She once more looks at the map while everyone but the Saintess and Balthazar stay inside the tent. Shouldn't we just let his army fall to the orcs and goblins? Balzathar asked after thinking for a while about how to remove that prince out of the equation. That would cause a lot of deaths on the human side, the Saintess replied harshly to him. Aurora clicks her tongue and then says, I do expect them to fall at some point since they wage war on their own and the generals the prince have are all against me due to their successors dying during the annual tournament. It's not your fault, after all. They couldn't have possibly been a worthy opponent to the one. The one? Saintess thought recalling having heard this man mention such words before and then she said, that it was an unfortunate accident but within the laws of the tournament. War has a bigger weight. In that case, there's something I can try. We provoke the orcs and make them fight the goblins and the humans, if they're going to fall anyway then at the very least they kill each other after Marty army retreats or falls completely. In terms of war management she's been truly excellent losing very few soldiers and having killed 4000 enemies so far, but morally speaking it makes me question my decision of blessing her. Such a ruthless young girl, the saintess frowns thinking about it. Balthazar noticing her expression says, don't doubt your actions now. You couldn't possibly have anyone better than this general to bring your goddess a victory, even if I hate you. I too wish to win, not for Arya, the Pope, or you, but to give the disgraceful ones a place in this world, as we're humans too. Upon hearing the words directed to her she breathes deeply and stares deeply at Aurora who's solely focused on alternative plans as the goblins could join the orcs in a fight against humans as far as she knows. Yes, I won't back down on my choice. And once the humans are the sole winners, 
I'll make an exception for the disgraceful classes to live on without tissues that'd make this fight worth a lot more. Ah, I have a better idea related to the orcs, Aurora declared softly, making both stare at the general as they watch her smile innocently yet happily. Year 5009 After the system day one of the sun season in the adventurer's guild of Astia village. To think that Rookie would rank up as much as to lead an entire army. My hand still itches whenever I remember about messing Aurora's sister. Tony shouted while laughing as he was celebrating his rank up with the usual party. Haven't seen either of them in quite a long time. Leonor joined the conversation as today was a calm day missing both of them. Come here and drink with us, it's on me today. Tony laughed happily while extending a cup of alcohol to her. Leonor takes it and sits along with them. So receptionist what happened to the other twin? Iris that girl who uses ice. She sips a bit and then replies, Some days ago out of worry I went to the potion shop where her parents Luke and Rosalind work and I asked for both of them. That's when they told me one was the general of the army of His Highness Julius and Iris was training under one of the few sword masters. With such an outstanding talent for ice, she's learning swordsmanship? Tony asked confused as he wasn't expecting that information. It is a secret not like it matters anymore since the war started, but she actually participated in the annual tournament and ended up reaching the quarterfinals while using swordsmanship and of course ice magic. Whoa. I wish I was there to see that, but at the time I was questing. Tony had a little sad look at him. Drink up and celebrate on Iris's behalf for reaching that far in the tournament she's only nine years old after all. Upon hearing that he drank the whole cup and went back to being merry, a little girl and a boy walked closer to them upon hearing the name and she says, I'm sorry to bother, but where can I find this girl you're talking about? I have a very important matter to discuss with her. I don't remember ever seeing the boy before, he's so tanned and muscular yet he looks young, the brown hair and eyes do fit his skin greatly. And why are they looking for Iris? Why is the girl all covered up? At least from the voice. It sounded like one, Leonor thinks as she gets up from the table. Follow me. Let's talk inside that room over there. She points at the place where Iris once went to register as an adventurer. After a while passes and they sit on the couches inside the room with a rectangular brown table in the middle. I'm Leonor a friend of Iris and a receptionist in this guild. Who are the two of you and why are you looking for her? The small girl removes the hood making Leonor freeze temporarily in fear. Dudaman, Leonor starts sweating trying to scream but is unable to. I'm Ming, and this is my sister Momo a cursed human, she hides her appearance to not scare anyone. Upon hearing Ming words Leonor slowly calms down as she starts understanding that it is a curse that changed her appearance making her hair and eyebrows white, her eyes red and having a tan skin like her brother. We're from the northeast of village near to the sea. It's not a widely known one. In fact, it is a pretty secret one, so you wouldn't have heard of it even if we told you about it. The sister then added, the two of us seek to speak with Iris before helping her sister in the war to the south since you know her. It means my curse did lead me to the right place, she smiles as kindly as possible towards Leona while feeling bad inside for scaring her. Leonor grips her leg with the fingers and then questions, if I tell you where she is, what will happen to her? I just wish to meet her even though my curse says she's extremely dangerous, but, even then, I want to see for myself who she truly is, Momo opens her eyes wide open showing the brilliant red irises of hers that remind Leonor of one day where she was sitting around a bonfire surrounded by snow, your curse is wrong, Iris is very sweet and kind, she's not a threat or anything like that, Iris is, a good girl. Upon hearing those words Momo exhales softly ending up with a kind smile. We just wish to talk with her nothing else. Can you please tell us where we can find her? We've come from very far to meet her, Ming declared in an attempt to pressure Leonor. If talking is all you'll do then I suppose that's fine though I do not know if she'll have time to talk with either of you as she's currently training with a beggar swordmaster or the drunken swordmaster as he's known. The brother's expression grows in confusion with the two titles mentioned. She's currently in Tan Village a little trip from here, but do not tell anyone about this and don't force your way through, her master will cut you both down in a blink otherwise. 
They look at each other and Ming says, let's go the war started some time ago, time is running out. Thank you for helping us out Leonor. She smiles and then hides inside the clothes once again. A while passes and upon leaving the guild through the exit, Momo passes by a young lady in a pure white dress with white roses scattered through it, captivating her to which her curse whispers the word hero as their eyes meet with one another. Red eyes? Momo doesn't stop looking forward while lowering her head going unnoticed by Robert who was accompanying her here. What's wrong Alicia? Why have you stopped? Ah. Never mind let's go. A while later she heads towards the potion shop to greet Iris's parents and then further south towards her father Alfred and Aurora. Momo and Ming head to Tung village after talking to a villager who was willing to take them there for some coins. Year 5009 after the system day 3 of the sun season in the entrance to the southern outpost. Not even on my way here have I seen such large fields and so many farmers at that. Just what in the hell is happening here? The man in his thirties looked around at the very vast fields noticing as he walked south a large outpost with tents and small houses filled with troops, and then noticing that the men who were working weren't just your casual peasants, from their expensive attires and even using ornaments. He figured they'd be part of the army. Did I come to the right place? Soldiers and possibly nobles working on fields? Am I in a different world? While yielding a big hammer the man kept walking closer to the outpost noticing different uniforms, even white robes, which he knew belonged to the church and also some black robes that he wasn't so sure what force they'd belong to, but nonetheless, he walked closer to them eventually talking with one of the soldiers. Hey man. I've come to enlist in Aurora's army is this the one? R. Yeah. You've come to the right place. Even though we're currently preparing for the next strike in 18 days, come I'm heading towards the General Aurora. Oh seriously? All right, take me to her. That's quite the weapon you have there. It looks pretty interesting. I like you already, Harmin started laughing and then said. You have good taste. It is one of the unique weapons the goddess Arya blessed us with. Really? There was someone else with a similar weapon, but she's a noble successor of the White Rose family, the hero Elisha, daughter of the Swordmaster Alfred, who wields the blue sword of the first hero Rizia. Oh? Now that's some interesting information. I suppose that's why my weapon has been tingling ever since I arrived here. Harmon smirks while looking around as they walked. Tingling? The weapon? The soldier thought to himself confused. A bit later they arrive near a blonde girl who's under the sun in an expensive blue uniform with a sword symbol on her back and sitting outside of her tent writing on a table. That lad doesn't feel the horrible heat. How long is such a young girl under the sun writing? Don't you guys treat the kids better? Harmon shouted angrily grabbing the attention of those around. Upon hearing that the girl turns around noticing the voice source. The cold blue eyes gaze of her meet Harmon's piercing him coldly as he's making too much noise making him go quiet. R. Harmon this is our general, the hardcore workaholic Lady Aurora, be a training, snowing, or as you can see today under such heat, she'll be doing her best for the army survival and progression. The man yells satisfied with the presentation of the soldier, General, I am Harmon the hero of the north the wielder of the blood-sucking hammer one of the summoned weapons from the goddess Arya. With an extremely dissatisfied cold tone, Aurora replies, You don't have to yell. I can hear you just fine Harmin. In here you'll be a normal soldier like everyone else, depending on your achievements you may become higher than that. As for heroes, we have a couple, but to truly succeed you'll need essentially to follow my orders without fail. Do that and you won't be murdered easily in the battlefield. Once more with a loud natural happy voice, the man answers, I'm grateful for accepting me, and don't worry I'll easily become number one of your army, after all, I'm the strongest hero. The man started laughing once again, in front of very people who took such a statement to heart. Father. A young girl looks at the man next to her to what he says, yes Alicia? Is there a rule that forbids a duel in this army? Since my sword is itching for some reason. It ends up filling me with the will to fight, probably an effect due to being crafted by the goddess Arya. You sound very much like your mother but the one who you must request is the little lady over there. Aurora upon hearing the conversation simply says, 
Do as you wish but far from here. I'm trying to work. Alfred, Alicia, and Harmin walked a tad further away to the training grounds where men would often dispute among each other, similar to the space used in the Colosseum but nowhere near as big, just a simple field made of dirt and sand to reflect the possible scenario in the forest, so the men would get used to fighting in such a terrain. Once they stand against each other, the girl says, I have a bad history against hammer wielders so I won't go easy on you. Harmon starts laughing and then says, if you think you have what it takes to beat me you're absolutely mistaken. Alicia unsheathes her beautiful blue sword with golden letters and takes a stance against her opponent holding it with both hands. Show me how much you've grown daughter. I'm sure Sylvia didn't go easy on you. Year 5009 After the system day 3 of the sun season in the middle of Tun Village. Hello, we've been looking for an old man beggar for a while, he's known for using swords. Do you happen to know where I could find him? An old woman replies, ah. That old drunken bastard. He lives down that road in an old wooden house, but I don't recommend going there you might lose your life, and you're both still young. Thank you mom will be careful. The two of them continued their walk all the way to the wooden house eventually reaching it. As they got to it the sound of swords hitting one another fiercely could be heard, and a neighbor who saw the two of them passing by said, day and night, day and night, clack clack clack. The swords they don't stop. The swords they scream, the swords are the swords they feel the despair of being used and abused by the two of them. Ming bowed lightly to the man without saying anything and approached the entrance of the little dojo where he saw the two of them fighting alongside Momo. The two of them sat on the wooden floor without making noise and assisted their sparring. Old man Ray sword coated with thunder would go straight to Aris weak points one after another which she dodged with all her speed and agility while covering her body parts with ice. He was currently teaching her to defend herself by fast producing small parts of ice instead of using an entire set of ice armor while increasing her reaction speed to his attacks which were insane. This went on for two more hours till Iris finally fell on the wooden floor completely exhausted both physically and magically. The old man then sheathed his sword and passed by the two who had been sitting at the entrance for a while without saying anything as he didn't felt hostility and left as they didn't say anything to him. That kid fishing rod has golden letters. Must be one of those summoned weapons from the goddess area, Ray thought not paying it much mind as it wasn't a sword. Momo entered the dojo and Ming waited outside closing the door so no one outside would see his sister's unique appearance. She then took out her hood and looked at me opening her mouth and saying, Hello Iris. I've come from far away to meet you. I'm Momo a cursed human. Without having an inch of energy left I stared at her for a while appreciating her unique appearance from the beautiful white hair to the white eyebrows lastly those glittering ruby eyes, and said, Your hair and eyes are beautiful Momo. I'm Iris also a cursed human. I smile kindly at her. Momo opens her mouth while blushing almost tearing up from being praised by someone else that wasn't her brother, and then said with a trembling voice, since birth, I've had a cursed skill called Soul Whisper. It causes fear upon me, but in exchange, it tells me important things and ever since this war started it has asked me to aid your sister Aurora. But at the same time it has warned me countless times about how dangerous you will become in the future that is to come. Upon hearing her words I whisper softly, so, have you come to kill me? My green eyes reflect her red ones who stare intently at me as if trying to see through in search of something. Year 5009 After the system day 3 of the sun season in one of the training grounds of the southern outpost. Harmon smiled and then took a step forward waving his hammer horizontally moderately which Alicia jumped backward and then as the hammer passed she dashed forward enhancing her physic with the wind and natural elemental skills. The man started laughing at how fast the little girl is and held the hammer with both hands shouting, flashbang, with an even faster speed the muscular and strength of the body allowed him to wave his hammer to where it came from forcing Alicia to take a direct hit on her body being blown away off the field. After Alicia body rolled a couple of times on the ground she got up and said, natural healing, as a green light healed the bruise in her body she said, I didn't expect that insane speed for such a heavy weapon like that. 
you're not all talk after all, she dashed right after him and he waved the hammer while laughing, this time being parried by Alicia who held her ground, this person is way stronger than Ange, my fingers are going numb from just parrying, time to try one of my mother's techniques, Alicia lowers her body and turns the sword handle slightly allowing the sword to slip through, and dashes forward closing the distance, noticing this, he figured that if he allowed his hammer to do the same, the sword would hit him first, as such, he rotated the hammer pushing forward with the long handle killing Alicia momentum then kicking her feet at the end making her trip, and then lifted the hammer in the air creating a shadow right on her face, and as it went down, it was stopped halfway by the sword of Alfred who blocked it peerlessly. The soldiers around started clapping surprised by the old man's skills and how easily he maneuvered the hammer that looked extremely heavy. Some of them would even later try to do the same, unable to lift it from the ground. The old man lifted the hammer positioning it on top of his shoulder while Alfred regained the distance between them while he was stared at, leaving Harmon quite intrigued by the swift sword movement just now. Once Alicia got up, she dusted her dress by slapping it a few times, and then returned to her father's side, on the way there the old man behind her said loudly, with some more growth and experience in battle you'll surely surpass me one day, she looks behind meeting a happy man memorizing his face and weapon then turning back to Alfred who accompanied her out, would you have beaten him, father, as naturally as breathing he replies calmly and confidently, of course, I have yet to meet someone I can't, Iris teacher seemed interesting too, I can't wait to become strong enough to be on par with such people, that one had an interesting trick, however, don't rush things, and keep working on your basics, if the opponent was slightly less powerful you would have cut his head off, Alicia stared at her further who walked gallantly, while she smiled happily on the rare praise he did, grabbing his hand and walking back to one of the tents, even with the knowledge I got from Rizia, my body is far from being able to keep up with her swordsmanship, after this war I'll go back to train with my parents, and once I grow up some more, I'll surpass the first hero memories, in a few years I'll become one with the sword. First, all those rumors about the blonde general I heard from the different taverns I passed by, at how peerless and magnificent she was, and now this Alicia girl for a young lady that was surely an interesting sword thrust, I bet she didn't notice the slight cut on my chin, seems like the new generation is showing some promise, let's hope they don't die in war, he looked at those around who remained and spoke, well then, I have my blood boiling from fighting that little gal, which of you would like to spar with this old man next, if anyone beats me I'll pay them some beer and a date with a woman at that, the soldiers excited by the man's promise and with a will to improve themselves started making a line to challenge him, and so till the next war they'd be fighting him every day improving greatly. Some hours passed and Harmon was already acting like a leader for the ten soldiers he beat in the duels, he was currently telling them stories of his past achievements. And you guys know what? What Harmon? One of them voices happily still a bit sore from the duel. There was this one time where I fought a minotaur in one of my travels beyond the sea, a big creature with two horns and a fierce appearance, he fought with a long club, what, you've been beyond the sea, the sea is said to be filled with insanely strong monsters like the legendary octopussy, well, I guess I was just lucky to not have found any peculiar sea monster aside from some annoying kappa monsters that would jump inside the ship, they had these big shells on their back and were light green with hands that reminded me of frogs, cappers, I've never heard of that one, I suppose the sea must have a lot of interesting sea monsters, maybe even kingdoms like we have here, a different soldier shouted happily, after this war, you guys should explore overseas, who knows what you might find, Harmon laughed loudly patting the back of one of them, all sorts of stories went on, eventually ending up in all of them joining up to farm the fields, and of course, Harmon not only joined them in it but also joined their squad. Some hours went by and he started feeling his statuses growing as he received all sorts of titles. How come the general put you guys, I mean all of us farming? One of the reasons the general gave us is that if we want to eat our fill we must help to create the food for it, 
The other is that we'll receive titles that will increase mostly our stamina and strength which will help against the goblins who excel in both. That blonde brat was it? Seems like an interesting one indeed. The holes are ready harm in try using some of those seeds now then close the holes with the hoe. Ah, sure. Once he was done he shouted, oh another title. I can feel myself growing stronger, he started laughing loudly again making everyone around cheerful and happy to have him around. All right Harmin, let's go water the fields next, it'll grant us another title too. What, does everything we do give us titles? That's way too easy, yeah, some of us who came from peasant families already had some but apparently they can be improved by doing this for a long time so a lot of us get to improve that way. Interesting. I have my share of titles too but I was never into this type of work before. I'll work extra hard as it'll make me more powerful. We won't fall behind, the men shouted inciting rivalry between one another. Harming upon walking near the river saw Alfred and Alicia also filling their watering cans. It seems like even the most prestigious nobles are also doing this sort of tasks. Just how did a peasant gain all that authority? This Aurora girl. From what the soldiers told me she was a peasant who became a noble, a general and was even blessed by the saintess. A series of lucky chances, perhaps. Fate? Be it whatever it is I have yet to see how she leads the men during the war, that'll be the most essential, and the only thing that'll matter. If she sucks, I'll just have to replace her, for now, I'll climb the ranks all the way up to. What was the highest rank again of the leading type, Major Harmon? You get to lead a thousand soldiers if you get that far. Major, I like the ring of that. All right, I'll start by grabbing that rank for myself. He once again started laughing loudly attracting Alicia's attention who overheard his conversation due to his loud voice. She points at him and yells. I'll get that rank before you harm in. The man surprised by that sudden commentary laughed out even louder and then said, bring it on little lady. Year 5009 after the system day 3 of the sun season in the southern outpost. How long do you intend to keep staring at me Lady Alicia? I don't know, Lady Aurora, but you're the closest person I have of my age around here. Plus you're the sister of my best friend. It is my mission to get to know you better. Seems like Aurora finally made a friend close to her age, Romeo commented at Sophie in a cute teasing way. To think we'd live to see our daughter get this far in life, Sophie fakes some tears joining in making Alicia laugh and Aurora frown. How is it that I have to permanently be working and you three get to be so carefree? Aurora shouted angrily at them. Oh knows the general is mad we must run. Romeo laughed as he said that running away along with Sophie. You fools just wait till I catch the two of you. The soldiers around who glanced at this scenario as they were in the middle of the outpost where there's always a lot of them walking around, laughed inwardly to not be beaten by the little blondie. And... You're still here staring at me. Yes, that's right my mission isn't over yet. Alicia said with a convicted expression. Aurora sighs, so what is it that you want to know? She smiles innocently and then asks. How did Iris know about writing my name in mana in the sword would allow me to become a hero? I don't know the how myself, but I suppose it was a certain skill that she has. That allows her to get information of things in exchange for big quantities of mana. Interesting, that man from earlier has one of these weapons, but his looks less stylish than mine. The loud harm in person who was here before. He calls himself a hero, however, I didn't feel such an aura, the one that I feel from Sophie for example, in other words, he's very strong while using a dormant weapon. So you came for advice either to tell him or not I guess? Even though the weapon could have been produced by the goddess Aria, but it doesn't mean that he'd also become a hero, if anything it would make more sense if different weapons would grant different powers or classes. Actually you're right. I guess contracting with such weapons would give the user some sort of special power. Perhaps we could steal it and give the hammer to Iris, as a repay for awakening you into a hero. Aurora questions while staring at her for the first time since they started talking. Well that's extra, it's just I don't want her to stay behind when I become so powerful as a sword hero, you know? I wouldn't worry about that. After all, 
she's already contracted with the strongest weapon this world has to offer, Aurora grins looking eerie giving the shivers to Alicia who pulls her cheeks to the sides forcing her to smile. Don't make my beloved Iris face look like that. Upon hearing those words Aurora starts genuinely laughing bringing confusion to Alicia who has never seen her like this. R, man you sure do resemble Iris sometimes, imagine if the two of you spent more time together. You'd even become twins, we'd become a trio. Alicia smiles kindly at the idea. I don't see why not, now I just need to dye my hair blonde. Alicia starts laughing, as if she did her parents would likely murder her as for Harmon if you feel like telling him to do it. If not I suppose that's how it is. I'll leave that fate in your hands as I already have 700,000 heads to take care of. All right, by the way. Aurora you said Iris possessed the strongest weapon is it one made by the goddess Aria as well? I know some from the hero memories, but even her doesn't know all of them. Well let's just say that it's a cursed weapon that doesn't belong to any god. Nor was it created by any of them. If that's true then it's impossible it would be as strong as my sword, after all. It is unique graded, I've never seen a greater sword. I suppose you're right, in what comes to swords your weapon is without a doubt the best, but good weapons without good masters are useless, and you're still quite weak to be using something like that. However, Iris is different, she deserves the one she received, it is part of her and despite being cursed it lives solely to bring her what she desires. How could a weapon like that not be the best? That sounds like a very confusing and complex weapon. My father says they are tools that must be used properly, but you're making it sound like it's alive. Exactly, in this world, chaos is the thing that brings the most confusion and complexity, a matter that no one has been able to solve so far. In that regard, not even the hero, she tried really hard to carry the kingdom and its people on her shoulders. But sadly she was limited by her human race lifespan. Yes. Humans are truly fragile. They break and die so easily. I'm surprised on how someone like you exists. So young and with wisdom that even I have difficulties to follow having the hero memories. Aris I can tell she's still childish like I am to some extent. A bit less nowadays since the power I was given is slowly taking shape. But you're totally different and yet you're the same age as her. To that. Aurora smiles silently focusing once again on the papers in front of her, while Alicia places both arms on the table resting on them as she stares at the mysterious girl in front of her. You have too many secrets Lady Aurora, isn't it normal for a lady to have many of them? Men do like mysterious women the most after all. Alicia blushes as she remembers certain memories of the hero that she did her best to forget. In vain as they did not disappear. You're a meanie. I miss Iris, I met her at the annual tournament, and then at the end of it, I even got to see what her master looked like, apparently. He also trained my mother, but she says they're strong enough to train me therefore not introducing me to him before. Well, Iris seemed pretty happy learning from Ray, despite being an old man he's apparently pretty strong. He did soul shaped his sword, I've seen something similar when the hero reached the pinnacle of her strength. But since humans have no way of earning soul other than titles she didn't get to do much with it, Aurora once again stopped what she was doing. This time around due to curiosity and so to satisfy it she asked, so you're saying that depending on the soul size the soul coat can do more things? I'll reply when you tell me what the weapon Iris has is. A secret for a secret. An aura of darkness surrounded both of them and then Aurora whispered, she uses a weapon called a grimoire. A magical book basically. Alicia smiled happily and then she said, Soul Coat can cut the opponent's soul. The hero tried it on a goblin. And it died without feeling damaged physically. If a soul is severed enough then that's the end of it. And unlike Mana Coat, it can take shape. In other words, it can bend or stretch. But if it stretches and someone cuts it your soul will be damaged. I'd assume so. But it's not that bad. After all, that only applies if the enemies can also use it. Yes, aside from the old hero and Ray, I've never seen anyone else using it, and seeing as monsters are less intelligent there's a chance they don't know about it either though I wouldn't be surprised if they knew mana and elemental coat after all this time. What was a war like back then? On that hero era, there was no coordination, 
Every man for themselves and the side that would survive would win. But luckily there were a lot of different races back then who would fight among each other, though from what you've told me, it seems the goblins have the majority of the southern territory presently. I'm estimating four out of six kingdoms belong to the goblin race, being the other two one of kobolds and the other made up with orcs. I see so things did change with time. A lot of time passed truly. What other creatures existed in the south before? Supposedly it was a place with barely any monster only beasts. There used to be a tusk ball tribe, who would rush and stomp their enemies, but then the goblins met the humans and learned how to make weapons, so they must have perished then. That's interesting what other tribes were there as it sounds like kingdoms weren't yet a thing. In what comes to monsters they rank up so they become a certain type of monster being a lord the strongest and the king the one they follow, so even though kingdoms weren't a thing, they still followed through those creatures who called themselves kings, but thanks to that, they would constantly fight the other ones to be the king of kings, from all that races were slowly perishing or perhaps escaped leaving only the current six kings of the south, we need to destroy the one ahead of us before he decides to join with the rest. I'm sure we'd be incredibly outnumbered, even if the 10 million humans picked the weapon. I doubt we'd be more than four kingdoms of goblins. They seem to reproduce a lot faster than us. So we're always at a disadvantage. How would we even beat the goblin king if he can escape back to one of those three kingdoms? I have some plans in mind while others are being produced. I'm just unsure either they'll work, but if they do, we'll be able to temporarily occupy the middle of the south that would directly connect to this outpost. So our supple chain would simply extend easily, but by doing so there's a chance the orcs and the kobolds join forces with the three leftover goblin kingdoms to retake the territory for themselves. So once we annihilate the first kingdom we set traps and fall back which will cause the goblins to face the kobolds and the orcs who will do their best to expand to that section. But if that works wouldn't we lose what we fought so hard to get? Yes, if that's what we want, but in reality, the objective is to destroy the goblins. The other two races have a way slower reproduction rate, and we can manage them both with the army we have now, especially after making them exhaust their against each others. That's insane. Hum, would the past hero do it differently? I know, she could only expand so much but the way she did things was a lot safer than yours. That's why I said it was insane. The plan I mean. Well, this is just the beginning. After all, once we conquered the south which is composed of solely beast races, I doubt that one would stay quiet and watch. That one? Who are you talking about? The goddess. Why would the goddess Arya do anything about it? Doesn't she want us to win? Yes, yes. I mean Luna, the goddess of Vorda, the owner of the beast race. What could she do? Summon goblin heroes? Well, she is a goddess. I wouldn't doubt if every god could do it, wouldn't be weird at all. Upon hearing those words Alicia gulped as they were strong enough already if they had to face a hero classed goblin. Year 5009 after the system day 5 of the sun season in the southern outpost. General, there's an important man that wishes to talk with you. The man says while having a man in a very expensive attire approaching him from a few meters away. Hum, who's it this time around? I've been getting a lot of important people to talk with me every day. The soldier looks around her noticing all sorts of famous faces and then says, it is the merchants association leader, have him wait a while. I'm currently handling a different affair. The soldier nodded and turned around to deliver the message when the merchant leader just passes by him. The man arrives observing a lone table with lots of notebooks and books on it, finding a little girl seated in front of it while in the middle of many adults says, I'm Ricardo Colapzo, the merchant association leader, the richest man in the entirety of the capital, I wish to talk with whoever the superior is, once he finishes talking he starts noticing some important figures like the prince left and right arm. Ryu and Mark who were discussing the preparations for the next war in some days, the saintess who's always glued to Aurora, and a pink-haired girl who he automatically thinks being one of the summoned as there's no such color in the kingdom if there was he'd know, as he hires a lot of people for works. 
Aurora completing ignoring him focused on finishing writing a paper with the trap processes for the formation she'll be using next, the man feeling ignored and having his ego hurt speaks once more, I wasn't told who commanded this army yet, did I not arrive at the right location? Seeing as the crown prince advisor is here alongside Lord Ryu, actually, aren't you the general of the army Ryu? Without his highness Julius here, I'd assume you'd be the one in charge. Ryu does eye contact with the man who interrupted their reunion and says, I'm an advisor along with teacher Mark of the new generation. General Aurora, as he finishes talking he shifts his serious gaze to the girl in the middle who finishes writing and delivers the paper to Mark. You may shape the land with the earth and nature elemental mages. Other types can lend their mana to them as they won't be needing it right away. Looking at two important figures taking orders from a little girl he feels confused. How is a little girl, younger than my daughter even doing as the general of the biggest human army? Is this a joke? How is it possible for such a kid to be the one leading 700,000 men and having the rank that should belong to one of the two veterans such as yourselves? As they were about to voice their opinions to defend Aurora, the girl got up and turned facing the man who attempted to bring shame to her honor. The man looks at her uniform and then at an emblem that is used to represent absolute authority usually used by a member of the royal family. You have three seconds to kneel and apologize, once the time is over I'll sever your legs. Then I'll give you another three seconds and I'll sever your arms, then three more seconds and I'll sever your head. One. Two. The big man who had a big belly due to the beer he'd consume often quickly kneeled down making it bounce slightly and said, I'm truly sorry G.I. General Aurora, please forgive me. The soldiers who were patrolling and watched the scene from afar couldn't help but gulp feeling pity for the man. Aurora took a few steps forward pulling the chair as she walked and sat in front of the man, keeping around 20 centimeters of the distance between him and her, and spoke coldly. You have shown a disgraceful attitude in front of something you can't buy with all the money you own. Do you know what that is? You have 10 seconds to find an answer before I sever a finger, nervously with his blood rushing. He thought, something I can't buy? He lifts his head and looks everywhere realizing that the only thing he couldn't possibly buy is the general in front of her, but even then, he could buy a general so he replied. With all due respect, but with the money I have, the only thing I can't buy is the army that belongs to His Highness Prince Julius since with the money at my disposal I could easily buy an army with a few generals included. That is incorrect, since the prince may allow you to buy his own army while maintaining surveillance over it. The thing that you can't possibly buy that you fail to notice is what I've been threatening to steal, ever since you knelt to protect it unconsciously perhaps, your own and only life. He gulped at the words your life as he felt like he could die at any given moment trembling slightly not wanting to partake from this life the only he had and a very pleasant one at that. You're alive because I allow you to stay like that. However, as you may have noticed by now, your life, she extends her hand at him and grips it tightly in front of him, is mine to take if I so please along with all the money you own if I so declare. Upon hearing those words the man's heart raced even faster as he sweated immensely from the walk he had done under the strong heat and now this confrontation he slipped in thinking he owned the place. Now that you've earned yourself a place as a silent and educated listener, you may talk, and when you do, I expect to hear useful things. And once you're done I believe I'll hear a good deal coming out from your dry lips, as the man was about to open his mouth to talk. Aurora says, Ryu, Mark, do me the favor to initiate the place, the time is scarce, and call Romeo here if you see him around or tell a soldier to bring him here. I've just thought on a very elaborate plan. Aurora smile that doesn't match a nine-year-old kid terrifies the only man able to see her the one in front of her who trembles in fear feeling like a monster has taken a human shape. Sure, we'll be back tonight with an update. Ryu said taking his leave alongside Mark leaving Sophie behind staring at Aurora's back. She then passes her hand horizontally from her forehead to her chin revealing her typical expressionless self, then she waited for some time while staring at Ricardo, and then her mouth opened softly saying, Why are you so quiet? You came here so eager to talk unless you've said everything you wanted to say, 
Don't tell me you wasted my precious time with this gibberish. You do realize I have to handle over 700,000 men by myself right? How big is your association? How many are working under you? Do you know the weight under these tiny shoulders? Do you expect me to remain here quietly and sane for every idiot that comes barging here the way you did telling me about how great they are? Ah, I'm conflicted. Part of me wants to pull out your tongue and cut it while the other me is asking me to calm down and give you some room to breathe. But I'm truly troubled as I look around us and see everyone breathing normally. Doesn't that mean there's enough air for all of us to intake? Yet, you dare stand in my presence silently without as much presenting me with some numbers to study. Your stocks, your money, your propositions, the things you intend to buy from us, the ones you intend to sell us. Are you not a merchant? Don't tell me you bought a talented merchant to handle the art of trading in your place. If that was so I'd call you a wise man. But if that's truly it then I ask you to immediately call that man over here as I wish to speak with someone who can understand me. It is very hard to comprehend the insanity of not being understood at first glance. After all, did I not tell you to convey words towards this lady? Aurora sighs displeased with the richest man in the kingdom as she used him to vent the excessive work and pressure she's been through since she became a general due to the lack of competent people on her level. Unlike her past life whom she had some reliable subordinates as such she couldn't help but working day and night, every day without rest to do the work of many. But soon she knew it would end up paying off. It always did, it wasn't by chance that she earned the peerless general achievement. A soft hand landed on Aurora's hair which made her turn upwards meeting two pink eyes filled with sadness and worry over her health. The girl then said, Merchant Ricardo. I'm sure you'll find it in you that her words despite extremely brutal are ones that carry the human race survival on the line, return with a fair proposal when you see yourself in the condition to do so, Sophie said in a kind tone to which the man nodded with a pale face, got up and left without saying a word as his hands were still shaking from the pressure he felt from the little girl. Go take a rest till Lord Ryu returns, I'll look for Romeo meanwhile and then we'll wait for you to wake up little sister. Aurora gets up and pulls the chair back to the desk writing two pages leaving Sophie surprised as she expected she would have gone rest. After a while, she gathered enough courage to yell at her to go rest, and as she was about to do so, I've left those two pages for you and Romeo, I might take a while resting this time around I may be exhausted. It is a dirty job, but if you both succeed it'll increase our chances to slay the Goblin King to 100%. Thank you for looking out for me Sophie. She smiled faintly and headed inside the tent to rest. As she started moving Sophie voiced loudly, you can count on me, I'm the hero after all. She smiled brightly hiding her pity and unease for Aurora who she saw overworking from morning to night every day while she goofed around with Romeo most of the time. Shit, what a useless hero that I am. I couldn't even light a bit of the weight that girl is carrying. Just what have I been doing in this place? Year 5009 after the system day 5 of the sun season in the southern outpost during the night. Unable to let go of her emotions Sophie spent the entire day resenting herself eventually opening up and discussing it with Romeo to whom both came to an agreement, and were now in front of the tent of Aurora waiting for her to come out. A while passes and the blonde girl comes out of the tent meeting the two of them near her table. Did you two need anything? As soon as her voice reaches them they rush at her and give a tight hug surprising Aurora. We're truly sorry for barely contributing when you've been doing all you can to keep everyone alive, Sophie said apologizing feeling a mess deep inside. From this day onward, I promise to do my utmost so that we can lift some of that weight off your shoulders, little sister. It may not be much compared to what you already do, but certainly it'll be worthwhile. Aurora allows her head to fall turning it slightly allowing her cheek to hit their shoulders softly smiling happily which Romeo notices making him grin brightly as he patted the cheek of Sophie wiping off her tear. I've read what you wrote for both of us, it is a pretty dangerous mission, but from its contents in the next year during summer it should be highly possible to achieve. But are you sure you can pull the Goblin King out of the base Aurora? She lets go of them and stares firmly at Romeo. Yes, 
If it's about war then I'm sure I can make the impossible turn possible. For that I'll be spending the next entire year bothering the Goblin King reducing his numbers with hit and run tactics. Most of the merit will go for Xylf, who'll do most of the work since he's the leader of the cavalry force of the army, till we get more horses at least. I'd like a similar force on the left wing, it'd increase the possibilities a lot in the future wars as this one is but the first of many. Hum. From the information we gathered from the tortured goblins, they have around a million goblins. If you poke him for such a long time wouldn't he all out on us? I thought about it, but then I realized that after the recent defeat he didn't particularly move, meaning that he's not ready to take action yet. In other words, it's the perfect time to annoy him plus if he does come we'll manage him to some extent, falling back if necessary as losing is not an option. Worst case how far do we retreat with the army? All the way to the great walls of the capital. Aurora thinks of the consequences for that. I've never lost a fight on a defending position, so in the worst case, I'm sure it'll be quite alright. Making the men walk all the way there would tire them endlessly. But the same could be said for the goblins who'll have to face strong walls at some point, and they're in a pretty good shape, with fresh soldiers and guards defending it along with a plan I devised for the Queen and Isabella if things go to that extreme. This war would be a lot easier if I could make Mark and Ryu each holding an army instead of having three fronts and only being able to control the central part of it, depending on how the Goblin King decides to defend or even attack. I can't possibly help the other two forces. I'll have to delay a total war even if it takes more time to vanquish the goblins. This will give time for the queen to decide on Crown Prince Julius to rise and become the royal king seeing as we've obtained the most achievements. After that things will become a lot easier, as I'll be able to do anything I seem worthy with the entirety of the army. Otherwise if one of the sides gets blown. We might receive a pincer attack or worse become totally encircled by the enemies leaving no path to escape. There she goes again thinking one thousand things. Romeo chuckles making Sophie follow through in the same manner. It must be tough being a prodigy, Sophie says teasing Aurora with such a statement to which the girl replies with a smile. It must be tough being a muscle head, and the three of them start laughing together. As some people approached a young feminine voice from there reached the group who was laughing happily. You really do resemble Iris with your appearance General Aurora? A hooded figure says loud enough to grab the group's attention. She turns around with her cold gaze meeting a fiery stare from close, making the blue eyes of Aurora become blue flames from reflecting the ruby gems in front of her to which she says, Oh my, to think there was a similar me in this world, and a pretty beautiful one at that. Though you mentioned someone you shouldn't know anything about, Aurora's body started irradiating an ominous aura making Momo feel intimidated taking a step backward. I met her a few days ago and killed her, she said she had never seen such a pretty hair color that resembled her of snow. She removes the hood from her head surprising those around her, except Aurora who was used to white hair. Aurora released her killing intent aura affecting those around making them immobile and in fear together with her ominous aura who enhanced the effect further, causing cold sweat to slowly crawl down their backs. If such an effect had to be described in a different way, it would resemble as if death was approaching them unable for them to do anything but give their lives to the aurora, or even of a deadly poisonous spider tingling their skin with every step wondering which spot to bite. Despite the overwhelming pressure, Momo did her best to bow forward in respect for her as she came to help her in the wars to come to the utmost of her capabilities, in the other hand Ming who felt his and her sister lives threatened, attempted to murder Aurora by slowly reaching out for his weapon trembling as he did. Once Momo had reached a perfect bowing position the aura ceased as nothing had happened in the first place. The white-haired girl lifted her head and met the eyes of Aurora once again this time smiling kindly while sweating from the killing intent who greatly resembled her grandfather's aura, except for the ominous part as they had different elements. The white-haired girl then gathered all the remaining courage inside the little body and said, My name is Momo a cursed human since birth, the killing is a joke. Of course, I actually befriended her. And this is my older brother Ming the wielder of the unique fishing rod, a summoned weapon of the goddess Aria. 
It is an honor to meet you General of Prince Julius, and sister of the one, the girl bows once again to make sure she is not seen as an enemy of humanity which is what Aurora a non-human currently represents. Welcome to the army, when did you meet my younger sister? She asks casually as if Iris truly died, Aurora wouldn't be alive anymore, at least that's what Aurora firmly believed soul bound to be. A few days ago right before we came here, and also right after we left our old village since this place is where my cursed skill guided us to. Cursed skill? Is it the reason your physical body is like that? Romeo who regained his composure, asked curiously as he had been warned by Prince Julius, that Aurora life force was so abnormal that he didn't have to protect her at all times, and the same was mentioned to Sophie, whom he requested her to keep an eye on the Saintess safety since between the two even before Aurora gaining an element was the one he felt more worry for. It seems Prince Julius was right, Aurora truly is outstanding, just what kind of skill was that? It certainly wasn't given by the goddess blessing since it was mentioned by him quite before that. Maybe something she gained while as an adventurer? I do remember her saying she had a low rank in it. Sophie thought on the possibilities calmly so that she could also achieve similar power, seeing as how powerful of an effect it contained. I don't remember you ever talking about a sister Aurora, Romeo points it out while feeling a small curiosity on the matter. She's kind of a secret due to the annual tournament. My sister fought in my place, as if it was me since at the time, I lacked an element and since my further trained her in magic it worked out. Oh, I thought you had the ice and the dark element. I know the one you own is uniquely graded one of the best ones, but there aren't many people with the ice one. That I know at least, Romeo replied as he's been gathering all kind of knowledge from everywhere he can since he was the sage, one could view it as a class of knowledge, at least it had been in his past life. On that note, the grade of the element doesn't quite matter as every element has its own properties, advantages, and disadvantages, if anything even the hero class and the skills that come with it after a long discussion with this pink-haired hero, it didn't feel amazing. There's not even an experience boost or something that would allow us to make a difference in this world. Aurora right after hearing that softly replied, you can't possibly expect to learn how the system works in the little time you've been here, after all. Don't you find it suspicious for there to be a level for everyone's class? Romeo opened his mouth and then closed it, looking down while voicing out his realization on the matter. You're right. There is a great chance for the skill list to be increased as we level it up. He raised his head facing Aurora. Perhaps I'll even get the abilities I had to create skills like in the past world, being able to help everyone easier and even seal some powerful monsters if we find any, maybe like the red dragon in the north. Ah! How much I want to kill him and revive him to kill him again, and again, and again, and again. In a loop, this went on and on inside her mind while Romeo talked about all the possibilities he thought of in the past while the others heard quietly. This went on for a while eventually leading to everyone's exhaustion ending up with Aurora taking the siblings to sleep in her tent while Romeo eventually grew tired going to a different tent with Sophie, leaving her alone looking at the night sky. Year 5009 after the system day 6 of the sun season in the southern outpost during the morning. As soon as Aurora wakes up she sits and takes a look around finding Momo and Ming still asleep nearby. She gets up walking in inaudible steps towards Momo, reaching her and looking at her from up close by bending forward. For causing a ruckus yesterday you sure have the decency to still be asleep with a smile on your face. And even drooling. Disgusting, she pokes her tiny nose making her turn around splashing her cheek on the wetness of the pillow underneath. That shall be your payment from the ruckus yesterday. Be glad it wasn't anything worse, though I guess that if Iris didn't kill her she must have some sort of value. Or probably not. Aurora spread the hair from the girl right eye. Actually, my sister isn't like that. In fact, Iris is kind. I'm sure that she would be murdered if an innocent and naive human like this Momo girl would approach and attempt to hurt or kill her. She turns around and returns to the bed, where there are some fresh clothes changing into them. Even with the guards that keep a lookout for me outside my tent, 
I should still be wary to not be assassinated myself, rest and function in human form or book shape doesn't keep my awareness up, like I used to have in my past life as the being I was, though I usually do wake up if anybody touches me so there's that, even though if someone mana coats a weapon and wakes me up by slicing me up, well, that's pretty much the end of me. She starts walking outside of the tent where a small light can be spotted coming it, yet today there must be a terribly beautiful day, possibly a hot summer one with a clean sky. Makes me wonder if Iris is taking sunbaths at Tun Village if she's still training there. Well seeing as I haven't gotten experience from her side that must be so, right before she takes the last step necessary to leave the tent she stops and looks back at Momo. This girl said she came here to help, but assist in what? Is there anything she can do? Unlike Alicia or Iris, her body looks weak, her brother however has good muscles, and even has a good weapon one of those from the goddess area, even though I can't quite imagine how one would fight with a fishing rod. I can't help but be curious towards it. She resumed her pacing bathing her body with the sunlight after two more steps, despite coming from the darkness into the bright light. Her blue eyes didn't blink or remained closed for a while for them to get used to it, nor do they get blind by the sunlight. These small details forced Aurora to practice, faking such things including breaks to eat and going to the bathroom, so that those who spend time with her wouldn't find suspicions and even then they'd still find it strange for her to work for so many hours per day. Fifteen days to go for the completion of my next plan, hit and run tactic while luring them into magic made traps, I bet the goblins are going to love it to the point of embracing them with their lives. Good morning General Aurora, I have a message from the association merchant leader, what did he say or want Major Rondo? Right. He said he would return in some days with a good proposition that you wouldn't be able to refuse. Oh? Well, I'll be looking forward to it. Speaking of which did he convey it to you personally? Yes ma'am. May I ask why? You must as curiosity is human third nature. How would you describe his tone and expression when he said that? He felt confident I suppose. Couldn't really tell by his expression as it seemed normal and I don't really know him enough to be certain. That's great, it would be a disappointment if he broke down with that little. I'm truly looking forward to our next meeting. Aurora smiled innocently while walking closer to the wall as Rondo followed after her, at this point she couldn't help herself but showing opposite expressions to how she felt after constant faking. After all, the only person she could be her true self was currently far away to the east where none of the armies reached and that included Astia village along with the territory around it. Out of all the three armies, Prince Marty's one was the closest. And even then they were at least an hour from marching. Slowly as time passed the three armies were getting new soldiers increasing greatly. Those who favoured the old king ways went under the banner of the second prince, the many noble houses who were afraid to lose their place along with a great part of peasants they owned. Human slaves were also brought in along with mercenary groups who are loyal to whoever pays most which would have been Aurora army, except she wasn't interested in them so they had come towards this army as a second option revolted for the rejection they had received, since Aurora had done it on purpose as such feelings were very beneficial to increase the morale of the soldiers if done well, she didn't see the two armies as opponents but as allies do making them stronger would certainly pay off in the future. Those who go against the laws of Lumen Kingdom end up becoming criminals, and depending on the severity of the crime they are forced to become slaves who can later be bought for labor. Prince Marty General the head of the Red family often uses them through his southern east mines, not too far from a steer village that extends northeast close to the mountains. Death sentences are applied solely when a crime is committed against either the noble Rose families who stand on the pinnacle of society and obviously the royal family. The court law is usually enforced by a court judge from the Golden family who are known for their fairness through the generations they've served the kingdom. Currently, Angelica Husband is the master judge named Leonardo, and the only one who could make a decision between a high-level crime between for example the royal family and someone from a rose family as they are accepted of being executed, but not exempt of severe punishment. Everything else was usually set by allowing the one with most power and influence to win the debate, 
thus in Aurora's case, who had the highest degree of authority close to Prince Julius's, only three others in the entirety of the kingdom could contest her reason why the merchant leader who despite his high position in society was scared to death close to fainting. With the increase of our army to a total of 709,000 it is time to step up in the arsenal and weaponry. Having to manage everything on my own is a little rough, but once the high rank of the member including you Rondo Major what has to be done, this will become a self-sufficient army capable of destroying any force of equal size. You just General Aurora, had it not been for everything you've been teaching us, the moment we'd run into a big problem or a situation we couldn't find a solution to would be the end of us. That's why you're all being trained so that one day you can reach where I am. You're too humble General. I'm 28 years old and I can tell that even if I had studied my entire life, I wouldn't have come up with the training, theories much less these formations you've been passing on to us, if all your eyes had seen was war since your birth, she looks beyond the wall yet not quite as she loses herself in a certain memory. General, the man looked confused as she stopped talking to which she looks at him coldly upon waking up and saying while pointing diagonally towards his face. If by chance, death chased after you every single day of your miserable life, you would be forced to put your brain to work, to think on every possibility on how you were going to die, to search for a solution to survive. Rondo gulped and spoke, if that had been my life since birth I suppose you're right, but we only have a big war every 100 years with some skirmishes against hordes of monsters and beasts who appear from time to time from the south. She lowers her arm and dedicates her gaze to him noticing how clean his armor is. I was one of those who became enraged with my own self for hearing your speech, the second one where you called humans lazy, I've worked my entire life, but I realized a few things back then, did you? She asks curiously returning to a normal expression. I realized that I had been hiding in the fake peace we humans obtained thanks to the goddess, and the sacrificed heroes, and soldiers of the past so as a man, no as a human I figured I wouldn't allow a little girl whom I thought knew nothing of war to be alone in the battlefield as I too have kids and want to secure a good future for them. You're allowed to have pride and confidence in yourself for standing where you are today, but you may only use pride after you truly master how to command your share of men. Upon hearing such dignified words he bows his head while placing his hand on his heart who beat faster as he had never heard a compliment from Aurora before and spoke, you have my absolute gratitude General Aurora, your gratitude has been received though I must warn you that it is wasted on the likes of me. On the likes of you? He shouted angrily and confused, as you're rundling, and you being the person whom I respect the most in this entire army. I do now allow you to speak badly of yourself, everything you've done, all the work and hours spent to take us to this stage, there's no one else who could fathom to perceive half of what you do, that's how amazing of a girl, no a lady you are. With a sorrowful expression filling her face she went silent as she heard such words. I do understand Aurora that for someone extremely young such as yourself that you may go to the extent of even having nightmares towards everything that you've seen, all the bloodshed the allies and enemies turning into corpses, the recent battle where thousands returned their souls to the gods, I know that it must be overburdening, that your shoulders, your head, no, your entire body must feel like it has the world on top of it, but even then you must not halt or give up, I am here as a major and I'll do my best to master your ways, I promise to become the best leader in this army after you, and alleviate your responsibility. As Aurora looks down her eyes glitter and then opens her mouth about to say something, and then it closes clutching the hands as tears fall softly on the feet and on the ground splashing calmly to the sides. If you weren't so peerless young lady I'd have asked the Prince Julius myself or his advisors to remove such a delicate child from the army, but sadly we need you. Take your time crying, I'll be here if you need anything young lady. He takes a step at her and bows slightly at her causing a shadow to cover her momentarily. One day after the war is over I'll introduce you to my children and let them know how amazing of a human you are. With a trembling voice she mutters softly, that would be nice. Year 5009 after the system day 6 of the sun season in the southern outpost during the afternoon. I appoint as a general Momo, 
As soon as Aurora's voice echoed through the many people who had gathered around the group of important people everyone became dumbfounded, the usual scorned cursed human girl blushed at the stares of those around her. She had been sitting in front of Aurora who had spent a few hours testing the capabilities of the little thing who had her face drenched in drool not that long ago. It's astounding how this little girl is able to remember everything you've been teaching her without committing a single mistake. Just how good of a memory does she have? Mark asked while rubbing his beard amazed and proud of the human race. Yes, funny as how it may be, due to her being a cursed human, and thankfully for that, she has a unique that allows her to surpass even me in the future. What do you mean by that general? Rondo asked surprised as he believed that no one would possibly be able to surpass this girl. It's simple really. She owns the unique skill photographic memory, which allows her to never forget about a single thing she sees, so even the most complex formations I've been showing are already permanently stuck in her brain, that's how prodigious this little girl is. From the low to the high ranked ones hearing that they couldn't help but feel that this girl who received a compliment from their general who rarely does it, and to such a great degree that couldn't help but be jealous not of what was considered cursed but thinking of it as a blessing instead, as such, the men and women wanted to be cursed the same way as Momo to become generals too, since it was the only rank solely appointed by Aurora, unlike the others who could be obtained by merit and skills alone. Momo Yes, Aurora, the girl asks still blushing as she's not used to receiving such attention especially compliments which is one of her weaknesses starting today the entire left wing is yours to control as you see fit even dispatch it to a different place if you deem it worthy with your other extraordinary skill ah are you truly sure about that i literally just joined the army yesterday with an extremely cold tone aurora questions her making those around gulp so, are you doubting my capabilities as the general pointed by the Prince Julius to recognize talent? Ah, no of course not it's just, as she was about to continue her justifications she gets interrupted. What are you still sitting here for? Left wind waits for you go find Balthazar and let him know what transpired here today. Now, with fear mixed by nervous she gets up from the chair making it fall behind her which Ming picks it up and places it where it was after his sister leaves the spot and then he places a hand on top of her hair and says, you came here for a reason, so you'll have to embrace your new fate, you're the one who told us to come here Momo, I I, I understand older brother, good, let's go meet this Balthazar person, speaking of which what does he look like General Aurora, search for the black robbed men and ask where you can meet them under my name, understood. Come General Momo. Why yes. She follows the brother feeling nervous while blushing as he leads the way. Seems like I have a great rival for the future to come. I'll do my best to be appointed as a general in the future too. Rondo thought picking a book of the army formations from Aurora table and taking it with him, making Aurora grin that goes unnoticed by him. A loud feminine voice coming from not too far away reached this place. Is this where I can meet Aurora? The girl who I fought during the annual tournament. Seeing a crowd of 30 people around she approached eventually meeting the one in the middle of them a blonde hair with blue eyes sitting on a desk. You. No, not you. Who are you? I'm General Aurora, and if my memory doesn't fail me you're that Ava girl. The explosion elemental mage. I came here to help the one who defeated me. But even if you say you're who you, I would never forget those green eyes that were so terribly calm as we fought. So if you're who you say you are, who was the one I fought? A smile appeared on her expression and then she said, that would have been my younger sister Iris, a wizard owner of the rare ice element and a sword wielder. Is she around too? Not quite. She's training under a sword master named Ray. It seems that she was not very happy to have lost in the annual tournament so she's trying to hone her skills for a few years. Is that so? Quite a shame. Well no matter. I already came here after all. Where do I enlist? Considering your skills. You can join the Fire Mage Squad. If you do well you might rank up and become its leader one day. All right. Whom am I supposed to talk with? I'm from the Earth Mage Squad but the Fire one is close by. I can take you there. A man from the crowd says while lifting his hand. Sure. Take me there, 
Ava starts walking passing in front of Aurora's table looking at her eyes from the side who is focused on the papers ignoring her. Wasn't this kid a peasant like me? She feels totally different from the Iris girl I fought. From the appearance they must be twins. Even her sister already felt like a monster considering her age, but how about this one? I can't sense anything from her aside from emptiness. Should I test her out? I don't really intend to fight under someone weak. Ava hand aimed underneath their aura and a red circle appeared below the chair and the table and then as an explosion was supposed to happen, nothing did as darkness enveloped it. An eerie expression gazed at the explosion girl whose body trembled slightly being stared at by an ominous human. Ava bows her head and walks faster than before towards the man who was going to help her reach the fire magic squad, and as she did, a voice resounded by the little girl sitting. Next time you attempt that will be your last, don't consider this as a warning. Instead contemplate it as the reason your life was extinguished. Without saying a thing Ava kept moving, clueless of what had happened as she didn't notice any of the obvious elements. As she moved away from Aurora the soldier said, she uses the unique dark element so your explosion was most likely devoured by it, even though not many understand the laws behind how her element works, but consuming a magic circle before it fully activates or even the magic that comes from it is something anyone can do and if she wanted, you'd be dead. What? Wasn't such an element for demons only? We humans don't generally get it, but it's not only for demons. Nevertheless it's for anyone really, even though from what I know she got it from the goddess Arya herself through the Saintess Blessing. Perhaps there are others with the dark element in the Lumen Kingdom territory, but due to the church they haven't shown up as they'd be called heretics. Could be, but if that's true then it's a matter of time till they do. Due to the goddess giving such an element through a blessing the Pope and the Church are receiving protests from the citizens and since the Saintess is in favor for both disgraceful classes and any element, she might become the leading role in the future. Wouldn't that be interesting to see? It'd be certainly a fair thing to pass throughout our kingdom. I also do not agree to the differentiation the Church does and the exiling among other things they do to fellow humans. I understand. Say I didn't catch your name and rank? Oh. Apologies Ava was it? I'm Hugo the leader of the Earth Magical Squadron. Yes. I'm Ava. Nice to meet you. A leader. Does that mean you're like the strongest of them? The strongest? Probably not. But I'm the most cunning at making defenses and traps, he smugged surprising her with his declaration. How so? Doesn't the most powerful get a higher rank? That's what I heard before coming here, I even expected Iris to be the leader or perhaps a member of the Ice Magical Squad. Aurora uses our squad mainly to create traps and defenses along with the nature element one, we often work together with them. As such the ones who are the most elaborate doing what she says are the ones ranking up the fastest. As for a nice squad we don't have one, the rare ice users we have work with the water one which is more abundant. Unexpected, but understandable. I suppose not many would have rare and unique elements so mixing them with the basic elemental squadron sounds. I see. It is as you figured out, the young general thought about that from the very beginning while selecting them. We had to go through different and complex trials, but the fact that you have a special element and participated in the annual tournament, you'll most likely be exempted of that. What kind of trials were there? Just in case I have to do them. I'd like to know more about it if you don't mind telling me that is. Of course I wouldn't mind it. It was strange exercises apparently she learned them from her father, from stretching Aurora, be it made of mana or elemental, to pinpoint multiple targets at the same time, and even battling opposite elements that we were sure to lose against making us think of different ways to deal with them. She eventually made a standard and everyone who was above it got to be part of the magician squad. Those who didn't become part of the melee troops and learning mana and elemental coating on weapons. That sounds like a lot of organizing, and in a way, she started by checking everyone's aptitudes while training them at the same time. Like a certain man named Belthazza mentioned while with her during that time, she's befitting of the title Peerless General. Isn't that an exaggerated title? To master something requires decades if not centuries even if we don't live that long, I can't even fathom how hard it would be to master something called war. From the reports, 
she gives us from time to time her army is currently the biggest and also the one with the least casualties and the most kills since the competition for the throne has started. That's normal though the more allies we have the easier it is to subdue our enemies, since she had a bigger army compared to the other two candidates that result is kind of expected. If you put it in such terms I suppose you're right. But there was something very captivating that she mentioned once. She captured your heart or something? The man started laughing at such words to what he replied. No of course not, she's too young. I'm not into kids. Then? What was it? Oh yeah right, she said that war was a ferocious and uncontrollable monster capable of destroying that which is most precious and that she had tamed it due. As he was about to finish the sentence Saver shouted interrupting him. Bullshit, she couldn't have possible tame war. She started laughing. Anyway, as I was saying, she had tamed it during thousands of years along with a different monster called death. Upon hearing the rest of the words Ava went silently for a moment, and then she spoke. Just what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Captivating isn't it? To the point of infinitely think upon such words without truly realizing their true meaning, alas I don't know the answer or the logic behind them either. But time will tell either they're true or not, till then I'll do my best becoming the greatest mage of Lumen Capital. You jest, the title won't leave the leader of the Magic Institute that easily. The greatest of all the elemental mages in the kingdom. Him, ah. The man closest to have mastered three elements, and with the strongest firepower in possibly the entire world. Ryan old man. He was the one who taught me how to handle my explosion element. I'm a peasant but the truth is that my father is a noble. My mother a peasant, so I got to learn in the magic institute. That makes your further pretty wealthy, how is he in person? Old, and peerless in what comes to understanding magic, think he has any interest in joining one of the armies Ava? Well, it's not impossible, but since he's kind of an old pervert, he'd probably join the Princess Liliana army, kill the Goblin King and marry her, she says with a disgusted expression as she imagines it. End of block 3